Hello everyone. Welcome to the project demo of Monstack Marketplace application 2023. So as you can see over here, this is the entry point of our application login page. So if you observe the form title, we'll be having SMP login, which stands for Shea Marketplace login. So in the entire project, I'll be calling this name as Shea Marketplace only. Okay. And coming to the fields, we'll be having the email and password. And if you don't have the account in this application, you just need to click on the register link. You can see I have navigated to the registration page. So the same UI only fields will change name, email and password. So now for the demo purpose, I'm going to create a new user with the name David email David123 at gmail.com password 1234578 and I'm clicking on the register button. So on successful registration, it has navigated me to the login page user created successfully. Now I'm going to log in with the newly registered user, which is nothing but the David. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Login. Here you can see on successful login, we have navigated to the home page and this is the interface of the logged in user. So at the top, if you observe, we are having the header with our primary color at the left side, we are going to have the project title Shea marketplace at the right side. We are going to have the logged in username David notifications. So right now I don't have any notifications because I'm a new user and this is the logout button and coming to the home page content. We are going to have the filters at the left side and the products and search bar at the right side. So we can filter the products using the categories as well as their ages. Ages are nothing but how many years old the product was. So let's say if I want to see the products, which was only uh, two years old, zero, one or two years old. So which is nothing but zero to two years old. Let me click on this. So I got the products uh, which are two years old up to two years. So here you can see two years old, 1.5, two years, one year. And this is also two years or else if I want to see three to four years old. So I got this product. And if I want to filter this using the categories, I can choose this first section. If I want to see only electronics, I can click on this. You can see the data got filtered. If I want to see only sports, only sports products are visible and all these filters are working from the server side only. So we have not even implemented one filter on the client side. So every filter will be working based on the MongoDB queries. Okay. Now coming to the user roles right now, we have logged in with a new user, which is nothing but the David. So David will be considered as the buyer until unless he will go and add any new product to the marketplace. So if the David want to become the seller, he just need to click on this uh, name. He'll be navigated to the profile. So this is the profile page. So in the profile page, we'll be having the products, my bids, general so general is nothing but the david information my bids and products we have to consider so in the products we are going to display all the products uploaded by the david to this marketplace whatever it may be whether the status is approved or rejected we are going to display all products here coming to the bids we are going to show all the bids which was uh, placed by the david to different seller products okay now let's add a new product from the david account so the scenario is David want to sell his own product in this portal. So I'm going to give the product name as Lenovo laptop description is 16 GB laptop. Okay. And uh, price I'm going to keep it as $350 category. I'll keep electronics age. I'm going to keep it four years old. And we have these options. We need to discuss about this. So if you observe the labels, bill available, warranty available, accessories available and box available. All these are the Boolean things. That means yes or no or true or false, whatever you can. So suppose if you have the bill for this product, you have to check this. If you have the warranty, check this. If you have accessories, check this like box. So if you don't have just opt out. Okay. So for this product, I'm keeping bill available, box available, but I don't have the warranty as well as the accessories. Then coming to the one more option, show bits on the product page. That means if someone is interested in your product, they can place a bid 
with some price okay so your price is 350 that means you are offering this product to the marketplace at 350 price so if someone want to buy this product at this some different price like 300 280 250 so they can place a bid and you can see that bid obviously so if you want other users also see that bid that means in the product information page we can show that bids all for the product so if you want that option to be enabled you can choose this so i want other users also see all the product bids okay let me choose this now i want to save this product done so product added successfully so you can see right now the product image is empty because we have not added any image name lenovo laptop price 350 category electronics age 4 years status pending it is not yet approved if i go to the home page i cannot see that product because the status is still pending so admin has to approve after reviewing only the product will be live which is nothing but the it will be displayed in the home page so let me go to the products again yeah so the status is pending only when the status becomes approved it will be live in the marketplace added on date actions delete edit show bits so if you want to see all the bids which are placed for this product you just need to click on this so right now this product is not even live so we cannot see any bids okay so before going to the admin panel let me upload some images okay so i'll go to the google first i'll download some images lenovo laptop okay so i'll choose some of the images these are not looking good you know laptop refurbished yeah i'll choose this save image as this is wep file so we cannot download let me choose this save image as this is also WEP. So first I will download and I'll resume the video. Yeah, so welcome back guys again. Now I have downloaded three images you can see in my Chrome. So these are the three Lenovo laptop images. Now I'll go to the edit product. Images, upload image. So I'll choose the downloads. So these are the three images so i can upload multiple images this is the beauty of the application okay first i go on to upload this image upload done so the first image got uploaded you can see here also it got published and let me upload one more second image is also uploaded let me upload the third done so we have uploaded three images for this product i can also delete if i want and i can also upload new images so let me close this out now the product is ready the only thing pending is admin has to approval so if i go to the home page i cannot see the product yet because the admin has not even seen this product now the actual thing starts so in the incognito i am going to open the admin account okay so if you remember the scenario what we have performed we have created a new product that means we have sent a request to the admin for the approval so admin has to get the notification now okay so let me go to the incognito oh, let me close this where is incognito yeah this is the incognito i'll go to the local host done now i am going to log in with one of the admin credentials one two three four five six seven eight login yeah so here you can see admin notification count is one so admin got some notification something has happened in this application so if i click on this i can see new product added a new product has been added by the david four minutes ago so i can understand someone has placed the product i have to review and i have to approve or reject so let me close this out and i'll go to the admin so this is the admin so for the logged in user if you click on uh, profile name it will navigate to the profile route you can see it is navigated to the profile but for the admin it will navigate to the admin route only like this so you can see uh, i think there is one old product also with the same name uh, which is from the steve side i am going to reject this 
yeah so i want to approve this david one so these are the products admin will be having all these credentials this is the product product name is lenovo laptop seller is david price 350 category electronics age four years status pending added on all these things so admin will be having the actions approve or reject so once i click on the approve it will be gone live that means it will be live in the marketplace and also the seller will receive the notification like your product is updated or your product status is updated so i'm going to approve this product status updated successfully this product is live now the status is approved now i'm going to refresh the what i can say david page so david has to get the notification showing your product is live you can see david got the notification now i'll click on this so your product status is approved your product lenovo laptop has been approved okay let me close this out here you can see the status is approved if i go to the home page i should see my product awesome here you can see we got our product lenovo laptop four years old 350 so everything is working as expected now let's go to the product description page or product information page yeah so this is the product information page so if you remember we have added three images so this is the first image this is the second image and this is the third image so we can switch between the images also so this is one of the best feature in the application okay and coming to the information we have the basic information lenovo laptop description product details all the product details because in the home page we cannot show everything because we have to display a lot of products but in the product information we can show all the details about the product price category bill available yes box available yes accessories warranty we kept no so here also no purchased year 2019 so actually we have not given 2019 anywhere but we have given four years ago so based on this i am going to calculate the year so i can display the year so currently we have 2019 minus 4 2000 sorry 2023 minus 4 2019 so they can understand and coming to the seller details name david of course david email david123 at gmail.com okay right now everything is cool now we are left with the bids process so you can see right now for this product there are no bids because just now this got live so here if you see new bid button got disabled because this product is uploaded by the logged in user only so i cannot place bid to my own product so what i will do means i'll go to the microsoft edge localhost 3000 and i will log in with some other user so i can choose the user like satya so this is also one of the past user myself one two three four five six seven eight login yes so this is satya's account so in the microsoft edge we have satya account in the normal google chrome you have the david account so the scenario we are performing is satya want to purchase this product at 250 dollars price so he want to place a bid for the 250 okay so i'll go to this product you can see this button is enabled for me but this button is disabled for the david so i can place multiple bids so first i am i will place 300 okay 300 so uh, i can also send a message in the bid uh, form only i am interested i am interested i will come and take delivery okay first i will just write the message as i am interested and then in the mobile i am going to write my number this is not my number by default okay bid added successfully so you can see the page got updated bids so name is equal to satya bid amount is equal to 300 dollars and bid placed on march 10th and now if i refresh the seller page so that means seller account again i have to get the notification okay if i refresh you can see i got the notification so a new bid has been placed new bid has been placed for your product lenovo laptop by satya for 300 dollars so everything we will get crystal clear manner okay so you need not to go and check the product bids every time you can get it in the notifications itself so if you are interested you can go to the bid details and you can contact the person for the selling and i can also click on this or else i can close this so let me go to the profile again 
products so right now we got a new bid for this product right so i can click on this show bids so i can see all the bids which are coming for this product if i see you can see product name lenovo laptop bid placed on date and time name who placed this bid satya bid amount 300 message i am interested contact details okay so if i if i am okay with this amount i can contact these details directly if the deal is uh, done i can delete the product this is the process so let me close this out and now if satya want to see what all the bits he has placed okay that option also we have we have given if i go to the products my bits so i have placed a bid for lenovo laptop just now itself 10 3 352 pm you can see right now it's 354 so seller is equal to david we know already offered price so the price offered was 350 and we have asked it for 300 message i'm interested contact details we have given also in the past i have placed one more bid for iphone 12 so the seller was messy so like this pay uh, like this way we can uh, place the bids i can also place one more bid let's say i have placed this bid uh, two days ago nothing response was came from the seller so i can place bid for some other amount so i can understand that he is not interested with this amount so i can increase the amount okay so this time i am going to make it 320 consider at least now consider at least now so i am going to keep the same mobile number 9639630 okay here you can see we got the updated bits list in the product description page and then i'll go and refresh here I got one more notification obviously this is expected new bid has been placed for the amount 320 so he has increased 20 dollars i'll go to the show bids again i got the data 320 even if i go to satya account to see the bids let me go there title so my bids here you can see i have placed the bids for same product twice with 300 amount 320 amount okay like this way i can place the bids and one more functionality we have to uh, check so if the seller don't want to display the product bids on the product description page he can go to the edit and toggle this off so that means he want to see the bids only by himself not by the other users save done now if i go to the product description page i won't see any bids you can see the bits is empty other users cannot see even if i open satya account also you can see there are no bits so like this way the seller can control because we have given option for him only either he can choose or he can ignore so let me go and turn on that again edit turn on yeah so this is the functionality of buyer seller admin and coming to the user access so if i go to the admin so i'll be having the users list here you can see all these are the users suppose if user is making some invalid activity in the portal we can block that user so let me go to the uh, satya account only so we already logged in with satya account in microsoft edge i'm going to block this user user account is blocked now i am going to log out and let me log in again so this time i have to get some error message enter you can see the user account is blocked please contact admin i am going to unblock it now so like this way you can control the user access also unblock login so this time i got the access so i hope you got all the functionalities like product upload images bids notifications admin access product description uh, bid placing options all the stuff so if you are interested so see you all in the next lecture so coming to the prerequisites i said in the promo also again i am repeating so monstack basics are the prerequisites so thank you see you all in the course hello everyone welcome to the course monstack marketplace application 2023 so in this section we are going to work on the front-end setup of our monstack application so in the visual studio code i have already created an empty folder called as the shea mp 
stands for Shea Marketplace. So in this root level folder, I am going to create a front end application with the name client. So I'm just clicking on the integrated terminal of the VS Code. Here you can see in the bottom, I got the terminal. Now I'm going to use the command npx followed by create hyphen react hyphen app followed by the application name cli ent client. So just hit the enter button. So it will create a new react application with the name client in the Shea MP folder. So this might take a while depending upon our system as well as the internet performance. So until then, please wait. All right, guys, there we go. We got our application ready with the name client. Now to run this application, we have to navigate into this client folder. So to navigate, I'm just typing the command CD client. Now I'm in the client folder. Now we just need to execute this project. So let me use the command npm start. Okay, so by default, it will go and run in the localhost 3000 port. I think my edge window is already open. Let me close this out. So this will also take some time depending upon our internet performance. It's almost ready. Yeah, so here you can see my Microsoft Edge window got popped up and the localhost 3000 is already present. So let me close this out. I'm going to use only Google Chrome. Okay. So once this is compiled, I'm going to open. It's still showing the starting the development server. Let me ready with localhost 3000. Yeah. Yes, uh, no, still it didn't got compiled. It's taking more than usual time. I don't know why, maybe my internet connection is slow. Yes, it's done. Okay. So now if I hit the enter button, I got the default output for the react application. So this will be default for every react application, not only ours. So whatever the react application you create. So by default, we are going to get this output only. So to start making the changes, first we need to navigate into the SRC folder app.js. So this is the parent component. Okay. So get rid of the header and just put one H1 text with our project title. H1 text with our project title, Shea MP, Shea Marketplace. Okay. So you can change your uh, project title based on your requirement. Get rid of these import statements. We don't require any uh, default CSS. Done. You can also delete this app.css file until unless you require. Okay. Now uh, go to the public index.html. So get rid of the all commented code. So and replace the project title with your own project. Okay. So for now, I'm going to keep the project title as Shea MP Dev. Okay. Because right now it is in the dev. That is the reason I keep the name as dev. So always in our first tab, we are going to have the deployed version. Here you can see this is the deployed version. So by seeing the prototype and design of the deployed version, we are going to develop the current version. Okay. So now let me go to the index.css. So even in the index.css also get rid of everything. Okay. Done. So now we don't have any default styling for our application until unless we write any specific styling, there won't be any styling in this project. So I think we are ready with our basic setup of the react application. So in the next lecture, we are going to see how to install and set up the entity in our application. Thank you. 
Welcome back guys. In this lecture we are going to work on the AND-D installation as well as the demo of the AND-D components. So first of all let's open the official website of the AND-D library. Okay. So AND design here you can see this is the first link we have to open. Yeah. And this is the official uh, page of the AND design library. So the current version of the AND design is 5.0. So to see all the list of components that are available in the AntD, you just need to click on this getting started button. Okay. Yeah. So at the left side, you are going to have the list of components at the center of the page. You are going to have the selected component documentation. So first we just need to install this and design library to test these components. So I'm going back to our project. So let me terminate the job here. NPM install entity so this is the only step you have to perform to get the entity into our application okay so just hit the enter button once it is installed i'm going to restart the server again yeah so it got installed now i'm going to restart the server npm start Now let's go back to the documentation. So select the button component as we discussed. Yeah, so here you can see in the left side, the button component got highlighted. That means we are seeing the button component documentation. And at the right side, you are going to have the different sections of the documentation. Okay. So right now we are going to see the demo of the primary button from the entity. So you can see there are uh, five different types of buttons, primary, default, dashed, text and link. So we are going to see the primary button. I think the server is getting restarted. Let me close this out. Yeah. So it got restarted. Refresh. Now let's see the code of the button component. So whatever it is, that means wherever the code symbol is present, just click on that. So you are going to get some sample code about this uh, output you scroll down yeah so just copy this and uh, put it here we don't need this space component we just need the button okay now so I'm using the button component with the prop type is equal to primary okay and I am changing the text to anti D button okay done let's refresh yeah so we already got the button here you can see this is the default button now i'm going to change this prop type prop to some other value instead of primary i'm going to change it to uh, dashed let's see how it looks Yeah, so this is the dashed button. So dashed button is nothing but outline button. Okay. And let's see how the default looks. Yeah, so this is the default. So like this way, we can change the props and we can get different styling from the entity predefined styling. Okay. Now let's see how to alter the entity default styling. That means if I put the primary here, By default, I'm going to get the blue color as the entity primary, but in our project, our uh, primary color is different. So I'm going to have all the primary color should be this one only, whatever the entity component is. So it is button, it is model pop up, it is text or whatever. So the primary color should be this. So where we have to change. So obviously, whenever you want to change in multiple places, we have to use the theme concept. So even in the entity also, we have the theme concept. Okay. So now I will show you how to do that. So I'm not going to write any external CSS for this button. So I will just change the background color of this button using the theme only. Okay. So let me go to the parent component. Okay. So parent component in the sense, you can use the index.js as well as the app.js. So anyhow, our app component is present in the index.js. So I will use the index.js for the entity theming purpose. Okay. So in the index.js, first you have to import the 
config provider okay config provider from entity okay so now you have to wrap this app component in the config provider done yeah so in this config provider you will be having a prop called as the theme prop called as the theme okay now in the theme we have to know that means you want to change the primary color for all the entity components or for only the button so right now we will see how to change the default colors for the button okay so here i am just hitting the enter button and i will use the theme for components okay components and i will choose button component so what i am going to change so i am going to change primary color okay color primary so you you will get the snippets also in the vs code primary color so i am going to copy the primary color from our deployed version this is our primary color copy paste it here done now let's see the output here you can see entity primary color got changed successfully now even you replicate the button also you will get the same styling entity second button you can see you got the same styling so if you observe we got one more issue so when i hover on this i am getting the blue color so this is also you have to change so here also you need you can apply one property color bg on sorry hover where it is sorry color primary color primary hover so color primary hover also same so whenever we are hovering on the primary color also i am going to get the same color so the color will not change you can see the color is not getting changed even if i hover okay now so by default the border radius for every entity component will be 4px so i am going to remove the border radius now border radius instead of 10 i am going to make it 0 you can see the border radius got removed so let me remove the second button so this will lead to confusion yeah so here you can see border radius got removed okay so like this way if you want to change any properties globally that means if you want to apply some styling globally to the entity components you can use the theme uh, concept so if you want the documentation about the theme concept just go to the and design and search for the theme okay so entity theme okay customizing theme you can see config provider so token so uh, token in the sense if you want to apply any property for all the components you can use the token prop so right now uh, they have given token uh, in the token color primary is equal to some color so it will apply the primary color to all the components if model pop-up buttons uh, text uh, uh, select components input fields all the things etc so this is the token so if you want to apply to specific component you have to specify the components then the component name then the styling so this is the theming concept in the entity you can see so you can go through this documentation to apply the theme based on your requirement okay so in the next lecture we are going to discuss about the tailwind css thank you Welcome back guys. In this lecture, we are going to work on the Tailwind CSS installation and setup. So in the project, we are going to use two external CSS libraries or frameworks, whatever you call it. So the first one will be Antity for building the components and the second one will be Tailwind CSS for the normal styling purpose. 
so if you don't know tailwind css you can use the bootstrap as the alternative so tailwind css has more flexibility compared to bootstrap so that is the reason i have opted the tailwind css for our normal styling as well as the classes okay so let's open the official website of the tailwind css tailwind css so compared to entity tailwind css installation is somewhat difficult that means it will involve uh, two to three steps okay so first let me terminate the job here yeah so get started click on the framework guides select the react app yes now uh, the first step is creating the react application we have already done <coughs> now the second step is npm install tailwind css and uh, npx tailwind css in it so just copy the first statement go to our terminal paste it and hit the enter button okay so after performing the first step you won't observe any changes but after performing the second step you can observe some changes in our folder structure so here you can see once you perform the second step you are going to get this tailwind.config.js file by default in our project folder structure okay let's observe that so right now we don't have any files in our client folder which are related to the tailwind css but when i perform this step the moment it is done you are going to get the file okay it's still not yet done yeah so here you can see you got the tailwind.config.js so this is the configuration file for the tailwind css that means for the entity you have the theme provider right so for the tailwind css you are going to have this tailwind.config.js so everything will be working on the theme only okay now uh, copy this and paste it in the tailwind.config.js and then copy these three statements and put it in the index.css go to the index.css and paste it here that's all i think we are done with the configuration part now let's restart the server okay npm start so when you are using tailwind css with the combination of any other ui library you have to add one prop in the tailwind.config.js to avoid the overlapping of the styling that is core plugins core plugins you have to add the property preflight is equal to false so it is not going to disturb any other css library styling okay so the front end server is getting restarted so this time it will take more time because we got the tailwind css into our application so let's close this out let's refresh i think it will not run because the server is still in execution it is not yet completed yes it's completed again it's showing compile done so here you can see our project compiled successfully now it is having two ui libraries tailwind css as well as the entity now let's see the styling by using the combination of both tailwind classes as well as the entity components okay now my task is to put the button as well as this text in the center of the page okay in a white background uh, for this content and for the body i want this background okay so this is the task that we are going to perform with the help of the tailwind css okay so first we need the primary color in the tailwind css also okay go to the tailwind.config.js so in the extend you have to add the colors colors primary so just have the primary go to the index.css sorry index.js copy our primary color and paste it here that's all so now you got the primary color for the tailwind also okay 
now as per our task we need the body background color as the white so for the div in the uh, app.js i am going to have the class name as bg primary that means background primary let's see the output yes i got the background primary now i want the height to be full so for that i am going to use height is equal to h screen h screen yes i got the height center sorry i got the height full now for this h1 and button i want white background okay so i'm just copying these two i'm going to put this thing in a separate div and for this div i'm going to have the background color class name bg white bg white in the sense background white so if you hover on any tailwind css class you are going to get the appropriate css styling okay yes so i got the bg white now i want to put these things at the center so i am going to use the class name flex justify center and items center that's all here you can see i got the white background text as well as the button so if you want to see them clearly just apply some padding so i am applying p5 p5 in the sense padding 20 pixels from all the sides okay you can see you got the button as well as the text now if you observe uh, you got these uh, spaces across the sides so for to remove that just go to the index.css put star first property i am going to do is yeah i already got the snippet so margin 0 padding 0 box sizing is equal to border box so this should be mandatory now it will look good let's see here you can see all the padding and margin has gone so the uh, ui is looking as per our code so like this way you can customize the entity styling with the tailwind css classes so to just increase the productivity of our timing we are using the two external css libraries okay so i think we are good with the front end uh, things react app setup entity setup as well as the tailwind css setup so in the next lecture, I am going to uh, show you the folder structure as well as I am going to install all the NPM modules that we will be using in our front end. Okay. Thank you. Welcome back guys. In this lecture, we are going to work on the folder structure as well as the NPM modules installation in our front end. So first, let me terminate the job okay so i will start installing the npm modules one by one first one is axios for performing the api calls react router dom for the routing purpose redux react redux and redux js slash toolkit so these three are for the state management purpose then you are going to have the movement for uh, working with time and date okay i think right now these are enough so if you require any other npm modules we will install on the fly okay so just hit the enter button <laughs> that's all so here you can see all the things got installed now i am going to restart the server yeah so meanwhile we can create the folders so the first folder i am going to create in the src is pages like login page registration page home page all those stuff etc and the second one is components so if you have any reusable components you can put it in this folder and then you will be having the redux for all the files and folders which are related to the state management you can keep it in the redux folder okay now uh, to test the react router dom let me create the three pages home login 
and register okay so in every page i am going to create the index.js rfce home go to the login index.js rfce login similarly index.js rfc register that's all so we got our three main pages ready so let's go to the app.js get rid of the content that we have practiced in the last three lectures remove the class name also okay we don't even require all these things just import the browser router browser router from react router dom as well as routes and route okay now keep the browser router as parent routes as the next parent then write the routes so the first route will be home second route will be login third route will be register close the routes close the browser router okay the spelling is wrong yeah now let's import all these pages home login and register done so let's see so as per our changes we have to get a simple text in the home page in our output now yeah so let me close this out even after refresh here i have to get the same output home you can see here let me go to the login route login page let me go to the register registration page done so we are done with the npm modules folder structure as well as the router setup then we are using two cdn links not two only one let me show you that so if you include font it will be two so the first one will be icons so for the icons we are going to use the remix icons cdn okay so remix icon so you need not to install any external library for the icons so this is the cdn uh, project of the icons remix icons so just scroll down yeah so this is the link href link copy and paste it in our index.html header above the title i am going to paste it and then coming to the font i am not going to use the default font from our react app so i'll be using only one, one font that is montserrat okay mont serot font click on the first one so i'll get it in the google click on the import copy the import statement go to the index.css paste it here and now to apply you just you, you just need to use this font family property for star and put important okay now the font will be changed here you can see the font got changed done so we are done with the basic setup as well as our front end architecture so as i said react will be our main library tailwind css entity for the ui that means entity for building the ui components and tailwind css for styling purpose and coming to the remaining libraries i have already explained why we are using those like axios react router dom redux all the stuff so in the next section we are going to enter into our actual project with the first section called as the authentication screens in the front end thank you welcome back guys in this section we are going to work on the authentication screens in the front end so we have both the registration and login screen first we'll complete the registration screen then we can get rid of the name field so we can replicate the login so you need not to worry about the both the pages so first build one page so you can easily replicate the other page okay so we are going to work on the registration page now so this is our current version this is the deployed version so we are going to get the exact design as like the deployed version in our current version 
okay so let's start building this first let me go to the registration page so there will be lot of tailwind classes you have to observe it very clearly why i am writing what i am writing okay first i am going to write the parent due class name as h screen which is nothing but complete height okay then bg primary so the complete height background color should be bg primary now let's see the output go to the register yes here you can see now you got this now at the center of the page i'm going to have a form which will have the input fields as well as the submit button so as i said center of the page so you have to use flex justify center and item center so whatever the content you write in this parent element that will be positioned at the center of the page if you have flex justify center and item center so if you don't put this h screen it will be positioned only horizontally centered not vertically centered so if you want vertically center h screen is mandatory okay now i am going to create a div okay div so this will be our form so for this div i am going to have class name bg white padding uh, 3 p3 is nothing but padding 12 from all the sides and it should be rounded okay let's see the output yeah so here you can see you got the div so we have not specified any width for this uh, div that is the reason it is taking just padding uh, right so let me write was some div sorry some width w 450 px so if you want to give a normal value you have to put it in the square brackets which is nothing but width 450 pixels yes like this okay now we need to have the form so first i am going to write the parent element of the form from the entity let's import that import form from entity okay so in dev in a, every item should be treated as the form item okay so we are going to have three fields so this is the first form item which will have an input placeholder is equal to just name placeholder is equal to name and make this form item closed and every form item should have the label as well as the name prop so the complete entity form as well as the form submission process will work on this name attribute only so this name attribute must match with the database properties so right now we don't have any database ready so we have to create our database more mongodb models as per this name attributes okay if that is already created you have to create a form like that so if you are creating the form first you have to create the model as like the form so this is the name attribute now let's see the output yeah so you got like this right now let's go to the form and make this layout vertical now you are going to get like this okay now go to the uh, index.js in the root level this is the theme right so come out of the components and write token 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 right border radius only 2 pixels even for the button also give the border radius 2 pixels yeah here you can see now it got removed and uh, border color we can give it in the index.css because it will be easy to write in the index.css so just write input uh first i'm going to define the height okay so you might be wondering we can also write with the tailwind css right but that's not a good approach because if you write using the tailwind css wherever you have the input in mean, all that places you have to write the class names so to avoid that i'm going to write in only one place that is index.css okay so height i'm going to keep it 45 pixels 
45 pixels important and uh, border uh, 1 px solid uh, some light color yeah so b9 b9 and uh, then when i hover on the input field input focus i don't need any outline and the border should be same okay now let's see the output yes here you can see even i don't want the box shadow also so box shadow none important yes now i don't have any box shadow only if i hover on this uh, uh, input field i need some dark border to know we are in that uh, field yes it's looking good right now let's go back to the register and we can replicate these things now so name is done we need email placeholder is equal to email password input dot password that's all so just get rid of the input dot password keep only input and make it type is equal to password that's all done so we got our fields so whenever i am hovering i am getting this uh, border highlighted for the fields done so i think we need, we also need to increase the padding make this p5 padding 20 from all the sides yeah so then we need the button okay i am going to have a button button type primary html type submit text is equal to register so i got the button so i, I want full width okay so to get the full width button you just need to provide an extra prop that is called as the block okay so you got this button and even for the button also i want the height to be same as the input field or else somewhat less button height should be 45 pixels get rid of the border there should be no borders for the button done so here you can see you got the register button done so now what else we have let's see what else we have we got the button so you have the uh, already have an account login so the navigation link okay go to the register so bottom of the button i'm going to put one span element so already have an account so instead of a just use link from the react router dom link and instead of href use the to prop you got this now let's add some styling class name mt5 text center text center uh, why it is not working okay put it in a div use these classes for the div yes now it is working and this color should be somewhat light and this uh, login color should be primary okay so go to the span class name should be text gray 500 so whenever you want any light color you have to use this text gray 500 it's not gary it's gray and for this link i am going to use the class name text primary that's all so it will look professional yeah so this is light color and this is uh, as the clickable so it is navigating me to the login page so it's coming along good now at the top we need to have the uh, what i can say title 
title of the form so above the form i'm going to have one uh, h1 text h1 so sm smp share marketplace uh, register in the span element i'm going to have register so for the h1 i'm going to have class name text primary and for the span i'm going to have text gray uh, 400 let's see the output yes this is what i want so we just need to uh, decrease the font size so for the h1 itself i'm going to write text excel done think we can keep text to excel yeah cool so smp register okay as like so we need one divider okay so let's use one hr for the time being later we will design one divider component uh, let's design now itself okay go to the components divider dot js because we are going to use this in lot many places rfce so you need not to put any content for the div just have the class name class name h full sorry w full height 1 px border gray uh, 300 and uh, my5 we don't need my5 we just need my2 margin 8 ma margin top 8 pixels bottom 8 pixels so go to the register instead of hr just use the divider from our components folder done cool so i think our form is looking good now uh, as per the ui we are good not about the functional so almost similar okay we just need one hyphen yes done now we need the submit process so as i said entity form submission will work based on the name attribute for the form items here you can see we have three name attributes that means three form items name email and password so if i hit on this uh, register button i have to get the values in the console this is my task so it is very simple actually for the form item sorry for the parent form you just need to have one prop on finish is equal to same on finish function on finish okay go to the const on finish is equal to values console.log values success that's all okay now let's test with the details name so as usual arjun email arjun123 password 1234567 register go to the console info here you can see name email password so the form submission is working as expected now we need to have the rules okay even without the values also i could able to get the values into the console if i open i will get the empty strings for all the names here you can see undefined or empty strings so this is not what we required so we need to have a proper validation so now i am going to provide the rules const rules is equal to i am going to have required is equal to true message is equal to required so this is the common uh, rule and common message that is the reason i am writing about the register function so instead of putting all this stuff in the form item so i can have this here so we can reduce the code okay so for the form item you just need to pass that rules that's all rules are nothing but the validation if you are not aware of that yeah done so as like the required you can pass other rules like min length max length regex and all the stuff so right now we are just passing the required okay so when you pass the required it will indicate this star mark now if i click on the register button i will get the errors here you can see required 
so like this way it will work even for the button also i'm going to have some margin top you can see it is almost overlapping with the button so go to the button and have the class name md2 yeah now it's perfect done we are good with the registration form so in the next lecture we will be replicating this to generate the login form thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to replicate the design that we have uh, done in the last lecture and we'll do the login form so just copy the entire code in the registration go to the login and paste it okay so uh, click on the register control f wherever there is register replace it with login so we'll start making changes from the bottom okay so here the navigation text should be don't have an account register don't have an account register here also register perfect and we don't need the name property that means name field because this is login that's all i think okay let's see done smp login so email password login so don't have an account register okay perfect so i think we are good so click on the login coming good let's have some values surgeon123 at gmail.com password 1234567 login inspect yes done so let's close this out refresh so here we have a ui fix that we need to do immediately so when i click on any button that may be login or register we are getting the primary color blink you can see so we are getting this blue color blinking even if you go to the register you can see we need to avoid that so to avoid that uh, for the token also you need to specify the primary color as our theme color color primary as our theme okay done now if you click on this i am not getting that i am getting the normal color only okay even you have to remove this box shadow also so just go to the button box shadow 0 0 all zeros still it is there mm let me have box shadow none still it is having some bottom go to the index.css we already have the button right box shadow none make this important now it's gone so whenever if you are struggling with the uh, changing styling using this theme you can do that in the index.css so both are same okay but try to do as much as uh, modifications only in the th theme only because this is the suitable so if you are struggling or if you are waiting uh, wasting lot of time just go to the index.css write the component name and do the styling and make sure you put the important okay so you can do all these things using the theme also but it will take some time we have to go through the entity documentation you have to find each and every property what we have to change all the stuff uh, that is the reason to avoid the time waste so that is the reason uh, we are writing here i hope you guys understand so first try to do it in the theme only so if you are not able to do come to the index.css and make the um, stylings and put the important so it will work as expected still you are styling to you still if you are struggling just uh, give me a message okay so thank you see you in the next section welcome back guys in this section we are going to work on the back end setup of our mon stack application so right now we have the authentication screens ready we can able to send the data to the back end but in the back end we don't have anything ready yet so we need to create a node server we need to create the mongodb database and we have to connect both node js and mongodb then we can build the apis so we can receive this data and put it into the 
mongodb database so this is what we are going to do in the next two sections okay so let's go to the code base here you can see this is the client folder right so we are not going to touch this client folder so until the uh, this section and the next section completes okay so first split this terminal into two parts so just use this button yeah now come out of the client folder cd dot dot so make sure you are in the root folder okay now i am going to initialize the npm to generate the package dot json npm init and just hit the enter button so for all the questions just hit the enter done yeah so here you can see we got the package dot json file now we need to install some libraries in our backend also okay so first i will start with the express js npm install express js for the backend routing purpose mongoose for the database operations json web token for handling the jwt tokens bcrypt js for hashing the passwords cloudinary for storing the images uh i think we are good so just hit the enter button so it will install all the all these npm modules in the root level node modules okay so right now we don't have any node modules folder so once this is done you are going to get a node modules folder in the root level itself so let's wait for a few seconds yeah here you can see node modules folder got generated so even though we are having the backend node modules in the root level we are going to create a separate folder for the backend code to distinguish between the client code and the backend code separately okay so let me create a new folder with the name server okay so in this server folder i am going to write all the backend code so first i will be starting with the server dot js so this is the entry point you can keep it as app dot js or index dot js also that's up to you so mostly i'll use this server dot js only okay now in this server dot js i am going to uh, get the express const express is equal to require express now i will initialize the app variable with this express const app is equal to express then we need a port to run the backend application so i am just writing const port is equal to use the process dot env process dot env dot port or else 5000 don't use 3000 because in the 3000 we have our react application so make sure you have you have the port number other than 3000 okay now you just need to start the server so app dot listen app dot listen in the port number 5000 so when it is success it, we are going to show the response listening on port number followed by the value okay so here i am just writing node js node js server started at on let's remove these things yeah on port 5000 so this is what we are going to get in the console if this code works okay now to run this react application sorry node application we need the node mon okay now i am going to install two different other uh, libraries other than the libraries that we have already installed so those are npm install node mon for restarting the server automatically whenever you have any changes and when you hit the control s and the next one will be dot env so this is for storing the environment variables okay just hit the enter button again done so now to start this application that means backend server you have to use the command node mon followed by the entry path so our backend entry point is present in the server folder with the name server.js so i am going to use the command server slash /server that means go to the server folder and check the server file hit the enter button i got an error term node mon is not recognized okay let me go to the package.json 
node mon is recognized why i it's not working let me try it again still the same error check the spelling this is correct we are in the root folder only mm, okay let me search with sorry let me do with node server slash server yeah it is working only with the node mon we have some issues let me resolve it so even if you get these kind of issues it will be useful okay let's terminate this job and use the command node mon server slash server okay let me copy this i have seen this error some long ago let me copy and search it in the google okay let's see it in the stack overflow what they are suggesting you need to install it globally okay let me open cmd me open cmd and install it globally okay now let's try to restart the server still the same issue hmm pm install save node mon and package dot json okay they are asking me to put this server okay let me go to the package dot json I think this is not the case because in my past monstack projects also I did the same thing but it worked. I don't know why this is the issue with my PC I believe. No, it's not working. Hmm. npx node mon server. Okay, let's see. npx node mon server slash server yeah so i think uh, my node version got updated that means npm version so if you are facing the same issue use this thing npx node mon followed by server slash server so it will work okay thank god we got the solution very easily so let's do some changes okay so instead of node js i am going to use node slash express express server so i am just hitting the control s so this has to restart yes it is working as expected okay so like this way we can use the node js and express combination to run our backend so in the next lecture we will work on the mongodb setup as well as the node js mongodb connection thank you Welcome back guys. In this lecture we are going to work on the Node.js and MongoDB connection. So if you already know how to do this you can skip this lecture and join the next section. Okay. So this is just for the beginners purpose. So first and foremost you should have a MongoDB Atlas account. So go to the MongoDB Atlas. MongoDB Atlas. Done. So open the first website. So if you don't have an account, please create it using your uh, Gmail credentials. So I already have my account. So I'm just clicking on the sign in. I'll choose the Google option. Okay, so let's wait for a few seconds. Yeah, it's successful. So this is the dashboard of the logged in user interface. Okay. 
now uh, if you already have the databases you just need to click on this browse collections so you'll get the list of databases that you have already created so these are all my databases so i need not to create a new database so by default with the help of the queries we can create it automatically okay so the thing is we just need to copy the connection url that's all so how to do that so it's very simple go to the overview you will be having this connect button okay click on this uh, connect using mongodb compass choose this okay third one you will get the connection url this is the connection url copy this go to our project and uh, put it in the dot env file create a dot env file and put it here mongo i'll keep url is equal to paste it here and make sure you have this uh, rewrites is equal to true and w is equal to majority so this is just for the security purpose and uh, here replace the test name with our uh, database that means our project name share mp which is nothing but share marketplace okay and uh, here instead of uh, this uh, password replace with your original password done okay get rid of the dot env now once you make any changes in the dot env you have to restart the server then only we can able to use these dot env variables in our code base okay so we have uh, we have uh, added one variable right now we need to restart the server well, that means only the back end server done okay and the server got restarted now we can able to use this uh, mongodb url for the connection purpose so let's close this server.js go to the server folder and create a new folder called as the config okay so in this config folder i'm going to create a new file called as the db config which is nothing but the database configuration .js so the one and only thing you need to connect mongodb and node.js is the connection url that's all so remaining everything will be taken care from the mongo side so the only thing you require is the connection url that's all okay so first we need the mongos it's a mongodb client okay so mongos now mongos dot connect so the first parameter will be not only uh, not the first, it's the only parameter okay process dot env dot mongo mongo url so make sure you give the proper name which you have already given in the dot env or else just copy this and put it here done okay now we need to create a connection object const connection is equal to mongoose dot connection so once you got this connection object you have to verify the connection whether it is successful or not so connection dot we have a method called as the on so for the on method you can pass the parameter so based on the parameter it will give the values so now the first parameter i am going to pass is the success scenario which is nothing but connected so connection dot on connected i am going to print the response as mongo sorry mongodb connection successful mongodb connection successful so we need to handle the negative also that means uh, unhappy path mongodb connection dot on error i am going to pass mongodb connection failed okay that's all now you just need to write module dot exports is equal to connection so to run this you just need to import this file in the server dot js so based on our uh, code level uh, it will give the response either uh, success or error okay so go to the server db config sorry server dot js and import the db config okay const 
db config is equal to require dot slash config slash db config that's all hit the control s let's see let's see for the response so we got the error let's see what it is so uri parameter open ua must be a string got undefined so somehow uh, the connect method is taking the undefined value this is because we are using the dot env variable but we have not initialized the dot env import statement in the server.js that is the issue okay so before using this db config only you have to write a statement require dot env dot config okay so we can use the dot env variables now you can see you got the message mongodb connection successful so creating a dot env file and creating the variable is not enough you have to use this statement require dot env in the entry point which is nothing but the server.js so then only we could able to use the dot env variables in our application this is the process so now uh, we have connected to our database successfully and one more thing we have to do is every time we cannot go to the mongodb atlas website and see the changes so this is very lengthy process sometimes even we might face issues with this website also so to avoid this we have a uh, desktop software called as the compass okay mongodb compass so let me open that mongodb compass yeah just expand this so here also in the url you just need to uh, copy and paste the same thing whatever you have in the dot env connect connecting to cluster so here you can see my database got connected if i scroll down so right now i don't have any database with the name share mp okay so once we have any collection ready so it is going to create the database automatically okay so this is not any sql like uh, the data uh, the table should be mandatory and database should be created first and all this stuff so automatically it will be created so you need not to worry about the collections and tables here okay so in the next section we will be working on the user model okay that means all the user apis thank you welcome back guys in this section we are going to work on the authentication apis in the back end so we already know that uh, authentication screens are ready in the front end so we are just waiting for the back end apis to be ready so then we can uh, wrap up the authentication scenarios okay so in this section we are going to build the models as well as the apis which are required for the authentication so let me close this out first i am going to create a new folder in the server called as the models okay then let me create routes that's all go to the models and create our first model obviously user model dot js okay so very simple model we already know what are the fields for the user model const mongoose is equal to require mongoose const user schema is equal to new mongoose dot schema you will be having the name type string required true email type string required true password type string required true uh, what else we need that's all i think close this out and have the timestamps perfect now yeah const user is equal to mongoose dot model users then module dot exports is equal to user so we are exporting this model so we can do all the crud operations with the help of this model using the mongoose okay 
so in the next lecture we are going to start the crowd operations for the user so crowd operations in the sense both <laughs> login and registration only don't think uh, create edit delete update and all those stuff so only login and registration thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the registration api endpoint so let me go to the vs code so here you can see in the server only we have this routes folder so if you don't have the route folders please create it and in this routes folder i'm going to create our first route which will be handling with the users so i'm just naming it as users route dot js okay so in this users route we are going to write all the api endpoints which are related to the user module so to write any endpoint first we need the router const router is equal to require express router then to perform the operations we need the model const user is equal to require model slash user model that's all now we can start writing the api so i'm just writing the comment new user registration okay so only the registration endpoint i am going to explain each and every line so other than this i'll be little bit fast in all the apis because this is the first api so you have to follow the same structure for every endpoint like taking the request object sending the response object and all the stuff okay so first router dot post the endpoint name will be register always the callback function will be async okay let's close this out so this is the http method whether post or get all this stuff and always in the asynchronous block put the try catch function okay try catch uh, and we will be handling the response with simple structure response dot send always send an object with a flag success false because we are in the cache block and message is equal to error dot message even for the success responses also same success is equal to true message is equal to message and if you are sending any data data prop that's all so the same structure you have to follow across all the endpoints okay now in the try block we'll be having three parts for the user registration so the first part will be check if user already exists how you are going to check with the help of email so i am just writing const user is equal to await 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 uh, user dot find with email okay email is equal to request dot body dot email now we need to check if the user exists or not so find one let's use find one method so you are going to get only one so if user i am going to return so it is not going to execute the logic outside of the if, if statement return response dot send success false message we already know what will be the message user already exist close this out that's all okay so if the user is already exist we are going to send the error now uh create new user okay so if you don't want all this uh, return and all the stuff just you can write one more simple thing throw new error user already exist so it will go to the catch block obviously the catch ball catch block will return the response okay this is also very simple let's use this structure so it will be somewhat less code and the next thing will be hashing the password okay so the first part will be checking if the user is already exist second part will be if the user does not exist hash the password so i am just importing the const bcrypt is equal to require bcrypt js so to hash the password first we need to generate the salt okay hash password const salt is equal to await bcrypt dot generate salt method so this 10 will be number of rounds okay 
generate salt here you can see params rounds number of rounds now we need to hash the password const hashed password is equal to await bcrypt dot hash so the first parameter will be the plain text that you want to encrypt and the second parameter will be the salt object and this is the salt object now you need to attach this hashed password to the request dot body dot password okay request dot body dot password is equal to hashed password that's all so the password hashing is also done now we are left with the last step create a new user or else save user const new user is equal to new user of request body await new user dot save now send the success response done okay so this is our first api endpoint registration so looks very clean right so always use the try cache block in any endpoint so if any error goes write a throw statement like this that means if you want to send any success false so always try to send only success true in the try block so whatever the negative path that means negative scenarios use the throw new error keyword so obviously it will go to the catch block with the success false message okay so this is the structure so in the next lecture we are going to work on the login endpoint thank you welcome back guys in the last lecture we have completed the registration endpoint now in this lecture we are going to work on the login okay so let's come to the user login even in the login also there will be three parts first step will be check whether the user is exist or not so if the user does not even exist throw the response like uh, user does not exist second step will be obviously comparing the hashed password and plain password if that is the success then send the success response to the client okay so router.post login so obviously first i will write the try cache block try cache block so in the cache block i will throw the error that means response dot send success false message error message done now let's come to the try block write the comments check if user exist okay same logic const user is equal to await user dot sorry capital user user dot find one with the help of email so if user does not exist throw the error user not found okay or else uh, user does not exist kind of message now if the control is coming out of this if statement that means the user exists compare password compare password so we are having a method called as the compare method in the bcrypt so it will take both plain password and the hashed password and based on that it will give the result to this valid password variable so await bcrypt dot compare first uh, a parameter will be the plain password second parameter will be the hashed password so hashed password in the sense encrypted password which will be stored in the mongodb so we are comparing the plain password and we are comparing the hashed password so if the valid password is true we are going to send the response as uh, what i can say login successful else invalid okay so if not valid password just throw the message invalid password else send response success true user logged in successfully okay done so if you are already a monstack developer so you can understand we are missing something here that is generating the json web token you can see in the login we have to send the token to the client then only the client can send the token with the other request and we can compare whether the authorization is done or not so after comparing the password you have to generate the token so that is the third step here let's import the jwt token now okay so const jwt is equal to json web token so this is 
just for encrypting some data and getting the token and we will send the token to the front end this is the concept okay even if you don't have any idea about the JWT, don't worry. So in the next section, which is nothing but the authorization and protected route section, I'm going to explain this very clearly. So right now, just follow with me. That's all. Okay. So after compare the password, create and assign a token. What we are going to encrypt? I'm going to encrypt just the user ID. That's all. Not the complete user object. I will just encrypt the user ID and that encrypted user ID will be in the form of token and that token we will send it to the front end as the login response that's all okay const token is equal to the method to encrypt is sign jwt dot sign first parameter will be the data that you want to encrypt second parameter will be the secret key because while secret while decrypting you need some key to decrypt that is called as the secret so this secret key also we will have it in the dot env here okay jwt secret so right now i'll use one simple secret key that is shamp which is our project title so here also jwt secret done okay and here the data you want to encrypt as i said we are encrypting the user id but i will give some good name instead of underscore id user id so we are encrypting an object in that object you will be having the user id key and the value will be the actual user id okay this is the data that we are encrypting in the form of json web token and we are going to send the data as token data as token that's all so in the registration, we are not sending any data to the client. We are just sending the flag, whether it is success or false. Okay, because we don't require any data after the completion of registration. But after login, we need some data from the server, which is nothing but the token. Because after the login, the user will be navigated to the home page. And in the home page, they will perform one more request like get all products. So the get all products will be uh, executed only if you send the token from the front end. So obviously, once you log in, you need this token to perform other API requests. Okay, so that's the process. So now you have registration and login. So let me export both. Module.exports is equal to router. Okay. Now go to the server.js. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to use app.use express JSON to take the request body from the front end. Then only we could able to destructure it. And now after creating the port i'm going to write const users route is equal to dot slash routes slash users route then we need the endpoint middleware which is nothing but the so app dot use slash api slash users so the endpoint which is having this keyword slash api slash users will be navigated into this users route and there it will check the endpoint the exact endpoint login and registration so based on the endpoint name it will execute the logic and send the response whether it is success or error to the client this is the process done let's see if we get any errors no we don't have any errors so in the next lecture we are going to work on the integration of this login and registration with the client okay that's all thank you Welcome back guys. In this section, we are going to work on the authentication APIs integration with the client. So we have the form ready. We have the APIs ready. Now we just need to perform some integration steps to have the form data into the database. That's all. So this is what we are going to achieve in this section. So first restart the backend server because we have added one extra variable in the dot env, which is nothing but this JWT secret. So restarting is mandatory. NPX nodemon server. That's all. Close these out. So let's leave the backend as it is. Go to the client package.json. Scroll down. So after the license, you have to add one prop. 
that is proxy okay proxy will be your backend endpoint so right now our backend is working on the local host 5000 port that is the reason i have given port 5000 so even after making changes in the package.json also you have to restart the server go to the front end and restart with the server with the command npm start okay let's close this out so go to the client src pages registration okay first we'll perform the registration so our end of the day our goal is send these values to the mongodb through node.js because client cannot communicate with the database so we have to send it to the node.js node.js will send it to the mongodb so we can write the api integration logic in this on finish function but uh, that's not recommended so make sure you have all the apis integrations in a separate folder that means we need to have a separate logic for rendering as well as the business logic so these files are just for the rendering purpose that means ui so try to keep the business logic outside of these ui files okay so that is the reason what i'm going to do means i'm going to create a new file in the src which is called as the api calls okay so first i'm going to create a new file called as the uh, axios instance dot js and then i'm going to create one more file called as the users dot js so in the axios instance i'm going to create one object of the axios that we can use across all the apis so let me import the axios first import axios from axios now i'm going to write export const axios instance is equal to axios dot create base url you can get rid of okay because we already know that you just need to pass the headers so right now in the headers we don't have anything but later we will add it okay so if you have the headers here it will be uh, sent with all the apis so uh, uh, if you don't use this axios instance you have to write the headers for every endpoint call so we don't want to do that so that is the reason i'm making this axios instance as the global object so you can use it for all the endpoints so let's use one sample header which is nothing but the authorization okay authorization so we will send bearer followed by local storage dot get item token so this is the standard way of sending the authorization token to the backend okay so right now we don't have anything in the local storage token so once we complete the login you are going to get it okay done now go to the users import the axios instance axios instance why it is not importing let's do this again axios instance yeah it got imported now so here also i'm going to write register user so here the spelling case is very important so i'm going to use the pascal case that means p capital c capital export const register user so in our component files that means in our ui files we are going to use the camel case that means one c is capital one c is small but in our uh, api calls we are going to use the pascal case register user okay async data so from the ui file we are going to get the payload here which is nothing but the data only so i'll keep this as payload okay so here also try catch block and always in the catch block you are going to return error return error and in the try block always yeah i already got the snippet 
const response is equal to await axios instance dot post slash api we need to have the slash api slash api slash users slash register this is the endpoint and this is the payload that you are going to send to that endpoint and once you got the response we are returning the response dot data to the page or component or ui file so this is the structure in the front end for the api call and similarly login user export const login user same try block and cache block in the cache block return error so const message is sorry response is equal to await axios instance dot post slash api slash users slash login and payload and here we are returning the data so this is the structure for api call in the front end okay so this logic that means this api handling logic or business logic will be completely outside of the ui files that means all these things axios related all this stuff it's better to keep it outside for the code level maintenance okay now let's go to the index this is the unfinished function make sure this is async and uh, have a try catch here also and in the catch block always show the error message message dot error error dot message that's all and in the try block i am writing const response is equal to await uh, what i can write simple call the function that's all you need not to write anything register user by sending the values and uh, then message dot success response dot message because always the catch scenarios will be sent to the cache block only or else you can check the condition also if you want if response dot success message dot success else to throw new error message done so we are done with the registration logic so once this is done we'll go ahead and write the login first let's complete this let's refresh the page hope everything works fine okay so always my first user arjun email arjun123 at gmail.com password 1234567 so let me open the network call yeah so here you can debug all the network calls that means what payload we are sending what require what response the backend is sending okay yeah register user created successfully so always the hard work pays off so without any error we have executed our first api endpoint so let's go to the mongodb reload data we need to get our new database share mp yes this is share mp users done id name email password created it updated it so you can see password is completely encrypted so the password that i have provided is 1234567 but here it got converted like this okay now let's try to register with the same details and see what we get user already exist perfectly fine so everything working as expected even if you change the name also you will get the same response because we are seeing the email for the uniqueness okay so let's uh, remove this name and keep michael register user already exist so like this way you can avoid the uh, same users so we are done with the registration so anyhow we got the name michael let's try to register with the name michael michael123 at gmail.com so in the user uh, model we forgot one thing actually so that is role okay so go to the user model role role type string default user and also status status type string default active 
done even if you want to keep the profile pic you can keep it uh, profile pic profile picture type string uh, default empty string these are not required done so let's delete the user arjun and recreate it so you will get the additional fields okay so anyhow you have the michael register user created successfully refresh name email password role is equal to user status is equal to active profile picture empty string so even if i have michael i don't leave arjun so let's have the arjun register done perfect so i think we are good so now uh, in the next lecture we'll be working on the login okay so the registration is working fine let's use the login in the next lecture thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we will be working on the login api endpoint so i think it will be a cake walk for us because we have already implemented the registration go to the login make this async as the first step okay try catch so in the catch block also message dot error done and in the try block const response is equal to await login user let's import the login user and then if response dot success message dot success else throw new error and even in the if block we need to write one more line local storage dot set item response dot data okay let's refresh so we have two users in the database so let's log in with arjun 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 login user logged in successfully okay now if i change anything here email is invalid so the expected output is user does not exist so user not found that's all let's use the valid email and invalid password invalid password awesome okay and uh, let's uh, log in with the michael details michael123 password user not found let's use 1234567 hmm i think we have michael oh we got the email with some space that is the issue update and uh, here also yeah we need to trim the email now we should get the proper output yes user logged in successfully so to avoid these confusions that means this trim logic go to the mongodb model user model and in the email always use trim true yeah now let's try to log in again done so even if i place this uh, space i'll get the proper response because we are trimming the email that's all guys so let's log in with arjun once again one two three four five six seven eight i am opening the local storage so once it is done i'll open login go to the application let's get rid of this user yeah so this is my jwt token for the arjun just copy this and go to json web token okay so yeah json web token so if i decrypt this that means if i put this here i will get the user id of the arjun you can see user id of the arjun 
even if i compare this is ending with 780d here also it is ending with 780d so almost everything is correct okay so this is what the jwt concept is and even we can add the expiry date for the expiry date for the jwt how long this token need to be valid okay go to the login sorry login endpoint users route login so the third parameter will be expires that means validity expires in one day okay expires in one day let's login again go to the local storage copy the token paste it here this time you have to get the validity yeah so here you can see expires in this many uh, march 6th oh sorry yeah so this is somewhat uh, time units uh, we cannot understand this but it will show okay as per this time it is going to expire march 6th 2241 right now the time is march 5th 2241 so 24 hours is the validity that's all this is about the login concept so by this we have completed the authentication so in the next section we will be handling with the authorization thank you welcome back guys in this section we are going to discuss about the authorization and protected route so before getting into the code level first of all let me explain what is authorization and what is protected route so it is very simple guys so except the login endpoint and the registration endpoint remaining all the apis or endpoints that we are going to route sorry write or called as the protected routes that means only the logged in user should be able to access those apis so first of all let me write one api okay so here i am going to write an api for get current user okay that means get the information of the logged in user so from the front end what we will accept that means expect so we will expect only the token that means which we will send while the login so when they are login we will send this jwt token so this token will have the de encrypted form of the user id so while calling this api that means if the front end is calling this get current user api we will expect only the token so because the front end will not even know the user id of the logged in person so the front end will always know only the token so with the help of the token only we have to validate the remaining apis that means we have to validate the token before sending the response from the remaining apis so this is the api we are going to write get current user so before executing the logic in this api so let me write the logic first so router dot get so the endpoint name will be get current user okay so this is the endpoint so let me write some logic in this okay get rid of all these things yeah so here in the catch block always we know success false message error dot message and here in the request dot body we will not be having anything only in the request dot headers we will be having the authorization token okay so we have to decrypt the token and then if the token is valid then only you have to send the response but we don't know how many apis we are going to have with the protected route concept so that is the reason we have to write this token decryption logic in the somewhere else we can reuse that means we have to be uh, reusing that token decrypt logic so that part is called as the middleware that means before executing any protected endpoint so this is the protected api right so before executing the logic we have to check the middleware what logic we have to check in the middleware you have to check the token that means if the token is valid then only you have to execute this logic okay so that's the condition i hope you got the concept protected route only the logged in users can see the content of the uh, home page that means in the home page we will call this right get current user so in the front end we will call it as the protected route in the back end we will call it as the authorization whatever it is both are same concepts so unauthorized users cannot be able to use our application this is the concept now let's write the authentication middleware 
so first of all don't write any logic in the try block okay just keep it as it is now close this client so in the server folder i am going to create a new folder called as the middleware so middleware in the sense the logic which will execute before executing the endpoint logic okay so that means whenever this current get current user endpoint is called we are going to execute some logic in the middleware not only this api whatever the apis we are going to write from now okay except these two because these two are the public apis these are the protected apis so i am going to write one file here auth middleware dot js so if you are aware of the jwt and authorization concept it will be cake for cake walk for you so only for the beginners some it's somewhat difficult to understand okay so now in the auth middleware.js we are going to execute the middleware logic for every protected endpoint okay so first to get the token we need to have the access to the request body so now i am going to write module dot exports is equal to module dot exports is equal to so i will be having the access to request response and the next method next method is nothing but the logic which will have in the try block okay where is it so this is the next method all this try logic okay now go to the auth middleware let me close all these things i don't want to confuse you keep only users route and the auth middleware yeah go to the users route now here i am going to call i uh, sorry i am going to import const jwt is equal to require json web token so we will get the token in request dot headers so we have to decrypt the token and get the user id okay so here also i am putting the try cache block so in the cache block i am going to send the response to the client error dot message which is nothing but the invalid token okay now in the try block first i am going to write get the token from header so if you go to the axios manager in the front end if you go to the axios manager that sorry the axios instance so we are passing the authorization like this bearer followed by the actual token so we have to split this authorization and take the one index so this is the zero index this is the one index okay now i am going to write const token is equal to request dot header of authorization make sure these things match must match authorization dot split of one that means second part of the authorization so once you split a string it will become an array this is the zeroth index this is the oneth index so we need the oneth index yeah now you got the token okay so after getting the token you have to decrypt it const decrypted token is equal to jwt dot verify so to create the encrypted you have to use jwt dot sign to decrypt the same thing you have to use jwt dot verify so to the jwt dot verify also you have to pass the first parameter as the token second parameter as the secret key and this secret key must match with the secret key which you have used for the encryption so here also process dot env dot jwt secret here also process dot env dot jwt secret then only you will get the expected output now what we will have in this decrypted token obviously an object with the property user id okay now you have to attach that user id to the request body okay request dot body dot user id is equal to decrypted token dot user id okay this is the concept now you are ready to call the next method so our request dot body will be having the user id now so initially you won't be having any user id because if you observe the get request we don't have any payload so always you have to get the user id from the token decrypt logic only 
so in this logic only you will get the user id so if you are not able to get the user id that means the token is invalid that means the user is not authorized this is the concept so obviously the logic will not execute once uh, the token is invalid okay so here once the next method is called this logic will be executed whatever the code you write in the try block so what we want to write so we just need to write the simple logic fetch the user id from the mongodb and uh, send the details to the ui so const user is equal to await user dot find by id request dot body dot user id and then send response success true message user fetched successfully data user that's all so if you think this logic will work then you are in the wrong page because here we have not even calling the auth middleware we are directly executing the asynchronous function once we uh, get the request to get current user so obviously this will fail because we don't have the user id right now so to get the user id you must call this auth middleware okay now let me import the auth middleware at the top auth middleware so before executing the async logic so here left to the async logic call the auth middleware okay so auth middleware will be able to access the request and response objects as like the asynchronous function here okay this is the concept so now even if you try to open the postman and call this get current user you will get the error so anyhow this is the localhost uh, what it is 5000 only right so let me go to the google chrome and type it okay localhost 5000 slash api slash user slash get current user let me see what we'll get can see cannot uh, get user i think it's users not user done you can see cannot read property of split of undefined because we are not even sending the token so obviously this try block will not execute because this is the unauthorized request we are sending from the client which is not having any user id so obviously this is the expected output so once the front end is ready for this authorization concept you will understand better so if you have any doubts let me know so thank you see you in the next lecture welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the same concept protected route and authorization concept in the front end okay so first let's go to the back end ones so right now we have one api so we have this auth middleware logic outside of this file so we can use this auth middleware logic for every endpoint so like this even in the front end also we may have multiple pages like home page product description page sales page users page admin page and all those stuff so in every page we cannot verify the user is uh, valid or not okay so that is the reason we will use one global page which is called as the protected route so in that protected route whenever the page refreshes we are going to call the get current user so if we get the valid response the logged in user is authorized else invalid so until unless we get the valid response we don't render the content of the page okay this is the concept so same concept in the back end we use auth middleware in the sec in the front end we are going to create one component in that component we are going to write the logic that's all okay so let's go to the components so the component name i'm going to write as protected route or protected screen whatever protected page dot js okay so these are all the pages so whatever the pages are protected 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 in the sense only the logged in users can access only the authorized users can access like this yeah now rfce protected page so first in this protected page the ultimate goal is to get the user information with the help of the token const user set user okay now use effect 
use effect so i am going to write validate token validate token const validate token so in this i am going to call the get current user so before calling first we should have that api instance so let's go to the users get user i'll use this as get current user get current user so we are not sending any payload only the authorization will have the headers that's all so get current user we are going to call try catch so obviously in the catch block i am going to throw the error sorry message dot error let's import the message from entity yeah now in the validate token const response is equal to await get current user okay now if response dot success set user response dot data else message done perfect now you have to wrap all the protected pages using this protected page as the parent component so go to the app.js so home page is protected so copy this home page and put it in the protected route or else protected page done okay protected page so go to the protected page get the children which is nothing but the pages get the children and now if the user is there then only render the children else don't render any children okay so i'm going to write one more logic copy these children create another div for rendering the children which is nothing but the page and uh, here i'm going to write user dot name once you get the data okay class name let me have p5 for the time being later we will style the layout so right now we are working only on the protected route logic yeah so let me go to the home page now so if i have anything in the local storage let's delete let's delete everything so we don't have any user in the browser now so let's try to navigate to the home page jwt mal form that means there is no jwt so instead of getting this message you can do one thing if there is no token directly navigate the user to login page because this jwt malware malware all these things only the technical people will understand normal people will not understand so you just have to directly navigate the user to the home page to login simple logic okay or else here itself if sorry if local storage dot get item token validate token else send the user to please login to continue and send the user to login page const navigate is equal to use navigate okay done now we cannot able to see the home page until unless we have something in the token okay let's see refresh uh, please log in to continue okay we didn't return the logic to navigate yeah navigate to login and here also navigate to login done now let's see still it is not navigating i don't know why uh if local storage dot get item token validate token else oh here also you have to write 
navigate login yeah so the only scenario we will show the page is if response dot success is equal to true done so even if i try to navigate to the home page forcefully i cannot do that because please log in to continue okay so i think we are good you need not to show the message also here only if the token is there and if the validation performed then only you have to show the message refresh go to the home page done so home page is not accessible to the uh guest which is nothing but the not logged in users now you need to check the authorization so if i go to the login let's see whether i am navigating the user to home page or not yeah so local storage dot set item token then i am going to use window dot location dot href is equal to home page so i am navigating the user to home page by refreshing the normal page so let's log in with the arjun so if everything is correct we have to get the screen name uh, logged in username arjun on the home page if our token is valid if our code is working fine arjun 123 password 1234578 login awesome here you can see arjun home so even if i refresh i'll get the output because this is the valid user now if i send anything invalid so the first letter is e right in the token the first letter is e let me remove the first letter press enter and if i refresh i have to get the error and i should be navigated to the home page done invalid token as expected now let me go to the e and put the e again and go to the home page this time i should not navigate i have to stay in the home page only awesome okay and one more bug we have to fix it not a bug if still we are implementing so once the user is there in the local storage that means once the token is there you should not show the login page and registration page because it doesn't make sense right if the user is already present in the local storage why we will show the login and registration so it won't look good so go to the login and registration pages this is the login right so in the use effect in the use effect check if the token is there navigate to home page execute the same logic in the register use effect if the token is there send it to the home page use effect is not defined here done perfect guys yeah now the user is present in the local storage as well as the token is also valid so if i try to go to the login i cannot uh i think window dot refresh is loading very slow let me use the navigate method let me use use navigate const navigate is equal to use navigate because it is showing a small blink of the page so that won't look good login here also same get the use navigate const navigate is equal to use navigate navigate done okay now try to navigate to the register page yes so we cannot see anything now go to the login yes so we are directly navigating to the home page so i think we are good with the actual logic of the protected route simple logic i will tell you the definition in one line authorized users should not see the login and registration page unauthorized users should not see the home page that means whatever the pages you are using as the protected page this is the concept okay refresh done 
even if you open the localhost 3000 slash login in the other uh, window also it will directly navigate me to the home page only like this so this is the protected route concept guys so if you have any questions even in the front end or back end ask now itself because in the next section we are going to work on the layout so if you don't understand these things you might face or you might end up with the errors so let's clarify now itself so thank you see you in the next section welcome back guys in this section we are going to work on the layout of our application so from this video onwards i am going to show the demo that means uh, actual prototypes of the deployed project so it's still loading it is in the sleep mode let it reload and uh, let me go to the protected page because for all the protected page the layout will be common so i am going to write in this protected page okay so we will receive the children which is nothing but the page so obviously we are going to have a header and then at the bottom we are going to have the content so it's still reloading if this loads i can show it better mm. so meanwhile i will start writing the code so that won't be a problem yeah so this is the parent element of our protected route so get rid of this user dot name right now so this is the actual page content okay we are having uh, 20 pixels margin from all the sides and we are rendering the page so above the page we need to have the header okay so if i yeah it got loaded so let me log in here so I log in with Arjun here also. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Login. User does not exist. User logged in successfully. Yes. So this is our logged in user interface and home page. So at the top left, you are going to have the project title. Top right, you are going to have the logged in user information with the white background and some primary text color. So this is the user icon and this is the logout button. Very simple header. I'm not going to make the UI complex. So here we are uh, there to learn the logic functionality, not the CSS things. So that is the reason I'm going to make it UI very clean and simple. Okay. So these are the filter section. This is the home content and uh, search and uh, products. So forget about all these things. Let's focus on the header. Okay. So yeah. Above this div, we need to have the header. Okay. So you have this user right. Keep this user outside of the return. So, oh sorry, out, outside of the div. Return only if the user is there. Yeah. Now you have one parent element. This is the parent element. So first I am going to write the header. So if you observe, we are facing an issue. So before uh, starting with this layout, let me fix that. So whenever I start making the changes in the front end also, that means this protected page is related to the client react app. So if I put something here and if I hit the control S, this node one is restarting control S here. You can see it is getting restarted. So this is not uh, required. So the backend has to uh, restart only if we start making changes only in the server folder so it has to ignore the client changes so if you don't do this you are going to end up with lot of errors while coding so to avoid this confusion or to fix this error you have to create a file called as the nodemon.json okay nodemon.json so there will be some content to avoid so let me copy it from my deployed version share resellers so you can copy from my github or else i'll provide something in the notepad sorry in the document so i just copied and i'll put it here so this is the nodemon json to avoid the client changes so here you can see there is a property called as the ignore so it will ignore the client changes okay remaining everything you have to copy and paste even you even i don't know what all these things will do so this property is very important ignore client 
now let's do some changes here still it is restarting because we have to restart the backend server once you make started changes in this uh, nodemon.json so let me restart now yes the backend server has started now let's do uh, something in the front end it has to stay constant it should not uh, restart now so i'm creating one div control s you can see the backend server is constant it is not getting restarted so nodemon json is working fine done now let's come to the header part so in the header at the left side we need the project title so this is the header this complete div is the header okay let me put the comments also you will understand better and this is the content or body okay body is nothing but the page so first i am going to make this uh, header class name flex justify between because one has to be at the left side one has to be at the right side okay justify between items center to make it vertically center bg primary and padding uh, let's make it 5 don't put the text white let's see the output mm, it got logged out so let me log in again 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 yes so i got the header now okay so let me write some content first one h1 dot text to excel Shay mp marketplace i got the title and this has to be text to white text to white done so here share reseller here share mp perfect now here we need to have some white background so create one more div one more div first thing is we need to have the class name bg white and padding 2 i am going to have uh sorry px2 sorry py2 px5 that means a uh, padding bottom and top uh, 8 pixels padding left and right 20 pixel okay now h1 dot or else let me use the span span dot or just put span user dot name superb and this has to be rounded rounded corners yes looking good and uh, we need to write some more content here it's arjun yeah now we need to have two icons go to the remix icons remix icon remix icon first thing is we need the user you can choose anyone a lot of icons we have i'll choose the shield user copy and uh, paste it here again this has to be flex and the gap one yes i got the icon and make this item center item center perfect and then we need to have some uh, gap between the profile and the icon and we need to have the logout icon also let me get the logout i'll use this copy and uh, paste it so make sure you have the class name don't use class and for this i'm going to have some margin ml 10 yes so i have some huge gap between the logout button as well as the user okay so to make this look clickable i'm going to write the span element class name underline and cursor pointer underline and cursor 
pointer yes now i can understand this is clickable and even this icon is also clickable so once we click on that you have to log out on click remove the token from the local storage navigate to the login that's all perfect so i think we got the layout okay so almost similar only the thing is the margin is uh, sorry padding is high let me use p6 for the header no keep it p5 done guys so you got the home page you got the header and logout and username everything seems to be working fine uh, let's make the username as uppercase always uppercase done and uh, yeah that's all when you click on the logout it's getting logout and try to log in again one two three four five six seven eight so login awesome so if you guys observe i have made the layout very simple even the normal beginners can do it very easily because i don't want to waste much time on the css part as i said so i can make the fancy sidebars and these uh, look uh, fancy looking headers and all the stuff but as i said i don't want to waste time on the styling and ui so it has to be good clean ui but not fancy that means if you want to make the fancy ui you have to invest a lot of time on the ui part only okay that's the reason i'm going to keep it as simple as possible so in the next section we will be starting our state management concept thank you welcome back guys in this section we are going to work on the redux toolkit state management setup so let me go to the ui that means code level client yeah so we already have a file sorry not a file so folder called as the redux so in this redux first i am going to create a normal uh, slice so previously in the old versions of the redux we used to call it as the red user now we need to call it as the slice so basically the first use case we are going to have with the redux is showing and hiding the loaders whenever the api request is in the processing state that means let me log out so here when i click on the login right now we are not able to see any loader so until unless we get any response from the back end we are blank that means we don't know what is happening behind the scenes so we have to show some loading kind of spinner so that has to be done on lot of the pages not only login not only registration so those logic has to be present in the global level so that is the reason we are going to use the redux concept for the loaders okay not only not only the loaders we can use it for lot many scenarios but the first use case is loaders okay so in this lecture we are going to set up the redux in the next lecture we will implement that for the loaders done so let's go to the redux create a new file called as the loaders slice dot js so first we need to import the create slice method because we have to create a slice for the loaders import create slice from redux toolkit now export const loader slice is equal to so there will be an object for this uh, create slice in that you have to pass initial data so first name will be loaders then initial state so we are going to have only one variable so that is loading or is loading whatever you can keep it initially loading is equal to false done now we need to control this loading value whenever the api request is uh, uh, hit or gone that means when we hit on the login we need to control this value by changing it to true once we get the response again we have to make this false so whenever this value is true we will show the loader okay so in the red user i am going to have a method to control the value of the loading that is set loader set loader so state state dot loading is equal to action dot payload so we will send in the set loader whether it is true or false okay now you have to export this set loader function along with the loader slice we need both 
to create the store we need this loader slice to access this uh, function we need this export now go to the redux and create the store okay so let me go to the store.js and import create store method sorry not create store configure store configure store from redux toolkit so now i'm going to write con store is equal to configure store we need to pass the red users loaders is equal to loaders slice dot red user okay so from the slice we need to extract the red user done then we need to export this store okay so as i said this data should be accessible to all the components and all the pages so it has to be either in the app.js or in the index.js so i'll use the index.js so let me import the store it's not importing manually sorry automatically so whatever so first i'm going to wrap this config provider inside the redux provider okay redux provider and you can get rid of this uh, react.street mode keep the provider as the parent element and import the provider from react redux okay import the provider from react redux done so we don't have any errors now you have to provide the data to provider which is nothing but the store done so i think we are good so now all the child elements which are uh, having inside this provider should be able to access the loading value not only loading value whatever the reducers and slices you write so in the next lecture we are going to use this uh, loading value and we will write the actual spinner component okay welcome back guys so in this lecture first we will design the spinner component then we are going to show and hide that spinner component based on the api call status so first i'll go to the components so i'll create a component called as the spinner it could be loader also whatever rfce spinner so let me go to the app.js and here i'm going to put that component spinner done here you can see i have i got the spinner component so as per the logic this spinner has to be position fixed that means it has to take the complete height and width and it has to uh, mean in the center of the spinner you have to spin okay so i'll show you once my deployed application loads so until then we can write the code yeah so first thing is just make the spinner position fixed inset zero sorry inset zero that means from all the sides it will be zero zero okay it's taken full height and width now let me apply some background color bg black yes i got the complete black still some of the form elements are overlapping on this spinner so i'm going to make the z index completely higher than anything z 100 i don't know whether we have the z 100 no we don't have z 10 yes we do have z 10 yes now i want to bring this text at the center so for that i'm going to use flex item center item center and justify center so now the text is center okay now let's remove the spinner text and design the actual loader so i'm going to create one more div okay so for this div i'm going to keep class name 
डब्ल्यू टेन हेच टेन एंड बॉर्डर फोर ओके बॉर्डर फोर एंड बॉर्डर सॉलिड बॉर्डर टाइप सॉलिड एंड लेट मी हैव द बॉर्डर कलर आल्सो बॉर्डर ग्रे आई विल कीप थ्री हंड्रेड बॉर्डर ग्रे थ्री हंड्रेड या सो नाउ यू गॉट द कलर नाउ लेट्स रिमूव द बॉर्डर फॉर एनी वन ऑफ द साइड ओके सो आई एम गोइंग टू रिमूव द बॉर्डर फॉर टॉप बॉर्डर टी बॉर्डर टी ट्रांसपेरेंट बॉर्डर टी ट्रांसपेरेंट डन नाउ लेट्स मेक दिस राउंडेड फुल राउंडेड फुल now let's spin that's all so animate spin that's all we got the loader so whenever we we have this loader we could able to see some amount of the background page also so if it complete uh, if the background is complete black it won't look good so what i'm going to do means i'll make the opacity 50% Fifty percent is also not enough. Let's make it seventy. Uh, okay. Still, it is not showing. Let's remove the BG. Oh, not here actually. It has to be for the parent. Yeah. Now we could able to see the background color as well as the loader. you can see very clean ui so we got the loader so if you want to make the border dashed you can make it like this border dashed that will also look good like this but if you make the border dashed let's make this as border 2 yeah like this i think it will look good and make the border gray instead of all these things let's make this completely white yes done and if you want to remove the border dashed let's make it solid you can play around with it based on your requirement so let's keep like this only now we have to make this dynamic so go to the app.js get the loading value const loading value from use selector state dot loaders okay so whatever the name you have given in the store that has to be given here this loaders must match with this loader state dot loaders now show the spinner component only when the loading is true <sighs> done <coughs> okay now go to the mm, login page create the dispatch object const dispatch is equal to use dispatch and then dispatch set loader okay set loader true initially and once we got the response set loader false even in the catch block also set loader false go to the register do the same scenario const dispatch is equal to use dispatch dispatch show loader dispatch sorry set loader true once we got the response set loader false even in the catch block also set loader false use dispatch is not imported let's import it done and also we have one protected route here also write dispatch const dispatch use dispatch and then dispatch show loader 
sorry <laughs> so in my last projects i was using this uh, show loader that is the reason i am getting that set loader false here also set loader false so in all the api calls i have implemented it okay and now we are not able to see any loader so let's log in with arjun details 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so the moment i hit this login button i have to get the loader and the moment i got the response the loader has to be hidden so i'm clicking on the login button i got the loader you can see now even if you refresh you will get some loader until you get the user response that's all so this is about the loader okay let's try for the registration so i'll use uh, name my name only satya satyaprakash195@gmail.com password 1234567 login done user created successfully so whenever the user created successfully just navigate the user to the login page okay register navigate the user to login page done let's create one more user uh i'll use messi messi123@gmail.com register done user created successfully so let's log in with messi credentials 1234567 login done so everything is working as expected now let's use the redux for storing the user details also go to the redux users slice dot js so right now user data is only available in the protected route so this is not what we want user data should be available across the application so you have to use the loader slice sorry slice concept so just copy this put it here name should be users here also wherever there is loaders replace it with the users loader should be replace it with users okay so just hit the replace and uh, here also initial state should be user null and uh, the function should be set user action dot payload here also set user export come to the store dot js press enter users is equal to users slice dot red user go to the protected route protected route get rid of the local state so once you got the response instead of set user where is it yeah instead of set user call the dispatch set user okay so it will be available in the entire application and now get the user from the users red user sorry use selector let's import that done format document so now we don't have any state variable but still we have to see the output you can see still i am getting the variable messi this is because of the redux so if i want to get this messi name in the home page i can get it let's try that welcome back guys uh, sorry in the last lecture due to some technical issue with my laptop so the video got dropped suddenly so let me continue with the last lecture so in the uh, home page we have uh, imported this use selector as well as the user variable so now after this uh, home text i am going to render the condition and simple uh, if user then show the user dot name okay yes here you can see so right now we don't have any state like uh, use state in the home page but we are still getting the data so like this way we can get the data with the help of the redux into all the uh, components and pages so that's all guys so in the next section we are going to enter into our business logic concepts products thank you welcome back guys in this section we are going to work on the add product screen in the front end 
so we are not going to complete this add product functionality in one or two sections i think it will be at least three or four sections because it is going to have the a lot of complex functionality so instead of complex it's better to call it as the lengthy functionality okay so let me show you what we are going to build in the next two sections as well as in this section okay so right now in the deployed version i have logged in with one of the seller account anjali so uh, if i open this iphone 12 pro this is the product description page so this is the main image and these are the other image so i can switch between the image that means a product should have multiple images okay and then if you see the complete information uh, which is nothing but the title of the product some description and other product details like category purchased here uh, and some other details like uh, bill available box available accessories available warrant available so yes or no <coughs> so the seller must provide all these details to sell the product in this portal okay so coming to the owner details i know we already know this owner name anjali and email so if anybody want to contact this uh, product owner directly they can contact using this or else if they want to bid directly in the public portal so they can bid like this so forget about these bids we will discuss about this later so right now uh, we need to build a form to generate this page so image upload product details all this stuff so i am going to divide this uh, add product uh, part into three sections so in the first section i am going to work on the complete product form in the front end in the second section we are going to work on the product api and uh, integration in the third section we are going to work on the image uploading thing because as i said this is the complex thing as well as the lengthy thing so instead of putting all these things in a single place let's better to uh, divide and uh, achieve okay so let me go to the form now so if i click on the profile i'll go to the profile screen here you can see so in this profile i'm going to have sell that means the products i want to sell and already sold all these things so this is the product this is from the seller side not from the user so user can see only this so anjali is uh, anjali anjali is a seller here so she want to sell uh, her uh, old uh, iphone 12 pro so uh she has added a product in this product form so once the product is added you will be enabled with the images tab so instead of this let me show you in the edit how the product uh, look so here you can see this is the two tabs for the product product details name description price age age is nothing but how many years old the product is category bill available warranty available box available accessories available so based on this also the users can decide the buyers can decide whether these price is suitable for these things or not okay so once the product is saved you can get the product id so you can upload the images to that product so here you can see you can upload multiple images and you can also delete the uploaded images so this will take some time image uploading thing because we have to learn about the cloudinary multer and all those stuff so that's the reason i'm going to keep this at the end of the uh, add product module so first we'll complete the basic form as well as the api integration so i hope you got it so now first creating this uh, form model and all this stuff we need the profile page so let's go and create that in the current version pages profile index dot js rfc mm, profile okay now let's go to the app dot js here let's add that instead of home let's make this profile done okay so now go to the protected route so when we click on this uh, username navigate the user to profile done yes i have navigated to the profile now let's create the tabs okay so i'm going to import uh, tabs 
from entity so then we need to have uh, default uh, so the first tab name will be i'm going to keep it as buyer sell buy or sell so that means the products you have uploaded and the products you have bought okay i think we we need not to put the bought products here just for the tab name i'm giving that okay so here i'm going to have bids don't worry about this bids concept just keep it as it is close this and then uh general 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 close the tabs done okay so you got the tabs now first uh, let's leave this bits and general keep it as it is and create a product page or add product form whatever you can so let's create the um, new folder in the profile products in that products again i'm going to create one index.js rfc rfc products and then products form dot js rfc done okay close all then in the profile uh, tabs instead of having the normal h1 text just render the profile component sorry products component okay no oh, is not working done or else let's keep this as products itself my products yeah so here you can see now you got the products done and uh, here first we will have the table forget about the table we'll discuss it later so we need to have one button here okay so that button should be add product okay so here first i'm going to have dot flex dot justify between then i am going to have the button button add product and this should be variant outlined which is nothing but type uh info i think we don't have type info we have a uh, default and we have default and dashed so let's keep it default yes so you got the button okay so this has to be here instead of justify between justify end okay so you got the add product button so when you click on this add product button you have to open the product form model so our product form should be a model so here i am going to receive props like show product form model product form set show product form and this has to be a model this has to be a model from the entity and put some text h1 product form text is not required so just keep it title add product or else let's keep the title empty string and keep the text product form and when it has to open it has to open only if show product form is true and on cancel we have to make the product form false and then we need the footer as well so need not to be footer null and it has to be centered it has to be centered i think we are good go to the products list create the use state hook const show product form set show product form initially false 
so once you click on the add product we are going to make that true so now if it is true i'm going to make if show product from is true i'm going to render that okay product form and pass the values show product not products here also product show product form show product form yeah done why still it is not working yeah let's close these ones here also it's product not products because we will add only one show product form here also show product form why it is not working mm. <coughs> yeah i forgot the and symbol show product form is not defined show products form where is it oh here think i have to refresh uh, products index.js there is some issue with the names yeah here also sorry set show products form line number 11 here done yeah sorry for the issue guys yes here you can see we could able to get the model pop up so don't worry about this font style we will adjust in the next lecture so right now we could able to get the uh, product form model so in the next lecture we will design the actual form thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we will start designing the actual product form so this is the prototype so even in the product uh, form also we need the tabs okay so let me go to the product form get rid of this h1 text and get the tabs from the entity first one will be the general general which is nothing but the product details h1 general tabs pane second one will be the images close the tabs okay later we will add the bits that's later okay add product yes so let's increase the width of this model width i am going to make this 800 or else 1000 yeah okay so first let's go to the index.css default font color that means color should be it's not complete black and not complete gray it's kind of like this okay and also default font size should be 16 not 16 uh 12px 12 is too small let's make this 14 yeah this is the default okay so every time we need not to do other things and uh, i think better to keep 16 yes 16 is better somewhat or else <laughs> sorry guys let's make this 15 yeah add product general and the images so let's start building the general form okay keep the sorry remove the text general so first i am going to have the form react router dom okay F layout should be vertical sorry it has to be from entity
layout vertical so the first item should be label name as well as name also name itself product name or else you can call it as the product title if you want type text don't use these input use the normal entity input okay input is not defined yeah so you got the name uh, then okay i think we got an issue here here you can see the button color is changing to uh, what it is zero uh, k that means okay is changing to some text color what we have given for the uh, uh, form uh, text elements go to the index.css so here we have given one color right so this is disrupting that let's get rid of yeah now it's normal so we got the gen uh, name now we need the description description i am going to use text area text area okay so you got the description and uh, what else we have price age category okay so price age category should be present in the uh, grid so now what i am going to do means i'll keep the row so basically entity row will have uh, 24 columns so for uh, every eight columns i am going to render one field so call span 8 okay call span 8 name price input number close this close the call then we need the category we don't want quantity we want category category so category should be a select field so first let's keep this as input later i will change it yeah so make this as select so for select i'm going to use the normal select only so option so default i'm going to write as electronics electronics label is equal to electronics then fashion fashion then home home then sports sports then we have toys we don't require yeah let's keep these four and get rid of the name and id property for the select field and after the category we need age so age okay age is input field only input type number <coughs> that's all and for this row give some uh, give some padding gutter 16 okay done yeah so product price is okay age is okay but uh, what is this select category is not okay this is the select field so go to the index.css and whatever the styling you have written for the input fields make this for select as well as text area also not for the button okay and keep this as min height not height because for the text area the height should be higher done uh, and also even width 100% always width 100% and here also even in input focus text area focus and a select focus you can see now everything is clear so our product coming along good now check boxes okay so for the checkboxes you have some 
complex code. First, we need the add-ons or whatever we can call it. So just call it something. Const additional things. Additional things. Additional things is equal to. So I'm going to create an array. I'm going to create an array. So first one is label is uh, or else uh, bill available bill available sorry this is label actually this is label bill available and name is equal to bill available then warranty available warranty available then warranty period is not required if they want they can contact the customer the other things are accessories accessories available name also accessories available what else we have box box available box available okay so we got all these fields additional things now we need to loop through this for every item we need to give a checkbox after this row okay so i'm going to use flex for this dot flex and i'll keep gap uh, 10 gap 10 gap 10 where is it yeah so additional things dot map so i'm going to give a normal return so return yeah form dot item form dot item item dot label name is equal to item input type is equal to checkbox done okay let's see the output yes you can see you got all the fields you can select and unselect yeah it's coming good and what else we have submit button okay so right now we don't have the code for cancel and okay but the actions will be performed if i click on the cancel it is getting uh, closing the model pop-up how so in the model we have the props on cancel and uh, open so we can customize the text of this uh, footer as well as we can customize the actions that has to perform so now on okay i am going to perform the what action form submit and before that we need the rules also for the form okay const rules is equal to required true message required message required okay so for all the fields just add the rules rules here also rules and then you have a lot of fields here everything is required okay rules yeah so these checkboxes are not required okay they can give or they can uh, ignore now we need to have the submit button so basically submit button will work only in the form but we don't even have one button in the form only the button we have is the form footer so this has to be performed as the form submit button okay so what i'm going to do means first i'm going to create the form reference okay const form ref is equal to react dot use ref initially null and for the form i am going to assign that reference ref is equal to form ref so now we can access this form throughout this page okay now first and foremost i am going to change the ok text so instead of ok text i am going to make this as 
save you can see you have the save now you need to have on ok on ok what you have to do you have to submit the form so first of all you need to have on finish method okay so on finish you need to have the on finish function close this out and here const on finish is equal to console.log values now i am just writing it here on ok is equal to form ref dot current dot submit so i am submitting the form that's all so if i click on the ok it has to validate let's see yes it is validating done now let's give the product iphone 12 description an apple product an apple product price i am going to give ten thousand uh, dollars yes it's electronics only and uh, age is equal to what i can say mm, three years okay and i have bill warranty accessories let's click on the save and go to the console yes okay so you have accessories available empty string uh, age empty string bill available false bill av box available so uh, additional things are not working as expected remaining everything is okay price name description category all the things are okay now let's work on the additional things what's going on and you have you also have one more bug if i scroll down here and if i open save here you can see electronics select electronics is selected but still we are getting the required so it is not taking the initial value so what i am going to do means for the select i am going to give an option select empty string so they have to select other done now it's gone now let's see what's going on with the uh, additional things why it is not working okay so basically uh, if i go to the where is it yeah you have input type is equal to checkbox so even though if you provide the name input checkbox will not work similar to the input text or input number so you have to write the custom on change method okay so let me write that value is equal to item dot name obviously uh, let's see if you provide the value whether it works or not iphone 12 if it works then fine we need not to check the other things also 2500 dollars age 5 save no still it is not working let's unselect and select save still the same issue all are getting empty strings now let's resolve this i think until unless we write the on change it won't work okay so on change on change e so first we'll be having the e then we will change the value of this particular name in the form object using the ref okay form ref dot form def dot set fields value so we will keep the remaining as it is and we are going to write e dot target dot checked okay now let's see whatever if the if it is a checked we are going to get the checked else it will be not and uh, here let's see whether we have the checked property yeah we have so form ref dot current dot get field value so here we have the set fields value here you have the get field value both okay now let's see refresh so i hope it should work this time so i have added some form filler extension so by default it will populate so i am selecting all 
just for the testing purpose i am doing this save yes you can see accessories available true bill available true box available true warranty available also true now let's make any one of these things false warranty i'm going to make it false and save this time warranty should be false yes warranty available false so everything is working as expected so we are ready with the product form so forget about the images tab and bits tab bits we don't even have now so later we will work on the images so right now our goal is to save this data in the database so in the next lecture we are going to work on the model as well as the apis then after we will build the actual uh, images okay thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the product model as well as the apis so it's simple crud operation in the back end so you need not to check any logics just get the data from the front end and save it okay so i'll be little bit fast i'm going to complete the model as well as the api in uh, in this lecture itself okay so first let's create the model we already know the fields so it's easy to write the model export sorry first we need the mongoose const mongoose is equal to require mongoose const product schema is equal to new mongoose dot schema first we have the name type string require true description type string require true price type number require true category type string required true subcategory we don't need uh, what else we have age age uh, type number required true type number and uh, why yeah required true sorry type number required true and uh, we have something like uh, images images initially empty array so it's not required actually type array mm, required true you can keep it because anyhow we'll send the empty array if nothing is there or else default empty anyhow and then we have timestamps true so we forgot the additional rings sorry not rings it's things first one is bill available bill available bill available type boolean required true default false required true okay warranty available type boolean default false required true done accessories available type boolean default false required true then the last one box available okay done so apart from this we need two things first one will be user or else you can call it as the seller just keep it as a seller seller is the reference of the users only okay let's keep the reference as users okay done required true and then after we need the status okay status type string default pending required true so the admin will approve or reject this uh, product ad based on the details by contacting the owner also if required so we got all these details whatever the details you are uh, expecting from the front end those things should be required true okay module dot exports is equal to mongoose dot model products products schema okay so now let's uh, build the api products route dot js 
export const sorry const router is equal to const router is equal to require express router const product is equal to model slash product model and we also need the auth middleware const auth middleware is equal to require middleware slash auth middleware done now the first end point will be add new product so nothing to do in the back end just get the data and save it to the mongodb that's all okay so router dot post end point will be add product auth middleware obviously if the condition passes in the auth middleware we are going to execute the try cache block you need not to destructure also just save it as i said response dot send response dot send okay status success status success oh error sorry <laughs> i forgot the things it's success false success false message error message in the try block const new product is equal to await new product of request dot body that's all request dot body await product dot save response dot send success true product added successfully that's all guys okay <coughs> so once you add the product you need to fetch the products by the id okay so or else just write get all products later we will change it to fetch the products by user id first anyhow we have only one user so get products <coughs> done okay so const products is equal to uh, await product dot find later we will add the filters in the request body so right now we are finding all okay so this is the backend api for adding product getting all the products so we'll work on the remaining apis later so module dot exports is equal to router now go to the server dot js uh, first we need the products route and the entry point done guys so we are done with the basic apis for the products so the error has welcomed us cannot find the module auth middleware just copy it from the users route and put it there hmm. yes it worked so we are done with the api part also so then in the next lecture we will work on the integration thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we will work on the product add api integration into our front end so first go to the clients src api calls create a new file <coughs> called as the products.js so as like the users let's import the axios instance it's not giving me the suggestion i'll import it manually okay so first one will be obviously add product add a new product so we'll get the payload from the front end we'll send it to the slash api slash product slash add product with the payload and we will return the response dot data to the page that means model pop-up and also write get products get products done so slash api slash product slash get products here also done now go to the model pop-up which is nothing but the product form okay so first this is the on finish so we have to show the loader that means we need the dispatch object const dispatch is equal to use dispatch 
it's not importing manually import use dispatch from react redux done so console.log values try catch try catch so in the values i'm going to write sorry in the catch block i'm going to write message dot error error dot message now in the try block first dispatch show loader sorry set loader set loader true okay then const response is equal to await add product so to use the await keyword this function should be async this function should be async then if response dot success uh, just show message dot success and set show product form false and else message dot error here also okay so after getting the response obviously set loader false and even in the catch block also set loader false i think we'll get lot of the errors with the import scenarios yeah set loader is not defined let's define that not importing manually so go to the uh, what i can say import import uh, oh not here here import add product from the api class that may api is that's done we just need the set loader so redux slash loader slice redux slash loader slice done guys okay and uh, the things we have to attach to the values are values dot you seller is equal to current user id okay to get the current user id we need to fetch it from the redux const user is equal to you selector state dot just users okay use selector this is also needs to be imported from the react redux done now value dot seller is equal to user dot underscore id and uh, values dot status is equal to pending i think these are the two things we are giving manually remaining everything will be coming from the form itself done so let's refresh add product so i'll use the same product iphone 12 iphone 12 description an apple product price 2500 dollars it's too high actually let's make it 1500 dollars uh, electronics age two years old uh, except box i have everything bill warranty accessories i'm clicking on the save button product added successfully but i could not able to see the loader i think this is because of the z index so the model pop-up z index is might be higher than the actual loader so let me go and adjust the z index first okay so where is loader not loader spinner so right now the z index is z10 let's make this 100 100 is not there so i'll use one arbitrary value four nines yeah now let's open the model pop-up and see whether the z index uh, is working or not to make it uh, check just put not symbol here just to simulate the loading scenario yes it's working now get rid of this okay so back to the product so we got the message product added successfully let's go to the mongodb and uh, reload the data 
we should get the products yes we got it click on these products awesome we got everything so we got the seller box available accessories images age category almost everything whatever we have given in the model let's try to add one more product so this time i am going to give um, reebok bat description a cricket bat so 100 dollars category sports age uh, one year so bill i have warranty no one can have accessories nothing box also nothing only bill i have save you can see product added successfully the api is very fast refresh so i got the second product also that's all so our product create api is working as expected okay so in the next lecture we will work on the product uh, get products into the table okay so here you have the product right we just need to display it into the table part thank you welcome back guys so in the last lecture we have completed the add product api integration now in this lecture we are going to display the added products in the table okay so first go to the products list products list so create the columns okay const columns is equal to so so in the columns the data index property must match with the mongodb model properties so data index is equal to name okay description description uh, price price uh, category category then you have age age uh, then status 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 and at the last action sorry action action forget about the action just keep the remaining things now get the const dispatch is equal to use dispatch use dispatch and i am going to write a function i am going to write a function const get data const get data is equal to this function should be async always okay so i am going to write try catch first dispatch set loader true after getting the response dispatch set loader false even in the catch block also dispatch set loader false this should be get products and this has to be imported so later we are going to fetch the products only on the seller id right now we are fetching all we did not added any mongodb filters just to complete the products crud operation so later we are going to make the changes here okay set loader is so you might be wondering how we cannot show all the products for a single user i know that so later we will do okay message products and let's create the state for const products set products no error okay done now create a use effect call the get data now let's create the entity table okay after this div table from the entity and give columns is equal to columns and data source is equal to products that's all the only condition you have with the entity table is the data index must match with the appropriate mongodb columns which is nothing but the properties let's see the output use effect is not defined let's import the use effect done awesome here you can see we got the table so we cannot even understand this is the table until unless you have these columns so let's go to the index.css 
so i can write using the tailwind css but if i do that i have to write in all the tables so here i'll just use one only one table okay so i'll just use border this 6a 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 1px solid uh this is too high let's make this somewhat lighter yeah and also uh this is the div right for this uh, button thing just use mb2 margin bottom 2 pixels yes so you have some space so you got the table you got the columns you got the data so if you want to have some border radius for the tables you can give it here border radius 2px as like other components yes this looks good guys now let's uh, do the actions okay just give the buttons in the next lecture we'll perform the actions so to give any render things you just need to have the property called as the render okay so in the record you are going to get the complete document so i am just written dot flex uh with gap 5 so i need two icons edit and delete from the remix icons remix icon click on this so get the delete and edit first i'm going to get the delete copy the class name put it here and get the delete sorry edit edit copy and uh, put it here so first should be delete actually second should be edit so replace this class with the class name okay so later as i said in this lecture only the ui the next lecture will perform the edit operation that's yes so you got the edit and delete okay even for these uh, i icons also go to the index.css and uh, font size 20 pixels yes this looks good that's all guys this is about the products get operation so in the next lecture we'll work on the edit thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the edit operation for the product form so we already created the delete and edit icons so once we click on the delete icon the model pop up has sorry uh, the record has to be deleted once we click on the edit button first we need to get the model pop up with the pre populated details of this product and then we have to click on the save so it has to perform the update operation or edit operation so if i open this like this so the details has to pre populate and the title has to change as edit product okay so let's go to the ui product form product form so first i am going to receive a prop called as the selected product okay selected product done okay so now where is the form yeah this is the form ref right so i am going to write the use effect use effect if selected project product is there so if selected product is there form ref dot current dot set field value so we are going to set the field value that means initial value says selected product okay done and coming to the title of the product so right now we are having the tabs directly so we don't need this so just have one put it in a div okay and at the top write text excel dot text primary title if selected product is there then it is called as the edit product else it is add product 
so let's go to the index here okay so create a use state hook for the selecting a product const selected product set selected product initially null so the moment we click on the edit button we are going to set the selected product as this record and we will open the model on click set selected product record set show product form true so everything has to pre-populate now so i am going to click on the iphone 12 uh, nothing got pre-populated so we just need to adjust the things go to the product form oh i got the issue so first of all this is not text excel component this is h1 component okay h1 text excel text center font semi bold okay text center font semi bold edit yes add product or edit product let's make this capitalize uppercase and also make this two to excel yeah add product so actually we clicked on the edit but still we are getting the add product the details are also not getting populated that means we are not getting the selected value okay so just go to the index and pass the selected product to the products form done and also whenever you make any changes you just need to reload the data that means you need to call the get data okay so here if response dot success before closing the thing call the get data method okay get data which is nothing but the reload data done now let's click on the edit this time i should get the values awesome so here you can see all the details got populated and uh, here also if i click on this the details got populated but the thing is checkboxes are not getting populated as expected you can see if i click on this i am not getting the pre-populated values but if i go to the mongodb refresh so i have uh, all the except uh, box available remaining everything are true you can see bill available warranty available accessories box all these things okay now it has to be checked automatically so go to the product form whenever the value is there so yeah so form item right so for this form item we don't know uh, because this is the type checkbox we don't know what property we need to consider as the actual value okay so here you need to pass a prop value prop name is equal to checked okay this one so based on this we need to populate value prop name is equal to checked now let's see the details got populated as expected so if the type is normal text or input we know we don't need this prop because it will directly take the uh, what i can say value prop but this is the type checkbox here checked is the required thing so for this only we are passing the value okay that is the reason you just need to pass value prop name is equal to checked even if i go to this only one got populated as expected okay now we need to uh, have the api for edit so very simple api products route so we will get the id from the front end and the new payload edit product 
edit a product so slash edit product slash product id so i'm going to call a simple method try catch try catch okay so obviously in the catch block just send the response as the error now await product dot find by id and update that's all so id we are getting in the query strings which is nothing but the params so request dot params in the id and the data we are updating is request body so if everything goes fine response dot send success true product updated successfully that's all now go to the products in the front end write the api call object sorry function so you have to send the id as well as the payload so id should be sent in the query strings here slash api slash products slash edit product slash id payload will be obviously there and the function will be put here http method and make sure you are also you have the put so products put you can also use the put but let's use the put go to the products form now there has to be some change in the on finish so first we need to know what action we are performing whether it is add or edit okay so based on that we need we have to be uh, careful by do, uh, while doing the modifications because this status has to be pending only if the operation is add because after adding the admin might approve the status so if you put this status here every time it will go to the pending state so this is not what we want okay so first we need to know if selected product is there you have to call the edit operation so for that what i am going to do means i will take this const response i'll put this outside let response is equal to null initially so if selected product is already there just call await edit product edit product call the selected product dot id as the first parameter which is nothing but the product id values as a second parameter <coughs> else we need await product values and we need these two things values dot seller values dot status only in the add scenario not in the edit scenario because these things won't change while edit this has to be common even though the status might change this has to be changed from the admin side not from the user side so user side always while adding the status should be pending and it cannot be changed by the user done so you need not to worry about the message also because message we are sending it from the back end so obviously the back end will take care of that i think we are good let's test refresh yeah so now i'm going to change the description even this save button also if you want to change based on the functionality you can do else save will be common for both add and edit okay so an apple product so instead of apple product i'm going to make this as an apple mobile product done click on save product updated successfully an apple mobile product data also got updated so after posting the product ad if i don't get any uh, messages from the buyers i may decrease the price so instead of 1500 i'm going to make this as 1300 updated successfully the data is also getting updated so now if i click on the ad we will get an error here you can see even though we are clicking on the ad the data is getting pre-populated because previously we did the edit operation and we did not clear the data about that edit so whenever you click on the ad you have to clear the existing data so go to the index.js here this is the add button right okay paste it here and before opening the model make sure you have the set selected product null okay so go back edit open add cleared so everything is getting as expected edit add so let's go to the edit for the second bat second product and i'll make all these things available and save 
everything is getting as expected refresh the page awesome so that's all guys this is about the edit operation in the next lecture we will complete the delete thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to complete the delete operation so we can wrap up this product uh, module except the images okay so we already have the delete button we just need to send the uh, product id to the backend and it has to be deleted okay so first uh, come from the back delete a product delete product yeah so here await product dot find by id and delete obviously we will get the id here so request dot params dot id and if everything goes fine we will send the success message product deleted successfully else we will throw the error done come to the front end write the api call okay delete product so uh, axios instance dot delete so slash api slash product slash delete product id so in the uh, request params you have to send the id done come to the table write the function const delete product okay so we'll get the id try dispatch set loader delete product set loader false if response success message success reload the data else show the error message close it out come to the catch block hide the loader show the error message done now you need to call this function when we click on the delete button so actually our columns are above the delete function so let's make this at the top now you can access that okay you just need to pass the record dot id on click delete product close it so record dot underscore id done now let's go to the delete function and import the delete product perfect let's refresh so i don't want to delete these existing because these are looking good so let me add some product using the form filler so i got some dummy product i'm clicking on the save cannot read properties of null success something looking strange here uh, what is that product is not added network add product product added successfully success true then why it is not reloaded go to the product form let response this is edit product this is add product oh for add product we have not assigned the response sorry yeah that's the issue so let me close this out i think the product uh, is added but uh, we didn't got the response properly that's all yeah here you can see uh, i'll add one more product to remove the confusion save done added so here we can do one more thing this list has to be sorted based on the uploaded date okay so go to the products route products route mm, get products products dot find sort of created it minus one refresh done and also it's better to include the date added on added on created it render cell render i am going to use the moment sorry moment of record dot created it let me use one format 
that is d d m m y y y y h h m m s a so why it is not uh, closing unexpected token we need the return first control is where we are missing we are missing something you can delete these also because we are not returning more than one line yes moment is not defined let's import this why this model we don't require import moment from moment that's all done yes so this is the latest product so 7 uh, 12 pm okay i don't need seconds so i'll remove that it will be confusion yeah okay 7 12 pm done so i am going to click on the delete button done deleted this is also i am going to delete deleted so all our crud operations are done for the product so we need to include one module that is the important thing images so in the next section we are going to start the images module okay thank you welcome back guys in this section we are going to work on one of the important as well as the difficult module in this project that is handling the images with the multiple payload concept which is nothing but multiple images okay so we already know how our uh, product description page looks so it is getting beauty because of the images sliding only so we can switch between the multiple images and that is one of the important future in our application so mostly in lot of the applications whether it is e-commerce or any reseller application or this refurbished good selling application anything the instructors or whoever the developers will put only one image uh, so it will be uh, it won't look professional so and also the complex so we are going to avoid that so we'll have the complete flexibility regarding the images to the customer so my deployed version is still loading so let me go to the edit product so we will handle the uh, images for this iphone 12 product okay so this is the edit so first thing we have to do is images tab has to be enabled only in the edit operation not in the add operation because once we get the product id then only you have to add the images okay yeah so this is what we are going to achieve so i am going to upload three images for the iphone 12 product first let me go to the product form go to the tabs this is the tabs okay this tab has to be disabled if not selected product disabled is equal to not of selected product okay for adding a product general tab is enough yes so we cannot click on that done now what is there okay click on the edit so once we click on the images so right now we are having the code of the images in this file only but i want to separate that so i'll just keep it as the images images.js images dot js rfc rfc images and we need selected product selected product as well as a get data function get data function as well as set selected product obviously <coughs> set selected pro product and set show set show product form done yeah now go to the product form come here remove these text images and put the images tab itself separately 
selected product get data is okay what else we are expecting here let's close these out <coughs> set show product form set selected product of course set selected product is not having here let's do that later set show product form is required to close the model okay set show product form that's all done let's see yes still the same now forget about the existing image previews first we need to work on the upload so once we upload we will get the urls then we can show the previews of the existing images so let's concentrate only on the upload okay not on the preview we will do everything so don't worry about sar is missing that instructor is missing that so we will have everything if i go to the edit if i click on the iphone 12 images so these are the existing and also we will have the delete button delete for the existing so you need not to worry about that the only thing we have to worry is uh, getting the images to cloudinary and storing it as the urls in the mongodb for the product so that is the complex thing once we have the urls deleting the images showing the previews is not at all a complex thing that's a cakewalk for us so the only complex thing is uploading so that's we will focus first okay <coughs> yeah go to the images so first we need the upload component from the entity okay upload from the entity okay let's see what we are getting mm, there is this i'm getting nothing refresh sorry not add product edit product there is nothing here oh maybe we need to have the button yeah button from the entity upload image okay type is equal to default or else give type is equal to dashed it will look good let's import the button also okay done yes now you got the upload image okay so when i upload any image now let's see what happens so these are all the videos <coughs> downloads so I have some yeah Dali image so here you can see I'm getting some error so doc type HTML and all this stuff okay so let's delete this and write for the upload we have properties list type list type is equal to picture okay and then we have a property called as the before upload before upload is equal to false okay now let's upload any image this time we should not get any errors yes so here you can see we are getting the preview properly and we are having the uh, uh, image name also so once you get the preview you can uh, have the upload button so you can get the you can get rid of the cancel and footer here so once you are in the images tab so go to the products form footer okay footer is equal to null only if we are in the images tab so let me write a query const selected tab set selected tab initially one so whenever we change it i'm going to update that state active key selected tab on change set selected tab is equal to null sorry the changed value now come to the model so whenever we are in the images tab that means if selected tab is equal to two if selected tab is equal to to 
it's null else it's true it's true now let's see so still we are not getting this uh why we are not getting mm okay let's do if selected tab equal to equal to to then it's null it's a null okay still we are loss losing that in the general tab also mm we'll get rid of that yeah so i will choose the complete uh, footer prop itself as the conditional prop so what i am going to do means yeah dot 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 <coughs> so in the parenthesis just write condition if selected tab equal to equal to 2 then only you have to hide the footer okay so just get rid of these conditions the only condition we have is footer is equal to false or else null just get rid of this yeah so if selected tab is equal to 2 footer it is equal to false remaining these prop will not even execute so obviously it will be there yes so in the general we have in the images we don't have so our first scenario is passed so we don't have here okay <coughs> now coming to the images so we have the button so we are getting the previews so go to the images okay so let's upload we are getting the image so once you got the preview you have to uh, add the upload button okay const uh file set file initially null okay so here i'm just writing on change info so set to file is equal to info dot file done okay we have this so once uh file is there that means dot flex dot justify and okay so once file is there you have to show the button upload so this is cancel actually cancel and then you have one more button type primary this has to be on click on click is equal to upload okay close these out oh sorry yeah gap phi uh this is dashed or in default <coughs> yeah so here i have const upload is equal to some function so i am just printing it in the console console dot log uh file once uh, whatever you have uh, what is this change yeah okay this is good mm iphone 12 images okay text is not there yet the text should be upload and this has to be disable if not file okay if not file yeah so we just have the upload image button now just upload this image so we got the image we need some padding 
సారీ మా ఫ్లెక్స్ ఎంటీ ఫైవ్ ఎంటీ ఫైవ్ డన్ నౌ యూ గాట్ ద అప్లోడ్ బటన్ సో వెన్ యూ క్లిక్ ఆన్ దిస్ వీ విల్ గెట్ ద ఫైల్ ఇన్ ద కన్సోల్ యూ కెన్ సీ యూ గాట్ ద ఫైల్ ఇన్ ద కన్సోల్ సో దీస్ ఫైల్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు సెండ్ ఇట్ యాజ్ ద ఫామ్ డేటా టు ద బ్యాక్ ఎండ్ ఓకే సో వాట్ ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ టు డూ మీన్స్ let me why the cancel is not working set show product form false here also set show product form are we passing this yeah we are not passing that set show product form set show product form oh we have the prop but we didn't passing the value done yes edit go to images cancel yeah it's working now we need the api call to handle this image okay so go to the images so what i want to do means try catch <coughs> so in the catch block i'm just writing it here uh message error message dot error error message and we need the dispatch also const dispatch is equal to use dispatch use dispatch and then we have set loader dispatch set loader false okay set loader false and then dispatch set loader true so then here the upload image logic will come logic so we will have uh, two parts in the upload image first upload it to cloudnary okay i think we can handle this in the back end itself just upload that's all okay so once we get the back end logic we will include the upload logic here okay upload image to cloudnary and get the url i think we can get the url in the back end and store it that's not required that's all this is the thing so i hope you got it so in the next lecture we will start the back end for this thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the crucial part of the image upload that is dealing with the cloudinary and uh, multer okay so first let me tell you what is the use case of both cloudinary is used to store our images that means it's a storage thing and multer is used to access the images from our internal system that means in the back end we cannot access the system directly our computer so cloudinary will help you to access that so from the front end we will send only the file so with the help of that file object it will pick the image from the system and it will send it to the cloudinary so we need both okay so first now uh, terminate the job in the back end here and npm install multer and uh, cloudinary cloudinary so if you are already installed no problem it will update so if you don't have the account in the cloudinary please create it so let me go to the my cloudinary account so this is the lecture we are going to end up with uh, this lecture and next lecture we are going to end up with lot of errors yeah so this is the cloudinary official website i already have my accounts i am just clicking on the login why it is showing mm here 123 dot at the rate yes it got logged in okay <coughs> so once you logged into the application you need three keys cloud name api key secret key so without this three we can't do anything that means we cannot access this cloudinary from our node js okay yeah so we found the uh, we got the cloudinary and now in the dot env i am going to write cloud name cloud name 
cloud sorry cloud api key is equal to something cloud api secret okay so these values has to be dynamic so you have to copy these values from here so satya 1 and 5 is my cloud name api is this api secret is this so i'll pause this video here and i'll paste the values okay yeah done guys so i have pasted my values now i'll go to the server uh let me close this close the client folder yeah so here in this server folder i'm going to create a new file called as the so already we have the config right so cloudinary cloudinary config dot js okay so we have this cloudinary config dot js now we need the connection code so where we have that connection code mm. more info this is uh, delivery thing dashboard transformation reports add ons there should be some documentation somewhere account mm. media library add ons mm i think this is the thing getting started yeah so here uh, go to the node js first get the cloudinary put it here and then copy the configuration get it here okay done so cloud name will be process dot process dot env dot cloud name okay then api key process dot env dot cloud api key cloud api key then i have process dot env dot cloud api secret yeah cloud api secret so make sure you use the valid variable names done so <coughs> i think this is enough you just need to export the cloudinary again <coughs> module dot exports is equal to cloudinary okay so we are done with the cloudinary now go to the uh where it is server create a new uh, file or else uh, create new is not required go to the products route only okay yeah so here i am going to enter i am writing the logic first we need both multer as well as the cloudinary here okay cloudinary js config okay cloudinary js config we got it and then const multer is equal to require multer so from the front end what we are going to get so we are going to get a file that's all and also the product id because uh, we have to insert that url into the product id images array once the image upload is successful okay <coughs> so handle image upload to cloudinary this is the code so first we need the storage object as i said multer is able to get the storage from our db sorry from our system so multer dot disk storage this is the method and then you have file name okay so this file name call back of so this is the configuration code so exactly you have to write 
as per the multer documentation so file name request file and callback so it is going to create the callback with the file done okay storage now you have to call the storage dot upload method so here i am just writing const image filter is not required so now what i am going to do means uh what i can say router dot router dot post uh, slash upload image sorry upload image to product image to product yeah so i got the snippet i'll explain yes so auth middleware is common guys okay so this is the route and this is the auth middleware so what we will do basically so basically we will go to the uh, try catch block once we uh, pass this auth middleware but here we have to get the image url because in the try catch block we will handle the logic to pass the image url to the images array for the product but before that we have to get the image url in this request dot body dot image url okay so this is the file multer dot single okay so storage we are passing and file is equal to uh, this is the property name that we have to pass single now you have to handle that okay so i'll get into the try cache block so yeah so from here we could able to access the file into our system from our system so now i am going to write yeah i already got the snippet but let me handle it so first in this uh, try catch block you have to get the url so to get the url first you need to contact the cloudinary const result is equal to await cloudinary dot uploader dot upload method so this is the thing and then you have to pass it request dot file dot path okay so in the front end you have to get the same thing so always just send the image in the file variable okay then only it will work so here also file here also file and here also file so don't use other name if you use other name here also use the same name so once again i'm explaining multer is handling the image from our system to cloudinary okay once we get the cloudinary uh, image url we will handle it in our code base to get it into the mongodb so from this code multer can get the from uh, image from our system and here we are sending that image to the cloudinary and from this result we can get the url okay so this uh, get image get image from pc okay and uh, upload image to cloudinary upload image to cloudinary so in this result you are going to get the response from the cloudinary okay now i'm going to write const product id is equal to request dot body dot product id and then await await product id dot find by uh, find by id and update so we will push this uh, request dot image url to the images array it's not image url it's actually secure url okay push images with the result dot secure url so in the cloudinary is a response object there will be a property called as the secure url so that property is nothing but the image url from the cloudinary then you can send the response this is the code guys i know it is complex i understand but this is the best way to do get the access to the pc using the multer and then once you got the access just send it to the cloudinary so this function is only for getting the pc data that's all so without this it's too difficult to get that and uh, yeah that's all okay mm. remaining uh, we can test in the next lecture so we got the front end ready we got the back end ready so we'll integrate this uh, api to the front end in the next lecture and we'll see thank you
welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the integration part of the images okay so first go to the front end client src app dot oh, uh, api calls products <coughs> upload image so at a time we can only upload one image so in future we will handle multiple so upload product image yes okay let's send the payload as it is what we are getting from the component so in this payload the two things those are mandatory are file and product id okay now go to the images so here we need to handle that so i am just writing const form data so you have to send it using the form data only so normal payload will not work in this format okay so whenever you want to access image upload or any file upload things use only form data now for this form data you have to append file as well as product id form data dot append product id which is nothing but selected product id and then const response is equal to await upload product image okay done form data and this has to be async yeah so we'll handle the remaining scenarios later so that means closing the model pop up uh, showing the preview hiding the preview all those stuff so first we need to make the things working message dot success response message else error message okay don't close the model pop up keep it as it is okay done so hope everything should work fine but uh, we are still left with few scenarios in the back end okay if you come to the uh, cloudinary dot uploader dot upload we need the second object as the where we have to upload because in the cloudinary we may have lot of folders if i go here dashboard media library so i have lot of folders here so i have to get only one specific folder to be uploaded so i am going to write a new folder with our project title folder is equal to share mp share mp okay done so let's hope for the best and upload refresh i know we'll get <laughs> lot of errors so why it is getting magic let me inspect something going wrong delete the token refresh yeah my front end server has some issue let's reload done oh we did not even restart the server yet npx nodemon server slash server okay so once it is ready i will log in done so let's log in from uh what who is the one uploaded a user id arjun 123 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 arjun uh iphone 12 edit images so i'll upload this uh, dummy image first yeah this uh, dali image okay let's close this out and click on the upload button so nothing we got nothing 404 the endpoint itself is wrong so file is going product id is going okay slash api slash upload product image this is the route post method what we have in the product upload image to product yeah upload image to product copy <coughs> api calls upload image to product okay done so we need to refresh edit images upload image 
get this done upload loading 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 so upload image to product is pending i don't know from where it is are we sending any response from the back end yes we are image uploaded successfully oh from the catch block we are not sending anything that is the reason we are not getting uh, anything yeah this is the issue i think we are uh, into some errors that is the reason it is not getting so let me go to the cache block and send the error first yeah okay so the music has started we are getting end up with the errors let's iphone 12 images upload image dali upload cloudinary is not defined okay this is uh, cloudinary js config or else just keep it cloudinary nothing wrong okay so cloudinary yes now let's see cannot read property uploader of undefined why it is undefined oh this has to be directly exported const cloudinary is equal to okay come on come on come on yes image uploaded successfully let's see the response upload product image why it is called these many times okay this was previous so you can see we got the result and we got the secure url uh, why this let's go to the products and check okay cancel it images sorry products go to iphone 12 images awesome so here you can see you got the product if i put this here i have to get the dali perfect yes so we got our image okay now let's upload another image let's upload another image this cat image I think these are having some huge size that is the reason it's taking some time let's delete okay now we need to handle the preview scenarios so let's close these out images so the product is having the images but we are not showing anything so we need to show the previews once it got uploaded go to the images above this upload image first we need to have if selected product dot images dot length greater than zero or else do one thing go to the const images set images then uh, sorry initially it will be selected product dot images okay selected product dot images now what i am going to do means i loop through the images array images dot map for every iteration i am going to render a div so return return a div return a div so it will have first the image image obviously img img okay so let me have some class name class name h20 w20 object over and this div has to be a flex flex gap 2 and this has to be image okay and uh, i'm going to have border border solid border solid 
border solid and then uh, border gray 300 okay again these things has to be in the flex because we may have multiple images flex get gap phi and make this rounded okay let's see the output yes you got the images okay now <coughs> have some padding inside it yes you got the images and uh, let's have some padding bottom mb five mb five okay now you have the easy uh, observation let's have this border gray 500 yes these are the images so here at the bottom or else uh, here i'm going to have some delete button okay so you already have the delete button here just copy that copy the delete button put it in the images right to the image forget about the on click action later we will do yes okay this has to be items and items and done and we don't need padding 5 let's use padding 2 or 3 yeah this is enough so once you click on the delete we'll handle the delete that's uh, later now the thing is if we upload any new image that has to be uploaded and it has to be appended to the images array okay that means uh, okay so let's go to the products route where is upload image yeah so in the response you just need to return result dot secure url in the upload image url upload image endpoint so in the image i am going to write response dot success set images images and response dot data that means the new image and also uh, preview so for the upload uh, for the upload component there will be a prop called as the preview okay yeah preview file so this has to be uh, uh, what i can say mm, true only uh, before getting the response okay once you get any new response it has to be false okay so first let's see what if i make the preview false if i make the preview false i'll get the uh, nothing it's getting crashed preview file is not a function mm, what is this i think it's not preview file it's show upload list okay show upload list yeah initially let's make this as false let's see now go to the edit sorry edit images upload image upload this uh, yeah so there is no preview so the preview has to be hidden only after getting the api call response as success okay so now first initially i am going to make this show preview sorry show preview set show preview true initially it should be true okay and then come here upload show upload list should be show preview so on change on changing the file it has to be show preview true set show preview true set show preview true and after getting the api response as success you have to make set show preview false done so this is the proper ux now let's upload one image refresh one page 
go there images upload an image okay so yeah i'll use this uh, cinema image so i am getting the preview here so once i upload and after getting the response this has to be hidden and also i am going to make few more changes yeah first let's let's do this upload awesome here you can see it got created here and the preview has also gone and even this upload button also disabled that means you have to make the set file null once you do that set file null okay let's upload one more image why it is still enable okay we didn't make the set file null before right so i'll choose uh yeah there is some small image here mm where is it yes there is some small token oh this is yeah jpg okay and delete this first one yeah so this one is there show upload list oh can't read property of path there is some issue with that image let's do that okay image let's upload any one yeah here i have i got the image so after uploading this has to be disabled this has to be added here and this has to be hidden upload done so everything is working as expected image uploaded successfully so even if you go to the edit button again images i got the four images that's all guys our image module is also done so if you have any doubts ask now itself because this cloudnary concept is very confusing even the multer also so let's clarify now itself thank you welcome back guys in this section we are going to start the admin panel of our application so right now the products is being created but the status is pending so this product has to be approved by the admin to, uh, to go and display it in the home page so once the product gets approval it will be displayed on the home page so the customer can see this product if they are interested they can place the bids or they can contact the seller so this is the process and before that first we have to make one change in the get product cpi okay so first let's go to the products route products route products route okay so where is get products yeah so this is the get products api right so here i am going to receive a filter now okay the filters will be const user which is nothing but the seller okay seller and uh, categories and uh, what i can say uh, age okay age is equal to age equal to request dot body request dot body okay done so initially categories will be empty and age also will be empty we will deal uh, deal this uh, categories and ages later okay uh, why it is not destructuring must have an initializer oh yeah now it's fine so you might be wondering what are these uh, categories and uh, age so these are the things <coughs> you can see i can filter using by selecting the categories as well as the age which is nothing but how many years old uh, products i have to see okay so for that i am going to keep this but uh, these two things we will discuss when we come to the filter section so right now we will focus only on the seller that means we have to get the products by the uploaded by seller id okay so now i am going to add let filters object let filters object is equal to initially empty array sorry empty object so 
so if seller is there i am going to write filter dot seller is equal to uh, seller and here in the products i am going to write filters done i think we are good <coughs> now let's go to the front end products here <coughs> so you will be having the filters yeah so here i'm just passing the filters and uh, here also you just need to pass the filters filters and this has to be changed to post method okay and uh, where it is products route here also post method done so the reason why i am adding these filters objects is we have two scenarios for the user he has to get only the products uploaded by him but for the admin we have to get all the products so, so anyhow we are starting the admin module module so that is the reason i am doing these things now itself okay now if i go to the products list for the profile so i have to get the products which i want to sell or i already uploaded okay so this is the index so first i have to get my user id const user id is equal to state dot users use selector state dot users import it and in the get data i am passing the filters seller is equal to user dot underscore id okay done now let's see i did not got anything because arjun has not uploaded anything here let me log out and log in with the person who has uploaded the products cancel this so users who has uploaded the products even i i forgot that let me michael arjun messi we have three let me go to the products seller seller id is ending with 796 who is 796 796 is messi so messi has uploaded the products so now until unless if i log in with messi i should not see any products in the profile and products okay so now i am going to log in with the messi 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 login done now i'll go to the profile products awesome so only the messi will able to see these products until unless the logged in user is not an admin so admin can see any product but that will be a separate route so right now only the message should be able to see the products here okay done so now we need to design the admin page so to design the admin page first we need to have anyone user as the admin okay so i'm going to make the arjun as the admin so always in my applications arjun will be the admin so he is the role right so i'm going to make him admin directly in the db itself yeah okay <coughs> now let me log in with the arjun account arjun123 at gmail.com password 123456789 done now i want to apply uh, some logic in the protected route the first and foremost logic is whatever the page it may be when i click on this uh, logo i have to navigate to the home page okay so let me go to the protected route protected page so this is the title right on clicking on this i have to navigate to the home page and where is the profile yeah so here we are directly navigating to the profile so this is not what we want okay so we have to check the user if the logged in user is a normal user we have to navigate him to the profile else we need to navigate him to the admin route okay so if user dot role equal to equal to user then navigate him to the profile else navigate him to the admin done okay now let's see and this has to be cursor pointer yes so here if i go here it is navigating to the admin because arjun is the admin now we need to design this page 
so let's go to the pages and create a new page admin so first i'm going to create the index rfc rfc admin so forget about the tabs and all the stuff first let's have the page okay so i am just copying this profile and replicating this for admin done now we should able to see the page yes we can now let's design the tabs import tabs from entity okay go tabs from entity then i want to have tabs as an admin i should able to see the products as well as the users okay users done cool now let's see products users so in the next lecture we will start designing these tables okay thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the products table for the admin so you have two options you can reuse the component by passing the props to the profile products because we already have that products table so in the profile so here you can see but this is the client uh, customer side not the admin side so if you don't want to mess up all these things by passing the props changing the if else condition and all the stuff just copy the code copy the code and go to the admin create a new file products dot js paste it here done let's see the output okay so let's go to the index dot js so instead of this h1 i am going to make products products paste it here done so products form is not required because admin cannot create the product only the normal users can create so go to the admin products that is the reason better copy and paste don't use the direct component we don't need the delete product also okay because admin cannot delete the product of some other users he can just block it or make it inactive so what else we need product form if you want to give that functionality you can give if admin want to edit and delete but i don't want the admin to edit and delete the customer products okay so get data is required delete product is not required uh then add product is also not required product form is also not required right now the only thing we need is table so delete product go to the actions keep the return div empty i'll have separate actions for this done so loader slice there is some issue with the loader slice get rid of all the use state hooks which we are not using hmm attempted to import loader slice okay remove these things here also remove these things done refresh yes so even though we are in the admin route so the logged in user is admin but still we cannot able to see the products because we are passing the filters so for the admin you should not pass this user id okay admin has to get all the products go to the condition and send filter id sorry filters object as the null now we should get the data yes here you can see you got the data as an admin you you could able to see all the products now so this is the product name and we also need the seller name because this table might contain that means this table might have a uh, products from lot many users 
that means uh, of course these uh, two products are uploaded by messi only so in future ronaldo may apply in future roman reigns may upload the product so like that so we should have the seller name here for the admin to read okay so i am changing these as product and then i'll copy this and second one will be seller seller should be in the render okay render record dot seller dot name okay record dot seller dot name close this i think you will get an error yes we got it so first thing is you need to return this okay return but you won't get the value i believe yes the value is empty because if you uh, do the query like get uh, only get you will get only the flat values that means uh, the values in the root level you will get only uh, these values but we need the complete information of the seller we don't need the seller id unique that means we we don't want only the seller id we want the complete seller information so for that you just need to populate the seller populating in the sense the complete object so go to the products route products route get products so before sorting just populate what you have to populate you have to populate the seller that's all now if you refresh you should able to get the seller name no uh, somehow it got logged out oh uh, go to the admin yes now it is working fine no issues at all my chrome is not restarted properly compiling done okay now we could able to see the seller product seller description price category age status added on so here i should able to accept that means approve the product reject the product ask the changes whatever okay so first let me go to the actions this is very important actions column okay so where is it admin products so listen very carefully first title action and then we want to return a function so i am going to write lot of if else condition const current status or else i am going to write status status and uh, underscore id from the record okay so we want to update the status with the help of the product id so if you want to update first we should know what is the existing status of the product and based on that we have to know what buttons we have to display okay so first let me have a dot flex uh dot flex sorry gap gap uh 3 we should have a return here okay yeah so now i am going to write if status is equal to equal to equal to pending if status is equal to pending we need a dot span i don't want to put the buttons here i want to use the span with underline okay span span with uh, approve approve class name underline okay if status is equal to pending we need to have a text called as the approve so we got this text and everything has to be cursor pointer cursor pointer now i am going to write a function here on status update const on status update 
so we are going to get the id as well as the status i'm just calling this on clicking on the span element yeah okay we got the first button based on the status approved so we are going to call the on status update with the id and the status is going to change as approved from pending so initially the status is this and whenever it is approved we also need uh, sorry whenever it is the current status is pending we also need to have the reject button okay pending we need class name same cursor pointer on click rejected okay reject done yes now uh what we need to have we got the pending uh, we got the approve reject and we need to have block so when it is already approved when it is already approved and the seller is making any invalid activity in the portal we need to block this add okay that means product if status is approved class underline and cursor pointer so instead of rejected i'm going to keep it as the blocked okay block and block so block will display only if the current status is approved so if it is already blocked we need to show reapprove button okay already blocked cursor pointer approved unblock or else reapprove whatever done so we got four buttons based on the product status guys so this is very important so take your time and write to every condition very clearly and you should understand why you are writing that condition so i am writing all this condition based on my real time experience only so we need all these in the admin side so right now i should able to see approve and reject okay why this empty action let's delete that yes done so in the next lecture we will write the api to do these actions thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the product status update action okay so the uh, requirement is very simple guys you just have to update the product not the complete product you just need to update the status so if you want to write a separate api to handle the status update you can write or else if you want to use the existing product update api you can do that but that is somewhat risky so because that api is calling from the customer side this api is calling from the admin side so it's better to have a separate api okay so go to the products route products route so i am just calling it as the update product status so update product status followed by id try status is equal to request body we are going to get the id done product status updated successfully close it out response dot send success false error message close it down okay so we are just taking id in the query string and uh, what i can say status in the request body and method is put perfect now let's go to the products.js in the api calls okay update product status update product status done okay perfect so we have the update product status receiving id and status status we are sending in the object because it is a payload uh, i think we are good update product status yeah go to the products.js in the admin this is the right status on status update include that so i'm just accepted the github copilot snippet so to dispatch set loader true obviously to set the loading true and edit sorry this is not edit product i know it will give that but uh, this is not the case so it should be where it is yeah 
it should be update product status so it will receive only id and status dispatch set loader false if response not success call the data and also show the message message dot success response dot message uh, else throw new error throw new error response dot message that's all okay now uh, let's play with the status okay i hope everything should work so right now both are in the status pending so i want to approve both the uh, product status okay i'm just clicking on the approve button done got approved approve so we got the block button let's block it blocked blocked unblock unblock so it's better to show the status in the uh, capital letters to make it look good okay yeah render uh return yeah record dot status dot uppercase yes so both are approved okay so we are done with the products uh now in the next lecture we will work on the users okay users is very simple so there also we'll have the actions that's all so thank you see you in the next lecture welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the users table as well as the actions so very simple table go to the uh, admin so you already have these uh, products let's create users.js with the help of that copy the products and put it in the users.js okay so we need to do some modifications and before that we need to have the apis ready okay so go to the uh, users route first and let me check do we have the get all users except admins or else it's better to have all the users okay get all users get users try user dot find response dot send success true users fetched successfully data users catch error response dot send success false error message throw this out okay perfect now go to the users in the front end and uh, write get all users get all users done access instance slash api slash users slash get all users perfect it is get users okay not get all users done so make sure uh, you have the auth middleware for get all users users route yeah we missed that you can see this should not be the case it should have auth middleware done okay so now let's come to the products.js sorry users.js so first replace it with the users here and here and this use state also replace it with users const users sorry users set users this get products will change as get users or get all users okay and this response dot success will change as set users done get data function is done so status update you are going to have this should be uh yeah this we will do it later and let's change the columns so instead of product let's say user or else let's make this as name itself we don't need seller we don't need description price category age yeah we need name we need name email 
and then created on created at moment moment of string dot created done guys okay so we got the better user columns forget about the status okay and remove this added on button because we already have the created it and go to the data source instead of products make this as users now let's go to the index remove these users and add the component okay users done <sighs> no errors luckily let's go to the users <laughs> i don't i don't i don't know why we got no data let's see where it is pointing get products get users we got the data why it is not showing then Mm, users get data data source also users oh we did not uh, set it uh, not here this is not response dot users this is re response dot data yeah now it has to work awesome here you can see michael arjun created it status active and all these things are working now go to the columns and add one more column role add one more column role okay this is role done role is equal to user even this role also i am going to make this as upper case yeah perfect so only arjun is the admin now in the next lecture we will work on changing the status of these users and roles that means user uh, statuses so right now all the status will be active so we'll make it block uh, and unblock thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the user status update so first we need the api go to the users route update user status simple update user status comma id okay uh, what else we need await await user dot do we have the user here why yeah away dot user dot find by id and update so you are going to find with request body and update the document response dot send catch error success false may error message throw it out close the api done okay so update user status is also perfect now come to the users update user details sorry update user status same api payload done so id payload update user status and id go to the users this is the api update product status and this should be renamed as update user status and for the user we won't get these many conditions so we will have only two first we will have if it is active make it block okay blocked if it is blocked make it active okay unblock done so i think we are good let's see yeah so 
right now uh michael arjun satya messi so arjun is the admin right so now i am going to write uh, i am going to block the messi account or uh, michael account so this is the account right i am going to block it user status updated successfully but uh, somehow the data is not updated why ha huh, why i am not uh, understanding why get data is called okay let's refresh once i don't know what the uh, what got updated nothing got updated still the michael is status is active something is strange mm status and record uh, id block okay we have clicked on this button let me open the network and see what's going on i'm going to block michael so it state user status updated successfully but oh it's sent as uh, blocked but uh, there is no proper data something is strange current status on status update update user status why it has sent as uh, form data it has to be sent as a normal payload oh this is just a status sorry when you blindly accept the github copilot snippets this kind of situations you will face okay now let's refresh this time i will block michael done so michael account got blocked so once the user is blocked you have to write one more condition while login so go to the users route again users route okay so login so once the user found first you need to check if user is active or not user is active so if user dot status is not equal to active then user is not active or the user account is blocked the the user account is account is blocked please contact the admin please contact admin done okay let's close this out now let's log out and log in with michael credentials 1234567 login the user account is blocked please contact admin so our logic is working fine now i am going to write uh, arjun login done okay so users i am going to unblock him let it be yeah now log out login with michael One two three four five six seven eight. Login. Done. It is working. Now one more change you have to do is anyhow we have logged in with the normal user account. Michael is the normal user. So if I click on these, of course I will navigate to the products. But even though I can change the route and I can go to the admin. You can see I can go to the admin. This is not acceptable. because michael is not an admin he should not even have have the access to this route okay so now i'm going to write in the admin okay in the admin use effect get the user const user is equal to you selector state dot users you selector state dot users okay let me write the use effect so if the user dot role is not equal to admin 
navigate the user to home page not window dot location just use the navigate method const navigate is equal to use navigate use navigate let's import that done and here just replace it with navigate use effect is not imported let's import that perfect now even if I go to the admin I cannot access that because I am not an admin you can see only Arjun can be able to access the admin 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay done so Arjun can access the admin that's all so that's all guys this is about the admin panel so still we are left with few more features in the admin that we will implement once we are done with the home page as well as the product description page and also we left one uh, main thing in the products so that is uh, product image delete so if i log in with the messy 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 go to the products if i go to the edit images so i don't have any images for reebok if i go to the apple so i have these images so when i click on delete it does nothing you can see it's still clicking on the uh, upload button okay so this i am going to uh, resolve in the next lecture but please try it because you know what is the structure of the product you just need to send this url and you need you need to uh, pull it off from the uh, images array so try that of course i will tell but uh, try to uh, complete before the next lecture so you can get some confidence so you are following the lecture like that okay thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to uh, work on one of the bug weeks or else we can call it as the missed uh, requirement so in the last lecture only i asked you to uh, work on that so if you are not able to do let's do it in this lecture okay so let me log in with messy of course i'm in with messy account only so if i click on the iphone 12 i got these images tab and four images are already uploaded and i can upload the new image also it seems okay so now we need to implement the delete functionality so first i'll go to the back end so i think it's not required no back end is not required because anyhow we have to update the product with the images array okay so let's go to the images yeah so what is why this thing is getting populated mm. oh these images looping is present inside the upload that is the reason it is behaving behaving like that so it has to be outside actually done yeah now you can see there is nothing action uh, performing after clicking so once we click on the delete so this is the delete right i'm going to write a call delete sorry delete image okay delete image const delete image is equal to image async try cache block dispatch set loader let me close the try block in the cache block set loader false in case message dot error if any done okay now i am writing you here const updated images array is equal to images dot filter img img is not equal to image then i am going to write uh, const what i can say hmm, updated product is equal to so selected product and uh, images now let me write await sorry 
const response is equal to await update product call this with updated product uh, what is it i think it's edit product yeah edit product first parameter is id second parameter is payload okay so edit product first parameter is id second parameter is payload done if it is success message dot success set images updated images sorry and call the get data else throw new error message that's all guys i think it has to work so let me refresh once go to the edit images so i'm going to delete this last image product updated successfully uh, nothing is there mm. let me go to the product apple product we have to get only three images no it didn't got updated uh oh, something is missing this is update product mm payload edit product okay images it's still going as the four no this is not the case uh what is missing the product is equal to updated images sorry images dot filter image is not equal to image are we passing the image oh we are not passing the image to the delete yeah that is the issue okay And this has to be corrected that's all it should work now delete yes product updated successfully now even if i go to the edit again images i have only 3 okay so delete product is also done so we are ready to build the most awaited page home page of our application where we display the filters and the products product description all the stuff so in the next section we are going to work on the customer facing screens okay done thank you welcome back guys in this section we are going to start the home page of our application so we are going to get all the uploaded products we'll display it in the home page once we click on that uh, product we have to navigate to the product description page so as like e-commerce only but we are going to have some different functionality okay so first let's go to the home page okay uh where is it Mm, pages home index so let me write const products products set products initially empty array then const filters set filter initially we need status is equal to approved okay let's focus on this filter only remaining we'll do it later okay done yeah this is the page we are going to design so first let me go to the uh home page and write const get data async try catch block dispatch set loader get products set loader if response dot success set products i have to change it as response dot data not response dot products okay done this should be response dot data and this needs to be imported get products and this has to be filters 
okay now uh, put this uh, user at the top yeah write one use effect get data done okay so dispatch is not there let's import use dispatch redux let's set loader import uh, message from entity uh, then import sorry it's already use selector is there here use dispatch and here i'm going to write const dispatch is equal to use dispatch so all the errors has gone let's see everything seems to be okay now i'm going to remove this uh, h1 text so i'm going to loop through the products dot map and i will re render one div i will return uh, i will return it div okay so initially i am just writing product dot name let's see what happens of course it's got crashed i don't know why console products dot map is executing before getting the data okay so let me have some space here that means uh, null check here only execute the map function if you have the data in products so now it is not crashing and also not getting any data that means something is going wrong in our backend get products we got the products then why it is oh here also we are getting it as the products no this is not the case it has to be data okay so go to products route this has to be data so wherever you have used that please update it so this is my mistake i apologize okay even in the admin also in the get data let's use it as the response dot data because we should not miss our uh, structure so everything has to be same even in the users also it's response dot data only and go to the profile there also you would be having the products there also products and this is also response dot data okay done let's close all these things and go to the home page now we should see some data yes we can okay now uh i want to display the filters component at the left side if i click on this uh, into button it is going to exceed and then i want to display the actual products area okay so what i am going to do means first i am going to copy this and i'll keep dot grid dot grid calls for and keep it and i'm going to write class name border border gray 300 rounded border solid border solid okay border solid let's see the output ones yes you got the products like this now let's have some padding okay not here so the first one will be obviously the image okay img first one will be obviously the image uh, of course product dot image images of zero class name so let me have so initial height i'm going to give it as w64 which is nothing but 256 pixels and let's give object cover okay let's see how it looks 
so it looks very weird okay we anyhow we'll update the images don't worry so images of zero and then uh, what we have for grid i am going to apply gap phi for every item yes so we are getting double borders here i don't know why so first let me go to the image product images and upload the original images okay i'll choose the existing ones only okay these are the existing ones copy okay let me download it to the google okay <coughs> iphone 12 yeah images hmm phone 12 refurbished okay yeah this is the one download then you have one more image this is this is not looking good Hmm, this is also not okay. What else we have? Yeah, not this. No, hmm, we'll get the good UI because of the images only, so it has to be good. Yeah, I'll choose this. It's loading. Yeah, save image. Save. Oh, I think it's WEP file. It won't look, uh, it won't be uploaded. Let me try this. Yeah, this is PNG we can upload and this is also png and this is also we can upload this is wp we cannot save images yeah jpg yeah we got uh, enough images so let me upload one more one, let me download one more that is uh, reebok reebok bat okay so let's choose uh, any one of the thing yeah this looks good no this is not having clarity we need some image with good clarity this is adidas Yeah, for the time being, I'll upload this. Later, you can adjust. Done. So let's go to the products. So first, I'll upload the Reebok bat. Okay. Upload. Done. Go to the iPhone. Images. Delete all these things. yeah now upload new images first one is uh, this upload done second one is this so delete the first one cannot read property of undefined what happened let me write yeah done let's have one more i think it has to delete the old one that is the issue it seems again it is coming with the same issue we'll re we'll resolve this later yeah now it will work 
that's all guys we got the enough images let's go to the home page yeah so now it's looking perfectly good so the reebok image is not okay so let's delete the product itself okay later we can add the new one because it is missing our ui actually go to the products let's delete the reebok bat okay go to the home page yes so you have one product now let's go to the home page here yeah so the first thing is product height needs to be adjusted so go to the instead of 64 let's make it uh, 40 40 40 and then so just have one divider yeah this looks good uh, then iPhone 12 Pro and some description and uh, amount okay so do we have the divider component yes we do so just have divider divider component what is the name we have given divider only it's not giving me auto suggestions yeah divider and here i'm going to make flex flex call flex call gap phi okay gap phi so after the divider i'm going to have dot p phi so in the h1 product name and in the p product description and then sm gray uh, sorry in the span i'm going to write span i'm going to write product price and currency i'll keep dollar okay for currency i'm going to have some different color class name text lg text green 500 font semi bold let's see yes this looks good uh, even for these things also just have flex flex call gap 2 okay and for description it's need not to be uh, text gray 500 so it can be normal color okay just get rid of this yeah think it's good why this extra gap mm. gap 5 is too high let's make gap 2 still some gap i don't know why Mm, let me inspect this elements oh this is because of p5 okay let's make this as p2 that's all yeah okay even that also px2 not y2 yes this is fine and change the price color to text green 700 text green 700 and also make these as text excel text excel and uh, here uh, p b uh sorry pb2 okay pb2 yes now we got some the only thing is the divider i think divider is not required okay divider is required after the uh, description okay so that is the issue here let's have the divider now this looks good i think yes it seems very good so name description price 
even the gap also we don't need two we just need one okay perfect and uh, here image height is okay and uh, it's better to have call phi yes this seems good because anyhow in the future we will get the what is this uh, filter not in the future in this course only yeah we'll get the future then we will adjust it to grid calls for right now this is fine okay simple name and then uh, description price okay now let me write the on click for this on click key product dot id where is it const uh, dis navigate const navigate is equal to use navigate use navigate let me import that and on clicking on this product slash product dot underscore id done so this has to be cursor pointer okay uh, yeah this one cursor pointer done so when we click on this we will navigate to the product description page so let's create that page in the next lecture we will design uh, go to the new folder product info index.js rfce product info done app.js this is home page and this is product slash id sorry colon id product info done perfect let's see yes it is navigating to product info with the product id so in the next lecture we will work on the product info page thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the product uh, information page so let me show you the exact uh, product okay so first we need to uh, design the images switching then we need to design the uh, product detail section okay so let me go to the ui so i'm going to write const product set product initially null okay so const sorry go to the home page copy these two things use effect and get data put it here again go to the home page copy the navigate dispatch and uh, put it here okay so again go to the home page copy all the above things and put it here okay so we don't need filters actually because this is the get product by id okay i don't know whether we have the end point or not let's create it yeah we have only get product edit product delete product upload product image yeah so after the edit product i am going to write get product by id so we are going to send the id for the back end axios get product by id return response dot data catch error close it out go to the products route products route get products edit product delete product yes even in the back end also we don't have that okay get product by id try we will get the id id in the query strings so const product is equal to await product dot find by id request dot params dot id and populate the seller obviously response dot send success true data is nothing but the product catch block response false throw the error done 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 okay now come to the page 
so get product by id this time it should be there as it is and we need to get the id from the use params okay id from use params okay let's pass this id first done instead of set products make this as set product perfect okay so let's go to the page open the inspect network expand uh clear everything refresh the page so this is the api call we got the product so everything is working so now let's start designing the page so i'm going to make this page into two parts so if you want to make it into two parts you just have to write dot grid dot grid calls to okay so the first part is for the image okay the first part is for the images so this has to be written only if product data is there done so in the first i am going to write a use state hook const selected image index set selected image index 0 okay initially 0 so now what i am going to do means uh, in these images sorry in this grid calls to the first call will be for the images so this has to be a flex class name flex flex call gap 2 assume okay so first we need to display the big image image sorry img img okay first we need to display the img which is nothing but product dot sorry let's go there put enter here yeah product dot images of selected image index okay product dot image of selected image index and write the class name h full sorry w full h96 object cover and also uh, rounded rounded md let's see the output ones okay so here also we are getting the same output almost now we need to display the other images so dot flex dot gap phi product dot images dot map return display the small image just to select okay class name uh, w20 h20 of course object cover rounded sm cursor pointer awesome close these out okay if you want to keep the alt you can keep it alt empty string mm. close the image close the return close the loop which is nothing but the map okay done we forgot the src src image okay yes now we should know what image is selected here so we need some border okay first of all let's write gap uh, phi here gap phi yes it's fine and then uh, copy all these classes and write the condition 
दिस थिंग शुड बी नॉर्मल इफ या सो हियर आई एम जस्ट राइटिंग कंडीशन इफ सेलेक्टेड इमेज इंडेक्स इक्वल टू इक्वल टू इंडेक्स जस्ट शो सम बॉर्डर बॉर्डर टू बॉर्डर ग्रीन सेवन हंड्रेड और एल्स बॉर्डर ग्रे वॉट एवर एनी थिंग ओके वाइट इज नॉट शोइंग एनी थिंग oh we need to have border solid border solid then only it will work now it should work yes and we need to switch the selected image once we click on this okay on click set selected image index index like this you can see the image getting switched automatically okay i think uh, we need to have some padding also for the selected image yeah like this okay so it looks good actually and let's keep border instead of solid let's have it as dashed yes this looks good so this is the image switching guys okay so if you want to adjust anything height or width and all this stuff you can adjust you have the classes you have the flexibility so h96 is nothing but 384 pixels so based on this you can do okay so in the next section we will start the other uh, part uh, not in the next section so next lecture itself we'll start this part that is product details okay thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the second part in the product info page so the first part is the image uh, switching second part will be product details uh, showing okay so let me go to the second part here details okay so this should be also dot flex dot flex call and dot gap phi so first and foremost we have to display the product name okay yes so we got the product name and in between these two parts also we need some gap so i am going to keep the gap as 5 okay done so we got the gap now i want the product uh, color should be some other than the black so text uh brown 500 let's see do we have that color no we don't uh what else we can choose text red uh completely red is not good yeah this seems okay mm let's go to the tailwind colors ones tailwind colors so you have lot many things orange okay orange uh, is there yellow green mm -hmm. blue violet okay let's choose orange 900 okay let's choose text orange 900 yes iphone 12 done now we need some small description obviously okay so this has to be inside the div h1 and uh, some span element uh description product description okay yes an apple product then we need one divider okay divider with the other part okay the first part is gone okay then i want the divider so this divider has to be imported from the uh, our our components not from the entity so in the home page we already imported that let's copy 
and paste it here oh we already have that actually yes okay so we got the divider i think we don't need if we have the divider like a gap uh, gap file let's have gap 3 okay so the second uh, uh, title will be div the second title will be uh, details product details okay product details product details yes as like this okay product details and then here we have lot of things so every specification that we have taken category purchased year box available bill available accessories available warranty available so we have to display all these things in the flex justify between things okay so what i'm going to do means so this should be uh, obviously class name flex flex call okay later we will decide how much gap we need but for every property we need flex justify between okay justify between span the first property is the span which is nothing but the price and the second property will be the actual value okay span product dot price let's see how it looks okay yeah it looks good but we need some gap okay so md5 uh, not md5 let's give it md2 cool so price is okay now let's do the remaining things okay copy and paste category product dot category remove the dollar symbol okay then we need uh, bill available bill available so here we need to write some condition product dot sorry product dot bill available is true product dot bill available then yes else no okay uh, why it is come yeah here itself let's close this span done so as like bill we have box not this okay we have one more okay box let's let it be written from the github copilot okay so it will guide me come on yes box available not this copy accessories available accessories available so i'll just copy remove this accessories available then the last one should be warranty available warranty available same warranty available done let's see the output okay so we don't need this dollar symbol for everything <coughs> oh sorry yeah okay so category should be uppercase category box available uh, category yes class name uppercase done and uh, what else we have mm, warranty available remaining everything is okay one uh, divider again okay divider again so we got the divider 
and then you have uh, owner details okay so just copy this div put it here okay we need only two items so remove all these things we need only two instead of product details uh, let's make this as seller details name which is nothing but product dot seller dot name we don't need this dollar here and then you have email product dot seller dot email done okay perfect yes so we got everything so the only change we are observing in the deployed version and the current version is the font sizes so in the current version i have uh, decreased the font sizes actually it is looking good so in the deployed we have some huge font so it's better than this okay uh, if you want just the complete div this is the complete div right make this as text md sorry text md it might change no it didn't change for all the span elements you have to change let it be not required anyhow you are going to get the bits module here okay after the seller and then uh, we need one more uh, uh, item okay that is added on so in the images only i am going to show that after showing the images i am going to create one more div okay let's copy this and put it here remove the logic and uh, remove this class name also so the text should be h1 added on okay added on added on so span uh moment so we need moment moment of so dd mm y y y let's say h h m m a close the span element and import the moment or if you want to display the thing in very readable format you can change it again moment from moment so instead of this i am going to change it as uh ddd sorry mmm dd yyy okay let's see how it looks where is it yeah here so added on march 72 what the heck let's keep it only d yeah march 7th 2013 okay let's keep some comma here yeah march 7 2013 and put one divider here also after the images yeah okay added on and uh, the text color has to be changed a bit class name text gray 600 and here also class name text gray 600 yeah so that's all guys so let me have some margin top also for the entire div mt5 to make it look good i am doing all these things yes now the page looks very beautiful as like the deployed version so here we have some more content because bits is there so once the we got the bits so it is going to fill the page so thank you see you in the next section welcome back guys in this section we are going to work on the bits module okay 
so that means uh, this product is uploaded by the messi so if someone want to uh, purchase this product or someone want to bid this product so we are going to have a button here called as the place a bid so when we click on that we are going to show a model pop up so right now uh, this uh, bid is already placed by the user or else uh, this uh, ad is uploaded by the logged in user that's the reason it got uh, disabled so else we can show the demo let me log out in the deployed version okay so i'll log in with one of the account uh, arjun one two three four five six seven eight login okay so it's still loading yeah it got logged in so now if i click on this uh, product information yeah here you can see so the logged in user has already placed two bits with the different prices so actual price of the product is uh, okay so let me go back yeah 52000 so here i forgot to add the price so in our current version we have the price here so 1300 dollars so here uh, let's assume uh, the current uh, value is 52 so he has placed bids for $52,000 and also $40,000. So based on these values, some other person will come and place something else. So based on all the bids, so Arjun can decide. That means not Arjun, Anjali can decide whether this product uh, whom she has to sell this product. Okay. So they can uh, give any message also if they want in the bid. Like I will come to the location and I will take the delivery or else I don't want accessories. So whatever. So they can give a message and they can place the bid. Okay. So this is completely customized version. So in other uh, reseller or uh, refurbished goods platforms, you may don't uh, see this functionality. But in our uh, project, we are going to add this bids functionality. Okay. So if you don't want, you can ignore, but uh, I think it will be a good uh, wait for our package. Sorry, product. Okay. So let me click on this. Yeah, here you can see 52,000 initial amount. So if I remove this, I can place something like, uh, so for 40,000 also, uh, the seller has not responded. So I'm going to make this as 35,000. So message, I'm going to keep something like, I will take direct delivery okay like direct delivery home done so let me refresh the page yes here you can see the new bid is 35000 so we also have an option to uh, admin uh, that means seller so the seller can hide these bits in the product description or else he can show the bits in the product description. That's up to him because this may uh, sometimes affect the product. Uh, uh, that means a purchase thing. Okay. Because always the users will use the less the amount, less amount to purchase. So uh, seller can see always because in the product level, we will show all the bits, but in the product description, it is optional. Seller can decide whether it has to be displayed or not okay so now let's go and start the functionality so here i'm going to create a new uh, section or else new heading so i hope you got what we are going to achieve with this bits functionality so uh, different users will opt for different prices so based on the user quoted amount the seller will decide what is the best amount so then he can contact the person or else the person will contact the seller whatever okay so now uh let me go to the um, yeah product information page it's kind of messaging only but uh, if you implement message we have to implement the socket.io and all those stuff so instead of that it will be a clean way to represent the quoting or bidding okay so let me go to the uh, product info here go to the second part yeah this is the second part details uh, yeah here I'm going to keep one more divider and and now I'm going to have flex call and h1 text with the name bits okay bits uh, let's close this out first okay I think this has to be inside the flex dot flex dot 
justify between done we got the bits now here i'm going to have a new bit button or else text let me have the button okay button on click new bit uh let's import the button first yeah so i got new bit now i'll go to the product info uh i'll just write show add new bit model show add new bit okay mm on click on click set show add new bit done perfect new bit so when we click on this we are going to open one model so in the product info i am going to open the bit model dot js rfce bit model export oh sorry show or else show bit model set show bit model product and reload data or get data whatever and this has to be a model pop up okay and this has to be model i'll simple i'll simply write place new bit okay place a bit for model i'm going to write visible show on cancel open show bit model footer no no we need the footer and uh, what else we have centered model pop up should be centered get rid of this visible done okay go to the product info and add that if show visible model is show bit model is true then bit model awesome click on this why oh, it is not showing oh we did not pass it the props product reload data show bit model set show bit model everything is okay yes here you can see we got the things now uh, let's go to the bit model so first i'm going to create one text uh, dot flex gap phi obviously new bit text center this should be text center text center okay let's close these out div later we can adjust yeah new bit and uh, for footer i am going to have some gap mb 5 okay yeah so let me increase the width also mm width 500 Five hundred is too high. Let's make it eight hundred. Too small, I think. Five hundred. Yeah. <laughs> These things are okay. Now let's design the form. Form from entity. Okay. So I'm going to write uh, layout vertical. Layout vertical. let's close the form yeah so we need fields like first one will be 
amount bid amount uh, I'm going to have the name uh, like uh, you know, this bid amount and then here why all these things just use the normal input input close the form item done form item yes bid amount we got it and then uh, description or else show any message if you want okay we got the text field bid amount uh, instead of description let's keep it as the message okay if the if a uh, person who is bidding want to convey something to the seller he can write it in the message okay and let me write mobile number also if required mm, i think this sure enough because the email is already having let's keep the mobile number if required mobile and here also mobile input dot yeah input type is equal to number done yeah let's decrease the font of model size keep it 600 800 is too high yes this is enough okay now we need the form ref const form ref is equal to form ref is equal to react dot use ref and also we need rules <coughs> rules required this field is required or else just keep the normal message required okay done now for the form first attach this reference and every form item attach the rules okay attach the rules all the things are required now go to the model and write on ok on ok you just need to write form ref dot form ref dot current dot submit and go to the form write on finish on finish is equal to here also I'm going to write on finish on finish let's write const on finish is equal to values try cache block uh, let me close this out first because we don't have the API ready done so in the next lecture we will work on the API for the bits thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the bid model as well as the bid APIs okay so first let's go to the model bid model dot js const mongoose is equal to require mongoose const bid schema is equal to mongoose dot schema first one will be product okay for which product is this bid product okay reference is equal to products and then we have seller okay seller seller which is nothing but user then we have buyer so buyer and then bid amount true message true mobile true mobile is not required because anyhow we will get the name and email from this buyer user object in case if you want you can keep okay status yeah status admin can do this string uh, I think uh, 
I think status is not required. Admin can delete his product bits if they want. Okay. Timestamps true. That's all. Module dot exports is equal to mongoose dot model bits. Perfect. So this is the bit schema. Uh, I think we are good. Now let's go to the routes. Bits route dot js okay const router is equal to express router const bid is equal to require model slash bid model so first one will be i think it's bids model on no bid model only yeah place a new bit router dot post so this is not at all what we required const auth middleware is equal to require middleware slash auth middleware and this should be place new bid okay so let me write the logic mm, it's not giving me the exact snippet okay response dot send success false message error message here const new bid is equal to new bid of request body await new bid of save response dot send success true bid placed successfully done okay now I am going to write get bits, get all bits. Anyhow, we will take the filter object. Okay. First, uh, yeah. Get all bits. Yes. So populate uh, product dot populate buyer dot populate seller all these things we are populating and now mostly the filters we are going to apply on this get all bits will be get bits by the product get bits by the user that means who placed the bid and uh, yeah that's all okay so i'm just writing const uh sorry product and then seller is equal to request dot body okay now i'll just write let filters is equal to empty object let filters is equal to empty object so if product filters dot product is equal to product if seller filter dot seller is equal to seller okay done now uh, here in the find just use the filters that's all okay i think this is uh, enough now let's come to the front end src uh, where it is api calls i think it's not required just write it in the products itself okay <coughs> place a new bid <coughs> send the payload as it is place new bid let's cross check whether the route is correct or not place new bid yes it's right and then get all bids let's pass the filters so we'll get the bids okay done so this is the code now let's come to the product info index yeah not here go to the uh, what i can say we can get the products along with the bids or else if we click on the after getting the product we can call the bid api so both are same anyhow okay so for the api calls optimization i'll write separately go to the 
product info yeah this is the product info so i'm just writing once we get the data so we will get the response dot data right okay so if response dot success const bits response bits response is equal to await get bits or else get all bits get all bits so i am sending product is equal to id and now i am attaching in the set products response dot data bits is equal to bits response dot data okay now let's see whether we are uh, getting the bits or not first we need to place the bit right yeah so here this button has to be disabled for the logged in user because he is the one who uploaded the product so i am going to um mm, yeah the here itself right disable if product dot seller dot underscore id is equal to current user so we need to get the user const user is equal to state dot users okay state dot users come here so disabled is equal to user dot underscore id is equal to product dot seller dot underscore id yes it got disabled because this is not the right way so a person that means seller cannot place his own bit to his own product so let's log out and log in with michael account i think uh, let me go to the users let's see who all the users we have arjun is the admin so satya let's log in with satya account satya prakash 195 1234567 enter user logged in successfully go to the bid place new bid so the current amount is 1300 so let's see bid model yeah bid model on the on finish oh in the products we have written only get all bids we need to have the place new bid also sorry do we have that yes we we have bid model yeah first we need uh, const dispatch is equal to use dispatch const dispatch is equal to use dispatch done and then obviously in the cache block dispatch show hide loading set loader false which is nothing but set loader false in the try block dispatch set loader true so i already got the snippet let me explain what is this so in the this is not add new bit this is place new bit i think yeah place new bit so first we will send the form values bid amount message and phone number along with that we need product seller and buyer all these things okay then only we could do that and uh, dispatch set loader false if it is success reload and uh, set show bit model false it will reload the data and then uh, what else we have user is not defined here that means we need the user from use selector done then we have message message also not defined let's import the message perfect I think we are good guys in the else let me throw the error to cache block throw new error okay throw new error to cache block done so let me place a new bid from satya account okay new bid so I want to place bid for thousand dollars message i'm going to write i'm interested i will come and take the delivery i will come and take delivery and uh, contact me if interested contact me if 
interested done mobile number i'm going to write 9639639630 okay something went wrong let's see place new bid 404 error okay i think the issue is in the products it will go to the bids route obviously it has to go to the bids route only but we did not added that in the server.js that's the issue okay const bids route is equal to bids route and here also app dot use for all the request coming with slash api and bids go and check in the bids route so go to the bids route we might not have exported the module dot exports router module dot exports is equal to router now all good i believe no still error auth middleware let's copy it from some other file bits route place it here and also we forgot to put the middleware auth middleware yeah here it is there done i think this time we should not encounter with any errors perfect now let's place okay done bid added successfully so if i go to the mongodb reload data yeah awesome so we got the new bid here so message id this is the bid id product id seller id buyer id bid amount mobile number created at contact so everything is okay done so in the next section we are going to work on the displaying the product bits both in the what i can say product information page if it is uh, toggled on in the product uh, admin side that means if the seller want to display the product bits in the product information page we can display else we can ignore but in the admin side that means if i go to the messi account not in the admin in the seller side 1234567 okay if i go to here so these are the products right so here i'm going to have uh, one more uh, button called as the show bits so if i click on that i'm going to show all the bits for this product okay that's the thing thank you welcome back guys in this section we are going to work on the displaying the bits tab so not in the bits tab it's in the bits model so right now you can see in the product actions for the uploaded person we are having the delete and edit button now we are going to have a new button called as the show bits okay so let me go to the products in the profile okay go to the admin sorry profile products index okay so here i'm going to create a new model called as the bids dot js rfc bids done so now i'm going to write show bids model set show bids model bids let me remove this div and add a new model okay so title bids uh open let's import the model then only we'll get the suggestions yeah open show bids model on cancel uh footer of course we need uh then what else we have mm, centered okay center uh width is not required right now just close this model okay yeah first we need to open this model based on the click then we'll show these are the actions we have right now so i'm going to click on sorry i'm going to create a span element span dot 
underline underline so just write show bits show bits done go to the use state const uh, show bits set show bits false okay and also we need the bits const bits set bits done and uh, i think this should be present here bits.js okay we have to get the uh, not this product id that's all because based on the product id we need to call that or else let's keep it as selected product okay mm. my pc got struck yeah i'm just replacing this with selected product yes even here also uh, show bits set show bits selected product anyhow we have that and now if show bits is equal to true bits show bits model set show bits model done close this out let's import the bits model perfect okay so let's go to the show bits on click on click set selected product record set show bits true done so this has to be item center item center perfect yes i am getting the bits okay and also let me write cursor pointer close this out yes i am getting the bits so now go to the bits first and foremost we need to display the product okay so h1 selected product dot name iphone 12 okay so let me have a uh, text like product product name yeah selected bits uh, iphone 12 done let me increase the width uh i think 600 is enough perfect okay so for showing the bits we can have the table or else we can have normal grid that's up to you so let's use the table only so if you want to use the table this should be bigger model should be bigger yeah this is fine now first we need to get the data okay const dispatch is equal to use dispatch sorry dispatch is equal to use dispatch and then const get data is equal to use state try set loader true bit data is equal to await get bits product is equal to selected product id if response dot success set bits data else cache block set loader false message error close it out okay so this should be get all bits the filter is product okay so set loader is not defined let's import that perfect and now message just put one comma and keep the message i think we are good now we need the columns okay const columns is equal to first one title uh, name okay we have the name then we need uh, bid amount bid amount okay uh, bid date 
which is nothing but the created it okay we need to refactor that to moment import moment from moment so this has to be moment of created it and this should be uh, mmm y y y s okay so this is fine bid amount bid date uh, we have message okay we don't need status message as it is and then we have uh, contact details contact details contact details so let me have render cell render so I am just going to have email is equal to it's not text dot it's record dot okay record dot phone record dot email so phone will be available in the root level but email will be available in the buyer okay record dot buyer dot email because this will be present in the user object but phone we are taking in the bit form that is the reason I displayed it directly so these are the columns now I am going to make this class name text uh, to excel mm, not required uh, excel only text excel and text primary ok text primary and remove this title and keep bits ok iphone 12 bits yeah so or else uh, let's remove this because we have given product name uh, how we can give mm. just I'll simply write same h1 text with different color ok get rid of this value bits and this I'm going to change it to text gray 500 yeah so bits let me have one divider this has to be imported from the components let me import it it's not coming I don't know why let me go to the product info here we will be having the import statement for the divider where is it where is it yeah here put it here <sighs> done mm, divider is not importing first let me fix one more error in the use effect we have to call the get data your product is there get data yeah so divider is not there put double dots slash okay now it has to work because it is present inside the products this is not root level component now just create the table okay table columns is equal to columns data source is equal to bits data that's all awesome uh, something is not looking good it's looking weird actually uh, remove this text excel first and put all these things in a flex dot flex dot justify sorry gap 2 gap 5 ok put like this flex call make this flex call
yeah now this is somewhat fine and then we have footer should be null here there is nothing to do with the footer they can close normally like here and width also needs to be increased i'll make this width as 1200 yeah yes now it's fine and then we can decrease the gap it's somewhat looking good now yes this is fine bits uh, product name uh, somewhat uh, iphone 12 but we are not getting any data i don't know why let me cross check why get all bits uh, refresh i think there is one bit for this product we have to get it but it is going 404 i think something wrong with our backend get all bits uh, oh slash api slash bits slash get all bits what wrong let me go to the backend bits route okay I think it's going as the post request. Yes, it has to be get. Sorry, it's had to be post only because we are sending the payload. Okay. Yes. Post only. Sorry. Now let's see. Refresh and see. We should get some bits. Yes. Okay. So we got the bid amount uh, and everything email message and all the stuff let's increase the width to 1500 okay where is it yeah yes now it's fine email phone is not working i don't know uh, let me go to the bid it should be mobile not phone so go to the table columns mm, mobile where is it where is it yeah here mobile now we got the name name is not there yes name should be render render buyer dot name we need return record dot buyer dot name okay now these things should be present perfect so now everything seems to be working as expected okay so bid date uh, bid amount uh, i think the even bid date also this much is not required okay just give it ddmmyy hhmm a that's all because we need to decrease the columns size column size yeah now it's fine even this uh, width also i think enough uh, this message should be somewhat longer only if it uh, exceeds it will come down okay i think this is good uh, remaining all let's close this out add product is also okay show bits is also okay now uh, from the seller side seeing the bits is okay so if the seller want to show the product bits on the product information also they can do so that we will implement in the next lecture thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the displaying the bits on the product information side so this is optional if the seller want to do he can do else he can ignore so for that what we are going to do means in the product form we are going to have one switch condition okay or else uh, normal uh, something like a checkbox only show uh, bits in the product information page okay so let me go to the ui of product form 
ओके प्रोडक्ट फॉर्म this is model right so in the first tab itself you have this form item check box form item okay so just copy this and put it here okay and the label should be show bids on product page show bids on product page okay name also same show bids on product page okay value prop name will be checked so on change we just need to hard code the value because we know uh value should be uh there is nothing to do with the value here you can ignore okay show bids on product page should be e dot target dot checked and here also get field value e dot target dot checked that means show bits on product page done okay so initially it will be false why it is coming here mm let me inspect okay got it it has to be in the grid calls okay mm i'm going to write row row you can also use tailwind classes if you want paste it close the call so it will be in the first phase now still it is not okay actually mm how i can do this let me let me let me get rid of the calls okay just give one normal form item we will inspect and see how we can do that so it's coming here so i want this to be here okay let's see let's play around with it input <laughs> text align start not working okay let me write display flex justify justify content start still not working width max content this is also not working i think we need to give max content Hundred percent. Yes. Okay. So if I give width max content hundred percent, it is working. And then again, I have to increase the height and width. Height forty pixel. Width forty pixel. Oh. width i'm going to keep it as 50 px yeah the only thing is you just need to adjust the width that's all remaining everything should work okay let's refresh the page uh edit so it's coming here right uh just right style width i am just writing it 50 uh maybe in the index.css we have given important width 100% yeah remove this important just give width yeah like this yes now it is fine okay just apply some margin ml kind of thing 
go to the product form uh, anyhow you have written style attribute right margin left okay margin left also I am going to write some 20 yeah now it's fine guys so show bits on product page you have this so based on this we are going to get and this value needs to be present in the mongodb model also product model okay just write after box available show bits on product what is it exactly show bits on product page product page boolean default false done now let's see I'm going to refresh show bits oh not here edit product select show bits save done now let's open again yes even if I go to the mongodb products I should get that show bits on product page true okay so now i'll go to the product information page close all product info product info so new bid and what i'm going to do means let me go to the uh, yeah so switching is working new bid uh, what else we can say show existing bits or else you can directly uh, have a button like new bid on the page okay mm, what what how can we design the ui you can also loop through the bits and you can display here that's also one option because in the admin side we are in the seller side we are displaying it in the table format so here if you want to show it in the normal grids you can create so let's do it in the normal way okay both will have different ui that's also practice for us product info okay so after this i'm going to write product dot bits dot map bid okay iteration let's close this i'm going to return a div i'm going to return a div yeah so then uh, justify between mt2 span name bit dot buyer dot name okay buyer dot name close the div okay so this should be actually uh, border border gray 400 border solid p3 and uh, rounded okay let's see the output yes you can see you got this and you can also have uh, mb5 yeah and uh, make sure you have all text gray text gray uh, 600 yeah so name is okay p3 is also not required just give p2 and these also not required yeah so name satya and then bid amount bid amount bid dot bid amount bid amount 
let me put the dollar symbol and then we have placed on bit placed on bid placed on this should be moment okay moment of created it mmdd yyy format okay so march 8 2013 whatever let's remove this dollar symbol here and what else we have description okay so description uh, need not to be displayed here because only the seller can see the description these things are normal okay uh, anyone can see i think instead of text gray 600 let's make this 700 and also padding 3 and this border gray 300 yeah this looks good this is the first bit uh i think we are good uh, are we missing anything mm, place bid is of course disabled yeah we missed the condition okay so this has to be displayed only if product dot product dot show bids on show bids on sorry show bids on product page if this is true then only show the bids okay let's see yeah right now it is true now i'm going to make it false let me go to the ui uh here i am going to make this false and save it done i'll go to the home page there is nothing here okay so the seller can decide other users can see the product bits or not so if he don't want to do he can uh, toggle that off let me toggle on so we are giving the flexibility to the seller itself because that will be the attracting factor for the uh, seller suppose uh, satya has placed the bid for uh, uh, i mean thousand dollars so if some other user comes he will know okay the seller is not interested for this amount so he has to quote more than this amount okay so that's a uh, seller uh, way of uh, putting the attention to product okay so my <laughs> words may not uh, correct but this is the intention to have the bids concept here so i hope you got the concept okay done so thank you see you in the next section welcome back guys in this section we are going to work on the filters component in the home page of our products so if you want to perform filter options you so basically you should have more than uh, at least three four products so just before this lecture i have added uh, five products so that means previously we have one so now i have added five pro four products so let me show you this yeah so here you can see these are the different category products i have added the first one will be the refrigerator double door fridge this is home category and this is electronics this is sports this is uh, this is also sports and this is also electronics so we have a uh, three electronics category two sports ca sorry two electronics category two sports category one home category so we can easily work on the filters now and uh, uh, let me show you this uh, apple product yeah here you can see i have added three images for the laptop and coming to the refrigerator i have only one image so then we have cricket bats this is also only one image iron man toy yeah this is also one image and of course you know this apple 12 product so here these images are not looking as expected so if we do the object cover it will go to the above that means it will overlap with the border so let me have the normal image okay so go to the uh, home page index 
okay remove this object cover and have padding 5 okay think it's still compiling let's see once it is done yes it's done yeah now it's okay and uh, if we do this you just need to have some border radius okay uh, first of all I make this rounded MD and also height should be increased I'm going to write 50 I don't know whether we have 50 or not let's make it 52 yes we have 52 yeah this is fine and uh, what else we have image is okay and this gap also we need to adjust these are not looking good okay first let me have border gray 400 for the card gap one we have uh, let's get rid of that yes this is fine yeah I think we are good okay and uh, I'll increase the gap between these products so here gap 2 is there I'm going to make gap 5 okay now these are looking cool and let's have border 300 only 400 is not looking as expected yes this is fine guys okay these are the products so if I click on any product it is going to come and border radius is not working as expected for the image let me have object cover also mm, still the same okay let's keep it as it is why this extra space I am not understanding let me write this is image P5 is ok PB is not required oh not this yeah here gap 2 let's remove and keep it gap to gap 5 and remove gap 2 ok yes now it is somewhat good and uh, we have this as uh, PX2 I believe so let's make it PX5 or else even for the image also just make it p2 so it will look uh, uh, that means identical yeah this is good so okay now forget about the styling let's do the actual work so first we need some filter component here okay as like the deployed so here as like this we need the filter and here we should have a uh, into button when you click on that it has to expand that means it has to take the full width else it has to take the filter component and then show the images that means products okay this is the thing so now I'll go to the mm, home page in the home I'm going to add filters.js rfce filters before this I will show you one bug right now in the get data we are calling filters so status is equal to approved okay I'm just calling the filters if I go to the products all these product status are not at approved actually you can see here this is status approved this is pending except iPhone 12 remaining all are pending but still I am getting the data so this is a bug okay I just added the products from Messi account and uh, Satya account but I did not approve it from the Arjun account okay so this is definitely a bug we need to fix it first let's see network why it is coming okay so let's refresh yeah 
so where is get products yes payload i'm sending status is equal to approved but i am getting five products i don't know why let me cross check so let me go to the get products sorry products route products route get products okay so right now we are taking only seller we are not taking the status okay let's take the status also now let's make if status filters dot status is equal to status done okay now if i refresh the page i should get only one product mm, my there is some internet issue let me refresh yeah so here you can see now i got only one product and this is the expected thing now let me log out and log in with uh, arjun 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 done so i'll go to the admin i'll approve all the products yeah so here you can see uh if you observe there are home category electronics sports electronics and messi is the owner of two products sorry three products and satya is the owner of two products so we can have enough filters to work on okay so let me go to the home page yeah whatever the account filters are common even it is the admin account okay so here first i am going to have the filter component for this i am going to receive the prop show filters set show filters filters set filters okay now i'll go to the um, home page let's create the use state const show filters set show filters initially false sorry initially true okay done now come here this is grid grid calls file so in this div we are going to show the products and above this i am going to have the filters okay above this i am going to have filters and this has to be either flex or grid first we will try with the flex gap file let's see what happens you can see the size is increased Uh, so the size is decreased here we got the filters but i want to do one change so if the filters component is open that means if the filter component is visible i want to show only four products else i want to show five products so i am going to write it in the condition first this filter component has to be visible only if show filters is true okay show filters is true now let's come to the grid part okay so this grid classes has to be conditional let's put the cursor here sorry yeah so obviously grid and then if show filters is equal to true it should be grid calls 4 else grid calls 5 and gap property should be always common so i am going to write outside of the condition done now we should see only four products yes okay now we can see only four products because the width is going to increase now i will write the width as sorry this i'll go to the flex uh, filters i'm going to write class name uh w 96 okay w96 is too high let's make this as uh w hmm, what 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 84 i don't know whether we have this 80 yeah we have 80 okay this is fine so here we can have the filters of course we can decrease much down 72 yes this is fine 
so this is also looking good here also we can have the filters everything is okay so here first i want to have one cross button okay h1 filters this should be in the dot flex justify between justify between this should not be zero this should be hyphen the first one should be filters and the second one should be close button so let me go to the remix icons remix icon okay come here and write close okay i'll choose this copy and paste make this class name let's see the output okay so you got this close button now i'm going to decrease the size of these two things text excel yeah i think somewhat better and this color should be class name text orange 900 as like our headings yeah filters i think text excel is not working let me put it here yeah now this is fine so when i click on this this filter should be hidden okay i'm going to write not of show filters and this should be cursor pointer it should be cursor pointer now i'm clicking on this uh, nothing oh we did not pass it the props go to the home so for the filters you just have to pass the props show filters set show filters filters set filters awesome now it should work and clicking on this i got the five products refresh i'm clicking on this it's uh, closing okay so closing is done so when it closed how to open then again we have a confusion so in that scenario we are going to use this filter icon okay so here you have this right this icon you are going to use so for that first i am going to write go to the home page yeah of course we have here so in the second part first i am going to write one div and in the div i am going to put this okay yeah so here at the top first i am going to write dot flex dot gap 2 or gap 5 first one will be filters icon okay first one will be filters so we can choose these these anything let me choose uh, this one i'll choose okay put it here class name and then we need one input field input to search okay class name is equal to sorry placeholder is equal to search products here and then we need the class name uh, border border gray 300 rounded border solid w full p2 all these are okay and here we need some height compare bigger than other inputs so height i am going to write h14 h14 is nothing but 56 pixel let's see how it looks yes it's looking good okay so we just need some alignment that's all for this flex i am going to write item center anyhow gap 5 is there yeah so you have these filters here now for the bottom grid I'm going to apply some padding or else make this flex call class name flex flex call gap 5 okay done 
now the ui is perfect search products here so this is clickable i can increase the size of that icon text excel okay and these icon should be visible only if not filters sorry okay if not show filters it's true then only visible and on clicking on this let's show the filters okay done and this is also must be cursor pointer now let's play with this okay i'm just clicking on this filters expanded closing expanded so everything seems to be working as expected so in the next lecture we are going to design the filters uh, components ui so category and age filters okay thank you welcome back guys in this section we are going to work on the filters ui for categories and ages okay so first let me go to the uh filters component yes okay so here i'm going to write const sorry categories is equal to categories is equal to so i'll just write name electronics okay value electronics similarly uh, then we have uh, home home then we have sports of course we have fashion also fashion and then we have sports 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 and then i'm going to write books show the books perfect after the categories i want ages const ages brand we are not taking in the product okay if you want you can take name 0 to 2 uh 0 to 2 years okay 0 to 2 years old uh 3 to 5 years old and then 6 to 8 years old 9 to 12 years and then i'm going to write 12 to 20 13 plus 12 to 20 i'm just writing 12 to 20 okay done perfect so we got the categories we got the ages now we need to loop through that and we need to have a checkbox as well as the label so here this should be flex flex call okay yeah again i'm going to write dot flex dot flex call dot gap 1 i think gap 1 is also not required yeah so first categories okay let's see so you have the categories so let me have uh mt5 and this should not be text sm this should be normal yeah so you have categories then i am going to display all categories with the check boxes so here itself i am going to write flex call categories dot map return div class item center input type is equal to check box name is equal to category value is equal to it's not value it's checked checked is equal to filters dot category dot includes category dot value yes on change first we need to check if it is checked set filters category else you need to filter it out keep the existing filters as it is and category should be 
item should not equal to category dot value okay if it is already exist you need to pull it off if it is not exist you have to push it into the category array label and close the div okay uh, what is missing okay close the div and close this close the remaining loop also done so you got the first div return content is okay category is okay we need to close one more div done guys okay the only thing we are doing is we are looping through this categories array and then if it is checked we are going to write set filters category is equal to uh, existing filters dot category and then normal value this value else we are going to filter it out okay so why it is uh, gone i don't know why let me cross check includes filters dot category dot includes so here go to the home page index where is filters object not here this one <coughs> yeah so initially category should be empty array ages should be mtra which is nothing but age we will use the same property you can also use categories and ages that's up to you okay yes so i got all these things so i just need to align this now okay so let me use entity input instead of this so it will give the norm same checkbox nothing there okay first of all remove the item center even if i remove the item center it is going center uh, what's wrong with this oh remove the w full still same uh, remove everything for input field first of all still same let me write one style width is equal to 30 px what the hell is happening i'm not understanding let me cross check yeah input is the main culprit it is taking width as 100 percent yeah if i remove this it works fine uh, from where it is coming okay i understand width only 30 hmm okay i'll do one thing i'll go to the index.css i'll just write dot min width min width sorry max width okay max width width is equal to max width is equal to max content important okay so here it should be important go to the filters and write the class name class name max width now let's see at least this should work yes it worked okay yeah so checking and unchecking is also working fine as expected now after the categories we need the ages okay so it's almost similar to them so i think github copilot will help me to achieve this 
so we have ages div flex call ages dot map return item center again i don't need this item center this is culprit yeah okay so i want input type checkbox name age max width filters filter dot age dot includes age dot value if it is checked i am going to push it else i am going to filter it out okay so if you uh, if you think the sar is going fast let me ask now itself this is normal javascript operation only not any complex thing okay done label age dot name close the div and uh, close everything done and one more div we have to close i think not here yeah yes perfectly fine now let's see we should have ages yes so let me keep it item center yes awesome so here you can see everything is working fine now we need to change whether the filter object is working as expected or not okay so here i am going to write one use effect whenever the filter changes just call the get data first of all i don't call the get data i want to see the filters whether it is uh, working properly or not okay so let me go to the inspect console clear this and i'm checking electronics home and sports let's see info what is printing yeah okay so is the empty category electronics home sports perfectly fine select the age age is also perfectly fine that's all so we got the filter ui ready in the front end so now we are left with only the back end so that we have to do so if you observe some of the input fields might got affected here you can see this field got affected my god uh, let me go to other fields these are okay let me go to the product form those things should not affect so i'll log in with messy 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 Let's see product form yeah here everything is okay thank god only here this got affected i don't know why let me go to the home page yeah this is home itself okay i have oh these classes are gone somehow yeah so class name border border gray 300 rounded rounded box border solid px to py1 all good yeah now this is perfect we just need to increase some height so i did i'm not explaining the classes because i hope you already know all these things yes this is perfect so border is nothing but we need the border this is the border color this should be rounded border radius border type is solid uh, px2 that means from padding left and right we have 8 uh, pixels py1 and h14 this is what we want okay so in the next lecture we will implement the back end for these filters thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the back end for the filters so we will get list of selected categories and list of the selected ages in the back end that means from the front end we will get it to the back end so compared to ages filtering electronics is simple because we'll get the straightforward values but ages we have to split down we have to take less than greater than all this stuff so first we'll filter through electronics that means sorry uh, through categories then we'll work on the ages okay so let's go to the back end so this is somewhat complex lecture only products route okay so this is the get products 
now i'm going to write if this is not categories this is category okay category and this is ages okay that's what we are getting from the front end okay i'll write the comment filter by category and uh, category is an array of course they, we have decided above so if category dot length greater than zero okay so we need to get all the selected category products okay so uh, the mongodb query will be filters dot category in so you have to use in query because it is an array right so category is an array okay in category that's all now let's see so let me go to the fill uh, index and here instead of these things i'm going to write get data directly whenever it changes okay i hope should should work fine let's see you can get rid of this anyhow because we have the filters refresh yeah so now i want to see only the electronics category products so if i choose electronics here i have to get data iphone 12 apple m2 and double door fridge sorry this is home product uh, yeah we need to get only two okay let me click on the electronics yes here you can see the data got filtered and i got only two if i select home i have to get three because two are electronics our fridge will be home category i am selecting the fridge yes here you can see i got this if i select fashion no change because there is no fashion category if i select sports i should get all here you can see all let me remove this remove this remove this too so i'll get all products done so like this way you can filter through the electronics now the challenge is ages okay so first let's go to the products route filter by age so here in the age we are not going to get the numbers directly you are going to get the values from and to so that means zero years old to two years old three years old to five years old like that okay i'm going to write if ages dot length is greater than zero i'm just writing it here so not like this so if i pass directly the value one to all these things i can do this but this is not expected so i want uh, age dot for each age dot for each uh item item i'm going to write i'm going to write const from date is equal to split of first item okay sorry from age is equal to from age is equal to item dot split of zero because you are going to get the hyphen so zeroth will be one uh, so, uh, sorry zeroth will be from age and one will be two age okay that means uh, 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 one index as i said okay two age will be one now you just need to write filters age is equal to greater than from age less than two age that's all guys remaining everything will be done okay let's see So if I pick 13 years old, I have to get empty array. Then no products in the 13. Okay. But if I pick 0 to 2, I have to get some products. Yes. All these are almost either 0 years old, 1 years old, 2 years old. If I pick 3, I should get only 1, I think. Yes. This product is 3 years old. And how we can know that? Okay. So here we are not displaying any age. So let me go and display the age in the product description 
okay uh let me go to the product info index.js okay so product description you have all these things right warranty available after this i am going to write purchased year okay purchased year purchased year i am going to write so moment of moment of dot uh, subtract okay subtract product dot age so it is going to subtract the age from the current year dot format of yyy okay now let's see so purchased year is 2023 why it is getting like that mm. moment dot oh we need to mention what it is okay year yeah yes so this product is 3 years old that is the reason 2020 so i will write the comments also here in the brackets i am going to write 2020 3 years ago yeah 2020 3 years ago done let me go to other products if i click on this i can see 2 years ago so if i put 0 to 2 i have to get that done if i put 3 to 5 i should get only one because this is 3 years old okay if i want to search 6 to 8 no products are available no no okay done all good so if you observe there is one bug if i click on this if there is no product the uh, input field is getting shrinked so for that input fields of course you need to write w full okay go to the home page go to the home index scroll down this should be obviously w full okay compiling why it is not working flex okay oh this complete flex is uh, going like this ha huh. okay what i am going to do means w full parent right yeah now this is fine okay filters is okay this is also okay and this should be item center flex where is it yeah flex gap item center done guys okay like this way it will work so you can put one hr if you want after the filters go to the filters so like this way you can apply any filters okay if you want to include brand you can show the brands here and uh, as like the electronics you can search the queries okay and we can also do the co uh, combination filters so right now if i put 0 to 2 i got 4 if i put electronics i am going to get only 2 okay if i put home i am going to get nothing because our home in the home category we have only one product but that is 3 to 5 years old here you can see like this so every filter will work as expected yeah so i am giving an assignment uh, you can uh, do that after the course or by uh, in between the course also so as like category and age filters you have to apply the search filter here so put a search button for the filter if you enter anything 
and uh, if you click on the search button here it has to search okay this is giving as an assignment so let me know if you have any doubts okay thank you welcome back guys in this section we are going to work on the notifications functionality so in the deployed version we don't have that functionality actually so in this current version only i'm giving you this module so even i don't have any uh, demo or prototype to show here you can see we don't have any notifications icon so i'm going to build it entirely from scratch in this uh, project only okay so actually the use case of this notification is so here right now uh, messi is the logged in user so if i open this uh, aaron man toy so this is uploaded by satya so if messi want to place a bid on this so he can uh, enter the bid amount message and mobile but satya will know only this bid has placed if we open the products page okay so if he logs in and if you go to the products and if you click on the bids then only he will know there is some new bit to the to this product so until unless he go to the products and if he pick the product and bids so he will not know so that is the reason we will implement the notification functionality so if here if you click on the new bid if you click on the okay so once this notification got saved we are going to send sorry once this record got saved we are going to send a notification to the seller like someone has placed a bid on your product okay this is the content so here we are going to get the uh, notification icon with the read and unread count okay so all these things we are going to implement <coughs> so this is completely additional module only because in our project i have not expected this uh, but uh, so i want to include that's all okay so to learn more features so let me go to the sorry not file manager <coughs> uh close all the things so let's go to backend server models create a new model called as notifications model dot js okay const mongoose is equal to require mongoose then const notification schema is equal to new mongoose schema first one will be the notification title okay second one will be uh, like uh, body or message or whatever let me keep it message message type string require true uh, date we don't, we don't require because we'll be having the created it yeah type message that's all apart from that on click we need on click okay sorry yeah on click only type string required true that means after clicking on the notification where it has to navigate so if it is a normal bid related notification it has to navigate to the products so if the notification is like uh, if the uh, product is approved from the admin side once you place so then also we can trigger the notification so we can use this notification module for lot many scenarios first we'll build the modules then we can write the use cases okay so on click timestamps true done module dot exports is equal to mongoose dot model notifications notification schema perfect i think we are good now let's go to the routes and also the main thing is user okay to whom this notification has to send users done okay perfect so now uh, let me go to the server and create the routes notifications route dot js so first i'm going to implement the router express router const uh, auth middleware 
is equal to require auth middleware and then const notification is equal to require notifications model notifications model yes that's all okay so now the first route will be add a notification okay so router dot post obviously auth middleware so we can put an endpoint like notify user notify user notify user or else notify just notify okay so it's very simple ui sorry very simple functionality try cache block and then in the cache block i'm going to write response dot send response dot send uh, success false message error message in the cache block i'm going to write const uh, new notification new notification is equal to new of notification of request dot body so everything will get it from the front end only request body so await new notification dot save done okay now let me send the response success true message notification added successfully done perfect and then we need get all notifications for a user or by user id get all notifications by user id of course this is the only endpoint because we won't display all the users notifications at any cost so notifications endpoint will be get all notifications okay okay done so very simple yes i got the snippet so const notifications is equal to notification dot find user we will get it from the front end or else anyhow we will be having in the request dot body dot user id because in the auth middleware we will get the data right once we decrypt the token so request dot body dot user id sort of created at minus one so in the data you are going to send that notifications in the cache block everything is cool okay done i think we are good notify is okay get all notifications is okay now let's export this module dot exports is equal to router okay so then i'm going let me write the delete notification also delete notification try uh await await notification dot await notification dot find by id and delete find by id and delete request dot body dot notification id or else let me get it here itself okay request dot params dot params dot id so delete notification id okay so success true notification deleted successfully catch response dot send success false done okay awesome now you have notify get all notifications delete notification but usually think uh, think in a uh, real time scenario so here we are going to get the notification and we will get the notification count that means unread notifications count which you have not even seen okay so for that go to the notification model and you need to have a property called as the scene okay scene is equal to type boolean default false okay 
instead of seen uh, just make it red r e a d r e a d okay uh, done now whenever you click on the notification you will go to the notification screen so if you go to that screen that means you are reading all the notifications okay then i am going to write one more endpoint read all notifications read all notifications okay by user so read all notifications so try cache block try cache block okay so in the cache block what you are going to get obviously success false now here we are going to update all the notifications which are read is equal to false we are going to make that read is equal to true okay so now i am going to get await notification dot update mini the condition will be user user id set is equal to read true so we are going to make all the notifications true okay and also i am going to put the condition here read is equal to false so i am going to pick all the notifications which are matching with the user id and which are matching the read is equal to false and i am going to make them all read is equal to true so all the notification notifications with status will be changed to read okay like this yeah i think we are done with the apis and as well as the model so let me go to the routes server const uh notifications route is equal to require notifications route okay app dot use slash api slash notifications done something has crashed obviously auth middleware so let me copy it from here it's not always it's throwing the error while importing done this time we should not get any errors perfect so our notifications backend is done so in the next lecture we will start the front end for it okay thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the notifications in the front end okay so first of all i am going to add one uh, badge in the what i can say header so here i am going to add one badge so let me write protected route <sighs> sorry protected page mm. so this is span i this is the logout yeah so here i am going to keep the notification icon so let me get the notification or else go to the entity batch yeah so you are going to get a badge like this okay this is the notifications count so just copy this that means copy the code of that badge count okay so i'll paste it here okay badge done avatar done let's see the output how it's looking it's looking somewhat awkward i think we don't need the user icon okay let's get rid of that because it's looking clumsy if we have that many icons yeah so now you have this value phi so in between the in the badge so that means in between this uh, avatar i'm going to write the icon okay so let me get the icon in the remix icons remix icon go there and search for notifications notifications so i'll choose uh 
this one okay copy and i'll paste it here icon is equal to yes done yeah so we don't need shape actually okay let's get rid of the shape and also size is equal to medium and this shape also i'm going to make it circle yes now this is fine okay this looking very clean notification and even if you want to have the background color or anything else you can add it so here i'm going to make text red 500 yeah so this is the notification i think it's not looking good keep it as it is the old one yes so i have five notifications so five is nothing but the actual notifications count okay so how we'll get to know very simple first of all go to the uh, api calls create a route for notifications i mean api call file notifications.js so get the axios instance get the axios instance and first thing will be add new notification add a notification export const add notification so just axios instance dot post slash api slash notifications slash notify this is the route so we will send the payload with the post request then get all notifications by user okay get all notifications so we need not to send the user id also because obviously in the auth middleware we'll get the user id from the jwt okay try catch try catch let's close this out first yeah so in the cache block return response dot data return response dot data then here response is equal to slash api slash notification slash get all notifications and return response dot data done i think these are the two let's uh, write the other one also delete notification we'll send the notification id that's all and then read all notifications by user read all notifications done okay so these are the apis so read all notifications would be a, will, will be a put method let me cross check notifications route yes put method I think we got the APIs, we got the API routes as well. Okay. Now let's go to the protected page. Mm. Okay. So what I'm going to write means I'm going to uh, have a file called as sorry i have a use state hook called as const notifications set notifications okay so uh, in the components itself i am going to create notifications.js rfce rfce notifications and this should be a model pop up uh, notifications initially empty set notifications obviously I think this is not required actually get data is required yeah get data is required get data and uh, uh, sorry reload notifications okay reload notifications whenever we click on delete okay and then what else we have uh, yeah I think that's all 
and this should oh show notifications set show notifications because it has to close and appear show notifications set show notifications and this has to be a model pop-up model so initially I'll just try to open the model that's all title notifications uh, open is equal to this has to be imported from the entity yeah open is equal to show notifications on cancel set show notifications footer null centered okay centered now go to the protected page so initially notifications will be null and then show notifications set show notifications so when we click on the badge so if you click on this badge you have to make set show notifications sorry on click on click i think we don't have on click let me cross check set show notifications true and this count should be notifications dot length sorry yeah notifications dot filter we have to uh, show only unread messages count so i'm just filtering it not of read which is nothing but unread put one question mark here okay yeah now we need to have the model pop-up open logic notifications okay yeah so notifications set notifications reload notifications show notifications done let's see how it works use state is not defined where i have used the use state the protected route it seems yeah done yes so there is no count here because count is zero i'm clicking on the badge i'm getting the notifications model exactly working as expected okay and also i'm going to make the badge class name cursor pointer class name cursor pointer perfect okay everything is working as expected so now go to the notifications model and write width uh, thousand with thousand and then i'm going to import here tabs import tabs from entity okay import sorry tabs from entity because we need to have both read and unread notifications uh, no i think it's not required actually so you once the uh, the model pop-up is open anyhow you are going to read all so obviously not required so you just need to loop through the notifications based on the sorted order okay so i'm just writing it here class flex uh, flex call to notifications dot map div with the class name flex gap to item center and then profile pick is not required anyhow let's close this div done so initially i'm going to have some border 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 solid border solid yeah of course uh, p2 okay this should be also flex call itself flex call so first i am going to show the title okay so h1 dot notification dot title notification dot title then one divider one divider then notification dot message in the span notification dot message in the span that's all guys so of course we don't have any notifications right now to display the ui but we'll do okay so these are the notifications let me close this out now uh, we have the ui ready we have the integrations you just need to trigger the notification that's all 
so in the next lecture we are going to work on triggering the notifications thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the trigger notifications okay so the scenario we are going to do here is i'm going to open this fridge so here uh, i think this is uploaded by me only so i am not getting let me open uh, iron man toy yeah so this is uploaded by satya okay so from messi want to place a bid for this product so right now this is 100 so i want to place a bid for 80 dollars so obviously bid document will be saved after that after the bid document uh, saving part you have to send a notification to satya like a new bid has been placed this is the title description will be uh, logged in user messi has placed a bid for your product followed by the product name for an amount of 90 dollars or else 80 dollars this is the content okay so i'll show you go to the uh, first uh, where is the bid model yeah bid model not here man bid model this one yeah so place new bid once we get the success response so we'll send bid place it successfully okay only after bid place it successfully you have to send that okay now i am going to write send a notification to seller which is nothing but satya so i am just writing await add new add notification okay this is the api so the payload will be first one title a new new bid has been placed new bid okay new bid has been sorry new bid has been placed okay let me write a a new bid i am little bit poor in grammar so forgive me <laughs> a new bid has been placed message message okay message should be proper yeah so a new bid has been placed on your product by user dot name for amount okay so for uh, whatever amount is so this is the uh, message okay so title yeah now we need on click user so to whom this notification has to be sent product dot seller dot underscore id perfect then we need on click so on clicking on this notification what action has to be performed okay so it has to navigate to profile that's all it has to navigate to the profile obviously in the first tab products will be there okay it has to navigate me to the profile that's all i think we are good so title message user on click and read is equal to false anyhow by default notification model so read is equal to false so why taking risk Sell, send it from here also read is equal to false done let's refresh the page okay hope for the best and open the network so if you get any errors we are going to remove that bid and we will reperform okay new bid so i'll in, i'm interested in buying for 75 dollars message and just writing i'm interested mobile number 987 something like this yeah so i just opened the network anyhow the bid api call will work we need to check the notification api call that's all bid added successfully i think place new bid notify notification added successfully i think everything seems to be worked as expected now let's time it's the time to play 
so I am going to open Microsoft Edge I don't like it but uh, we don't have any other choice localhost 3000 so I am going to log in with what is this let me delete invalid signature application is there any data yeah refresh done so I am going to log in with the seller account who is the seller of this product so the seller is Satya so Satya has to get a notification okay now Satya Prakash 195 at gmail.com password 1234567 login mm, no nothing looking so there is no notification here something is strange if I go to the notifications model let's see what happens yes we have we got the notification id user user also there uh, why it is not working oh ho oh, oh. ho we did not perform the get action in the protected page yes okay so in the use effect you need to call get notifications okay here in the validate token get notification yes now cons get notifications try set loader true response get notification set loader false if response dot success set notifications response dot data throw new error message catch block set loader false message error close it out and this should be get all notifications I think this time we should get the count in the Microsoft Edge in the Chrome we should not get anything because there is no notification for Messi only Satya has to receive the notification awesome here you can see I got the notification even if I refresh I'll get that okay now if I open I got the notification here also so let me style this now yes first thing is divider has to be imported from our component not from the mongo uh, entity okay divider should be thing why divider let's get rid of the divider just directly show the span done and why this is text center it's need not to be text center okay remove this item center and border is there but it's looking very dark border gray 300 rounded awesome now it's fine okay even the font uh, colors also we need to make the light class name text gray uh, 700 and this is class name text gray 500 we don't need cursor pointer yeah yes we also don't need gap to yes perfect so this is the title and this is the uh, what I can say product uh, message so a new bid has been placed on your product undefined why this is undefined hmm. let me go to the bid model values dot bid amount where is values hmm it has to be there actually even in the network call also it was there 
something is strange hmm. undefined undefined okay let's go to the product and see whether we are getting that or not uh, satya i'll go to my profile product iron man yeah here we are getting bid amount then why we are not getting there oh we are getting product but we are not getting the product name no oh, sorry sorry this is product dot name not title okay yeah sorry guys now let me delete that uh, notification and do it one more time refresh here the count should be become zero and then refresh here i'm going to place one more bid for the same product with the uh, amount 70 consider now consider now at least okay so 528528520 done bit placed successfully let me refresh here i got the product yes so for your product iron man toy iron man toy by messi for 70 done even you can put the price like this also okay yeah i think we are good so next time you will get the price also even if i go to the products so here we need to uh, add one more functionality click so when i click on this i should navigate to the profile okay so where is it notifications yeah i'm going to write key notification dot underscore id on click we need to have on click first we need to have navigate to perform the on click const navigate is equal to use navigate and then on click is equal to navigate of notification dot on click and no need of reload yeah done so i'm just clicking on this so to click we need cursor pointer okay cursor pointer so and this has to be closed on click okay set show notification model false close this out go here yes we got into the products page now we can successfully able to see and trigger the notification so in the next lecture we will work on the delete and read notifications thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the delete and read notifications okay first i will work on the read so go to the protected i am going to write uh, get notifications so i'll just write mm, whenever i click on this uh, on click first show the model okay first show the model then call a function to read notifications okay const read notifications okay read notifications so obviously it has to call try cache block dispatch set loader true uh, await read notifications again dispatch set loader true response dot success 
reload notifications or else call get notifications again get notifications again and then else throw new error message catch block set loader false message error done okay so this read notification has to be imported read all notifications and when you click on the model first call that read notifications then set show notifications true perfect now i am going to click on this uh something is strange refresh so it got read but i didn't get the response that's the issue so let me go to the um, notifications yes read is equal to true so what i will do is to replicate the scenario i am going to make this false again okay i am going to make this false so again i got the icon now what i will do i am going to check the notifications route are we sending the response after read all notifications no we did not so that is the reason the notification is completely triggering yes okay done now let's read it yes and also let me close this out and make the false again i'll try show you one trick false so once you click on this uh, you, we will call the uh, read notifications function right so you need not to show the loader because we are not dependent on that it is a asynchronous action so you can see your notifications in the model pop up and in the background it will be cleared okay so we don't need loader for this and it is not a show stopper for anything even if the operation fails it won't affect okay control s done now i am going to click on this let me refresh so i should not get any loader now uh oh the get notifications will get yeah anyhow that's okay for reading we don't need okay even if you want to remove the get notifications loader also you can remove okay set loader false again let's go and make that false false refresh now let's click on this yeah so i got the notification it got cleared in the background awesome even if i refresh i don't get it yeah so now i'll keep the icon here you have to do the delete operation so this is the second task okay so let me go to the so i have given another task implement the search functionality here okay the second task is implement the delete notification functionality so let me go to the notification uh i am going to put this in a dot flex sorry dot dot flex dot justify between mm, between and then put these things in a separate div at the left side sorry at the right side i am going to have delete button okay uh delete icon we will have in lot many pages go to admin sorry not admin go to profile 
index sorry products index go to columns yeah this is the delete icon just copy this and put it here and i'm i'm not writing any action here i'll just keep the delete button that's all okay and i'll make this item center and here you need to have one more when this notification was uh, received okay so i'm going to write span okay so i'll just write moment moment dot notification dot created it from now okay so it will give the result obviously import moment from moment and these also needs to be text gray 500 or 400 i'm going to keep it 400 yeah now let's see why it is coming here 10 minutes ago it has to come down right oh this is pan i think that's the reason give h1 yeah 10 minutes ago decrease the okay let's keep this 500 and above one 600 and keep this text sm yeah yes okay so 10 minutes ago done so you got the delete button so when you click on this it has to navigate so if i click on this it will navigate me to the profile you have to solve that because we have applied the on click for entire div so if, of course i'll give so let me write it now itself so remove the on click here and put it for this div okay so the delete button won't be affected where is it delete delete button yeah yes it's not getting affected i can click so if you are not able to do so i am going to write it okay const delete notification async id try delete notification id if response dot success message reload notification else throw new error close it out message error done okay so here we need the show loader and hide loader definitely because it is performing the delete operation okay so dispatch show loader that means set loader true dispatch set loader false in the catch block also dispatch set loader false and create const dispatch is equal to use dispatch dispatch is equal to use dispatch and import the use dispatch done okay now on clicking on the button just call the delete notification with id set loader is not imported let's import that and also entity message is also might not be imported import that too done guys okay so if it is success you are going to reload the notification that's all so once you reload notifications what will happen uh, it is going to call the set notifications no this is not what we want so it has to call the get notifications reload notifications means get notifications okay yeah so let me try to delete it done okay notification deleted so i am going to chrome i'll yeah here we got a bug so this this has to be a space go to the product info bits so we are looping but we are not getting gap so i'll just apply mt5 yes 
now I have the gap between two let me place one more bid uh, this time I am going to ask for 50% at least give now <laughs> okay mobile number 8528852850 okay bid placed refresh got the notification it got clear same notification for uh, 50 dollars i'm going to delete it off that's all let me close it i'll go to the products show bits nothing for cricket only for iron man toy i got three bits from messi only okay so message i'm interested consider now at least give now so here a uh, bid date is not available okay let me go to the bids model not here man yeah here so date we need to have the date itself after the name only i'll have or else for that bid placed on bit placed on created it record moment of created it that's all yeah bit placed on and these bits uh, why all bits are coming 250 created yeah created it now these are perfect 228 235 249 latest bit should be at the top so go to the bits route bits route and uh, get all bits should be sorted with sort of created at minus one now let's refresh the page Uh, Iron Man toy yes so 249 235 228 okay so that's all guys this is about the notifications functionality okay we are done with almost everything so in the next section we will work on the bug fixes as well as some of the testing thank you welcome back guys in this section we are going to work on the bug fixes as well as the deployment so first we will go through each and every module of the application wherever we found any issues we will fix it then and there so we already know couple of issues like image delete and all the stuff so first we'll come from the login and registration pages so we'll check each and every module okay so both admin side seller side buyer side all the things if we found any missing things or any uh, issues we'll fix it okay no worries so let me log out first refresh Let's cross check whether both the front end and back end servers are running. Close everything in the file manager. Okay. Done. So first let me register with the new user. So here I'm going to register one new user. John. Email. John123. Password. 1234567 Done so user registration working fine now let me go to the register again and try to register with the same user okay john john123 at gmail.com password 12345678 user already exist so we cannot do but there is one bug here so if the user is already exist we should not navigate the user to login page we should remain the user in registration page itself okay let me go to the register.js so this login should be inside the response.success if condition okay because if you get any errors they will choose alternates like providing other email etc let's do it again john john123 at gmail.com password 12345678 done user already exists so duplicate user restriction is also working fine and as expected yeah so smp login 
so if you observe the text is somewhat smaller i don't know why uh, let me go to the login text to excel apply for this pan also even for the register go there and apply it here done now this is perfect smp login smp register in the login we did uh, we forgot to put the upper case or else let me write the direct login done guys now let's login with the newly created user itself john 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 login okay awesome so the login is also done now uh, we have admin seller and user okay that means the normal buyer so this is the buyer side seeing the home page going to the product description page placing the bid all these things are the buyer functionalities even this filtering the data and all this stuff so of course filters are working fine because uh, in the last couple of sections only we did this age filter is also working fine so search filter is an assignment for you okay so now if i go to any product description i can place the bid new bid so the res uh, respective buyer will get the notification messy and all this stuff okay first i'll go to the john i'm going to upload a new product okay and uh, i will open the incognito tab with the admin account to monitor all the things okay so arjun is the admin 1 2 three, four, five, six, seven, eight. done okay so right now if i go to the profile there are no pending request all are approved products only now i'll uh, i will add a new product from the john account so let's say john want to uh, sell a new product so the product i'm going to add will be uh, samsung s23 okay S twenty three Ultra. Let me go to the images. Okay, so I'll pick this image. Copy image. Sorry, download image. Save images. Ah, uh, this is web file. We cannot add it. So it should be only JPG file. Okay. save images yeah this is jpg we can upload it so let's go to the uh, general i'll just write samsung s23 ultra okay description if you want you can write something because in all our products there is no description let's have something yeah here they have some description <coughs> okay so price will be i'm going to write 1200 dollars category obviously electronics uh age i'm going to write uh one year old bill available warranty available show bits on product so accessories box i'm going to uh, not provide done so product added successfully everything is okay so here in the products table i'm going to make one change so i don't want the description in the products table okay instead of that i'm going to show the image so let me go to the products table okay let me go to the um, profile products index because description will take lot of the width it's not required get rid of the uh what i can say description now this is fine so let me show the image so image also for some products we may not have but uh, let's do okay i'll keep this title as product title product and then data index image okay render i am going to write return an image img 
img let's close the return statement okay put the comma here and now in the src i am going to write record dot images of zero okay if this is present okay if record dot images is present images dot length then record dot images of zero else empty string okay so right now we don't have images so there won't be any image here for the product and we also need to have the height and width class name so w 14 h 14 or else w 20 h 20 object cover border radius sorry rounded rounded full not full rounded uh, md now let's go and upload the image go to the images upload image let's download the newly uploaded image sorry let's upload the newly downloaded image done yes here you can see this is the product so looking awesome right yeah now uh, let's work on the uploading multiple that means uh, uploading images uh, one by one at a time okay so if i go here if i upload new image like uh, i'll delete it just for the testing i'll upload some existing images for this product so because these are the other products images just for the testing okay so if i upload these this image will be uploaded okay there is no issue in that uh, process but if i upload another image immediately after the uploading these i am going to get the error that is because we need to clear the what i can say previous once we got the result upload result okay so what i am going to do means go to the images let me go to the products images okay so set images null and then set file also null and then what else we have uh updated image sorry get data is okay and then show upload list uh on change is also okay yeah i think it it might work let me cross check so we have to upload two images at a time so first time uploading this image so this got uploaded now i am going to upload the new image so here you can see uh, it is showing two so this is the issue it has to clear the old one i don't know why it is clear let me clear let me check in the entity entity upload clear mm, what is that property upload list clear upload list okay can i clear the list of upload list entity let me cross check i have not given anything i need to clear the uploaded list control the file list mm -hmm. not this so file list prop as an empty it always return only new upload okay so file list should be empty you just need to add this property so file list should be empty so i think it should work okay so let me write file list should be only selected file or empty if file is there only selected file else empty string yes now the new one has gone okay, let me delete this okay somehow it's not working let me go to the images okay i am uploading new image now why 
why it is not showing hmm yeah sorry guys i paused the video and i gone through entity documentation so here they don't have exact solution for our uh, problem the only thing we can do is uh, we can uh, set the file empty so we will get only the file name instead of the exact preview so that is also fine at least we can upload multiple images uh, one after another so what i'm going to do means here in the files list if file is there i'm going to keep the file else i'm going to keep an empty string okay so it will work so right now i have two images i'm going to copy one more i'm going to upload one more image so i got the image name so upload done now i'm going to upload new image yeah so here you can see it didn't got replicated only we are not able to see the preview but that's fine okay so let's upload new one yes this is also working so let me go to the let me delete these two because these are not related to this product even this yeah so we fixed the issue done okay go to the mp so we don't have that product here because that product is not yet approved so let me open the incognito uh, refresh the page i'm going to approve the product yes okay so even in the admin products also i'll display the same i don't want the description okay so let me go to the products here and i'll copy this sorry i'll copy this and i'll go to the admin products and i'll paste it here and remove the description done yes now we have all the products okay so yes it's got approved uh, let me refresh so we should get the product now yes so we got the product and i think uh, we should not display the description here okay so it will be a problem if you have the huge description so go to the home page so let's get rid of the description instead show how many years old this product was okay moment of moment of uh product dot product dot age dot subtract uh sorry this should be moment only okay in this subtract we need product dot age product dot age format y y y and just write old so something like yeah this should be inside the okay old should be outside the curly braces okay years old done now let's see oh oh we don't need all these things just show the age that's all sorry for the confusion product dot age one year old okay so in even these years also i'm going to make it conditional okay if if product dot age equal to equal to one then it's a year else years okay even the grammar also we have to correct and we need some gap also again it's coming one years let me have it one yeah one year old let me write this o small and even here also put some gap 
yeah so one year old three years old so if i pick uh, three to five i'll get only three years old only one thing if i pick one to two so one year old 1.5 two one year two so everything will work as expected okay uh i think we are done with the home page and all these things so we got some extra padding here i don't know why let me refresh go to the filters okay first let's go to the category filters gap 2 okay remove this gap 1 yeah this is fine even here also remove the gap 1 perfect so now everything seems to be working as expected so electronics done even these extra space also we don't require actually let me cross check this is horizontal font size is also okay then where this space is coming no gap it seems oh input height it seems input height aha uh ha -huh, huh. understand so i am going to restrict the height okay so class name i am going to write h uh like 8 h8 okay nothing is uh, working because there we might have given the important let's see whether we could do anything or else we can ignore it it's not a much problem come to the input right height is equal to 25 px important still it is not taking yeah let's ignore this first it's a styling issue first let's uh, focus on the functionality level okay these filters are working fine anyhow so let me go to the products let me edit this let's see edit functionality is working fine i'm going to make the ages 2 save done okay two years old working fine delete obviously it will work go to the product description so i am the logged in user that is the reason i cannot place a bit for my product added on march 9th is okay image switching is also okay product details all the things are okay 2021 two years ago product description is also okay uh, i think we are good okay so from the both seller side admin side as well as the notification side so we can include one functionality here uh, that is uh, whenever the new product is added admin has to receive the notification when admin approves or reject the product seller has to receive the notification so this functionality will implement in the next lecture so this is the missed requirement we'll do it in the next lecture thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the notifications missed functionality so whenever uh, a product has been submitted for the approval admin has to get the notification but in the code level we don't know the admin id because admin can be number of users so we don't know the admin id okay so all the admins has to get the notification so then what we will do so it's very simple for the notifications we will send a prop called as the is admin okay so let me go to the Mm. Where is it? Product form. Product form. Okay. So product form. On finish, or else we can do this notification in the back end only. We need not to call from the front end. so go to the products route okay products route 
so you have the add product right so once the product is added send notifications to admin okay so first we need to get all the admins const admins is equal to await user dot find role is equal to admins okay I think we don't have the user here let me import it await user okay done now I am going to write as admins dot for each async of admin we have the notification model sorry mm. const notification is equal to const notification is equal to require model slash notification so in the for each first let me close these out so I'm going to write yeah const new notification is equal to new of notification user will be admin dot underscore id uh, message will be new product added by some username so request dot uh, user dot name link will be slash admin it should go to the admin route then we need the main thing title title will be new product so we go we are getting some error let me cost check notifications model we have yes done okay so new notification dot save user message title link and also read is equal to false perfect so whenever a new product is being uploaded admin will get the notification like new product added by some other okay so title will be new product link will be admin perfect and when admin approves the request okay there will be update product request right update product status so here also the user has to get the notification send notification to user because this product will be this process will be done by the admin itself who added the product which is nothing but the seller actually okay seller okay so await sorry first we have to build the new notification const new notification is equal to new of notification user is equal to uh, product we need the product right okay so here we are getting only uh, status and id so let me write const updated product is equal to user will be updated product dot seller okay then message your product status has been status whatever approved or blocked or whatever so title product status update product status updated link it has to now sorry not link it should be on click okay on click so just go to profile okay profile and then you have read is equal to false done guys okay that's all we have to do so whenever admin changes anything on the product side the seller will receive the notification whether it is approved or blocked or rejected whatever so this is the new notification await new notification dot save done so let me go above add product so here also this is not link it is on click okay perfect i think we are good so let me test the product status update scenario okay so if that will work admin the scenario will also work so i'll go to the google chrome incognito so anyhow samsung s23 ultra is uh, there here 
I am going to update the status action. I am going to block this product. So what is the expected scenario after blocking? That product has to be hidden from the home page. So John has to get the notification like your product has been blocked. Okay, like that. So I'm going to write block here. Done. So the product has been blocked. Now I'm going to refresh the page here. I should get the notification. John got the notification. Product is hidden. The notification is product status updated. So your product Samsung S23 Ultra has been blocked. Awesome. Everything is working as expected. So if I click on this here, on click is not, yeah, on click is also working. Perfect. So status is blocked. Now I'm going to the home page again. I'll go to the admin. I'm going to unblock this. If I refresh, got the notification. Product status has been approved or unblocked, whatever. Let me delete these two notifications. Perfect guys. Okay. So everything is working as expected. So if you want to test the admin scenario, you can test it. So that's up to you. So this is the last lecture of this course before deployment. So in the next lecture, we'll work on the deployment part. Thank you. Welcome back guys. In this lecture, we worked on the bits in the profile. So in the last lecture, we worked on the bug fixes, but we missed this thing. So here uh, we need to have the bits placed by the logged in user that may be any product. So the logged in user can upload the products and he can also place bits for the other seller products, right? So we can get rid of this general or else I will give you as an assignment because here we have to show only the user details in this general time, the logged in user details. That's all. Okay. Now let's go to the bits, bits.js. Okay. So here you have this model pop up, right? So just copy this complete bits and then go to the index. So here you have the bits, right? Okay. H1 bits. So I'm going to create a new component user bits okay user bits now index.js paste it so this should not be a model pop-up this should be a normal div close this and we don't need the product name also just show the title bits that's all and here the condition should be we should get all the bits placed by the user. Okay. So get all bits. You need to send the condition with the user. Okay. I don't know whether we have the user or not. Const user is equal to use selector state dot users. Let's do this. Condition will be user is equal to user dot underscore id we know we don't need these all props okay and get rid of this divider and uh, get rid of the import statement also we'll import now get all bits should be imported and uh, set loader is also needs to be imported okay and the title should be my bits my bits i think we don't need the title also because it is a tab okay so go to the index.js and keep the name as my bits and write which is now my bits is nothing but user bits user bits go and import that done now i should get all the bits placed by the logged in user okay selected product is undefined let me go there we don't need all this stuff call it directly 
done so here first we need the bit placed on and before that we need the product okay product 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 dot name not title its name actually name bit placed on we don't need the buyer name we want the seller okay seller record dot seller dot name yeah that's all i think we don't need this bit date also because already we have bit placed on even here also we we have to remove that we don't need two dates go to the columns here bit placed on and here here also bit date we don't need this yeah let's remove now go to the user bits i think we are good let's go and check that contact details also not required because we know what is our contact details or else if you want to provide you can go to the my bits uh i think these are giving me the wrong information i believe because i am not placed this many bits okay these are all messies messy bits and satya's bits so this is giving me the wrong information let me cross check my bits okay think it's wrong let me go to the bits route bits route yeah so you have product you have seller you also need to have the buyer if buyer sorry if user sorry if user okay done think it's not user it's buyer only yes yes buyer from the front end we have to get user that's all or else let's get the buyer only okay no confusion here also buyer and even from the front end also we'll do the same go to the get data this should be buyer now we should get empty empty table refresh yes we have empty table okay so because i have not placed any bids now i'll go to the home page so i'll place bid for this john oh something has crashed mm button disable thing product dot bits maybe let's refresh okay go to the product info index i'll put question mark here here also yeah now it is working done so now uh this product is uploaded by the logged in user only that is the reason new bit button is disabled so i cannot place bit for my own product yeah so i will place bit uh, for this refrigerator product so i am going to the current uh, price is 120 so i am going to place bit for 100 and message i am interested mobile number double name something like this okay bid added successfully now i'll go to the profile my bids uh still i am not getting anything i don't know why let me refresh open the network and see 
आर वी मिसिंग एनी थिंग यूजर इज नॉट डिफाइंड ओके ओ गो टू द प्रोडक्ट्स राउट सॉरी बिट्स राउट फिल्टर्स डॉट बायर इज इक्वल टू बायर दिस शुड बी बायर या नाउ लेट्स रिफ्रेश इट हैज टू वर्क Yes, so I placed bit on ten uh, three March ten. So seller Messi bid amount hundred. Message contact details. So I can also uh, paste the product amount, original amount, bid amount. Okay. So let me go to the user bids columns. I'll just write original amount. offered price yeah offered price which is nothing but product price i'll just write render render record dot product dot price okay yes so offered price is 120 bid amount is 100 awesome so the uh what is it well your table is looking clean okay message i am interested contact details i provided this awesome guys so in the general tab also i am going to provide some basic details so go to the profile get the user const user is equal to use selector state dot users let's import this now first in the general tab i am going to provide a uh, dot flex dot flex call h1 logged in username name is equal to user dot name okay name john so let me write in the big colors class name text primary text excel or to excel okay name john and i'll write uh w 96 or 1 by 2 w 1 by 2 and this should be flex justify between so name should be in the normal way and here i'm going to put it in the bold tab so it will be side by side uh even here also i'm going to keep the same instead of 1 by 2 let's make it 1 by 3 yeah name john let's make this span instead of h1 yeah so name is equal to john and then email is equal to email yeah this is email and then we need mobile we don't have uh, let's have created it created it okay to excel local string or we can also use the moment let's use the moment so i don't want to confuse moment of user dot created it yeah done so yes name email created it so instead of text to excel let's make it text excel only text to excel should be replaced with text excel done yeah so uh, the screen is not looking so good actually let's make uh, text primary should be replaced with 
okay let's keep this as it is or else text primary should be empty string keep it in the normal black color yeah okay enough how uh, much styling we have did mm, let me do some more i'm not yet satisfied i'll keep uh, instead of bold i'll keep another span okay i'll change b tag to okay let me copy this span put it here yeah yes this seems somewhat okay not completely but we cannot do anything much because we have only three fields so later we will do remaining things that's all guys thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the deployment part of our application so we will push our application code to the github then we will connect our github account as well as our render account so we will be deploying our application to the render io cloud service platform okay so first of all let me go to our terminal close all the open tabs okay so before pushing our code to the github we just need to add some changes in the package.json as well as in the what i can say uh, server.js here so as per our folder structure there will be some changes in every project okay based on the project folder structure only uh, the configuration code will be present for the mon stack okay deploying a front end application that means only front end application is very easy but here we are deploying our complete mon stack application entire application into a single cloud service so we have to be very careful while doing the configuration process so i am going to provide each and every code so let me go to my already deployed version i'll copy code from there bitbucket so based on the folder structure as well as the render so based on both the things i have prepared the configuration so this is my deployed version so the first thing will be in the package.json you have to add the scripts okay these are the three lines don't worry you can check it in my github if you want okay remove these two and done okay so what does it mean so basically the application starts from this file only because this is the entry point of our application so when we do first it is going to execute our npm start whenever we click on the npm start so it is going to execute the start command which is present in the scripts so first it is going to start the backend server then in the server.js so this is we are telling the compiler or whatever so this is the entry point node server slash server.js now in this server.js we have to tell the cloud service that please go and uh, npm install in the client folder okay that means uh, let me write the that code also then you will understand better in the server.js also you have to handle some logic i'll go to the server.js i'll copy this okay now let me close this out uh server server.js so i'll write the code deployment config yeah so these two are the import statements path and directory name from the path.result so this code has to be executed only if it is production not in local not in dev so process.env.nodeenv is equal to production then we need to execute these two commands these two commands are related to tell the compiler or cloud service or interpreter whatever we are we have to execute the client also not only the server we have to execute the client also so we are telling app dot use express dot static path dot join directory name here you have to give the build 
that means you you have to provide the path where should be your build so obviously our build should be present i think you don't need all these things so whenever you change the cloud service this document will change document uh, obviously so you just need to copy and paste as it is but the logic you have to remember is this code is for the deployment and especially this logic is to tell the compiler that you have to deploy the front end also okay this is the thing and in the package.json what we have added in the package.json will to tell the entry point okay so here you have this client build index.html build is nothing but this cd server npm install it is going to create a build in the client folder then it is going to get the index.html from that build which is nothing but client slash build slash index.html even for me also it is difficult to explain this uh, deployment logic so i just copy and pasted this thing so the uh, one more time i am telling this logic will work only if with the render that means render cloud service and if you follow this folder structure only so if you change anything here it won't work that means if you write this server.js in the root level it won't work so you have to follow the exact thing to make the deployment work okay so i hope you got it now if you observe this uh, git icon we are having these 33 files for staging so we have to remove all the git related information here so in the root level we don't have anything but in the client we have some git file git related files you can see dot git ignore readme and all these things so i am going to ignore that i'll just write rm dot git so just press y so all the git related information will be gone okay done now you have to push the entire root level folder not the client not the server the entire folder you have to push it to the uh, github let me start this okay now in the root level create dot git ignore okay so now let me write you have to ignore node modules as well as dot env i think that's all now just click on the what i can say github uh, git icon and click on this publish to github you need not to run any commands so it is go and uh, directly publish to the github so the title will be shmp udemy or else you can write share marketplace anything so this should be public only because you should have the access to my repository to do the deployment config as well as the code changes i am just clicking on this public publish to github creating the first commit okay hmm all good uploading files done successfully published satyaprakash 195 repository to the github okay so i think we are good now let me go to the github okay so this is the repository so make sure all the files are coming if you click on this yes everything is coming now go to the render render.com so here you have to publish so i have i already have my account in this i'll go to the dashboard now i'll click on the google yes this is my account these are all my deployed projects okay now i'm going to click on the new select the web service so here you will get the repositories so this is our rep newly repository shay mp udemy click on the connect so the project name i'm going to give shay mp udemy so you need not to change these things root directory also keep it as it is runtime node build command should be npm run build npm run build okay start command should be npm start done now you have to add the configuration files which is nothing but the 
dot env variables so if you click on the advanced you have the dot env variables so let me go to the dot env first i will add the mongo url okay and then i will add the jwt secret then cloud name then cloud api key then you have cloud api secret let's add the values also value value here also value and then the complete url done guys so we are ready to go live okay so make sure all the details are correct and you have selected the free instance 512 gb ram sorry 512 mb ram so let's scroll down and click on the create web service so it will create a, a new web service with our monstack application so this is our uh, deployed url it is not a deployed so after deploying our application will be live in this url so this will take a while around at least five minutes minimum so i'll pause the video once this is done i'll resume okay yeah we are almost ready guys we got the message build successful it's in the last step build deploying okay so if you see the logs you will understand what's happening in the deployment okay so you can see these are all our uh, front end uh, console logs so it will check each and every file if there is any error you can see products index so we have some warnings yeah i think it's executing the command node server dot server dot js server slash server dot js yeah we got the message mongodb successful here you can see now we are live so march 9th yes so let me click on the application we should get the data awesome share mp dev you can see everything is perfectly working so this is about the deployment guys so i hope you enjoy the course so thank you see you all in the next course bye